right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another stream. Oh, what's happening? Oh, hey, so we are. Uh, should be live. <laughs> are we live? Yes. Yeah, we, we are. are. No viewers yet. Yeah, we are. Oh, we'll get there. Spooky. It's a secret live. <laughs> everybody slept in today. <laughs> No, no, I see it. I got it up on my TV. Oh, uh, okay. Me too. Except on my laptop. If this stream has one fan, that that's me. <laughs> <laughs> if the stream has a hundred fans, I'm one of them. Uh, let me get the link so I can actually tweet it. Okay. Good, good, good. Ah, uh, yes. First message is some potatoes in chat. Good, good. Perfect. I've <laughs> trained them well. The potatoes. <laughs> this is my personal hell. Woohoo! Okay, let me just, there it is. Man, I'm so happy with how these thumbnails turned out. Yeah, you did a really great job with them. They're cool. Thanks. We're going to um, make a, a gallery for Patreon full of all of Red's drawings for the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom thumbnails um, mm -hmm. at the end of the month. Uh, since we don't really have much in the way of, um, uh, usually we do like our Patreon wallpaper packs every month, and since we don't have too fewer videos, uh, this month we figured uh, this could be a good time to uh, put those little, uh, little little drawings somewhere because we can't uh, merchandise them because it is fully IP uh, and that is out of bounds. Um, but we can put them on Patreon. So uh, if you're a patron, check that out at the end of the month for the wallpaper pack with all the uh, extra thumbnails and doodles because those are super duper fun. Yeah, um, uh, Blue, as our resident Spider-Man 3 expert, what's a good quote I should put in the tweet? Uh, look at Little Goblin Jr. You're going to cry. But that's already in the description. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Um... We did dirt in your eye. We did not dig on this. Um, Chat, you got any ideas? Uh, oh, Could what's a good one? not good, actually. And... You hate the spider. I hate the spider. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Mm. Uh, Topher Grace. Audio He's issues, an anyone? episode of oh, Love, no. Death, and Robots for some reason. Is Are people having audio issues, or is that just one comment? I saw two. Ooh. Audio, yeah, audio cutting. Woo. Ooh. Uh oh, hold on. Uh oh. Mm. Okay, chat. Can you specify if it's game audio or us talking that's uh, cutting out for you? Let's see if we can fix this here. Audio skipping. Ugh. I loaded it up. Uh, I like unmuted it just so I could hear a little bit. It didn't sound horrible. Um. Oh, gross. Um, sounds like they're just having a shaky connection. Uh, but it's a lot of people having a shaky connection. Yeah, all audio. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah. Okay, um, interesting. Oh, that sucks. Hmm. We're on Wi-Fi. Let's just take a look. Is your computer getting overheated? No. Huh. Whole stream. All right, please hold. We investigate. <laughs> uh, I went back into the stream to play it back a little bit. Um, seems all right. I don't know if everybody in chat is saying this, then I don't. Uh... Uh, Look, if it's an internet a lot of, problem, there's not a lot that now. you can do about it. Uh, we're getting a lot of it's good nows in chat. I don't know if maybe oh. it just caught up. Too. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've been saying if it's an internet problem, there's nothing you can do to fix it or make it worse. It's just gonna. Ha it's like the weather. All right. That, that said, uh, if anyone is still having audio issues, uh, try giving the stream a refresh just to see if that doesn't. Kind of it's bring it up now? state okay. for you. Uh, Maybe it was otherwise, just. Otherwise, it sounds like it's sort of yeah. clearing itself up on its own, and it doesn't look like it's good for us to fuss with it. We yeah. in it, boys. <laughs> and I've already got some crunchy snacks. So, uh, we've who got, do we have here today? Yeah, we've got a, a demi vase of uh, a little Hello Panda cookies. Uh, we've got blue. We've got cyan. Say Hello. hi. I've got crunch. Uh, we've got indigo. Hi, I've been losing my voice for a week straight, and I'm ready to continue that trend. Yay, and red. I got an actual bottled mocha frap from Starbucks, uh, and later I will get more crunchy snacks to be included. Amazing. Cool. Alrighty. <sighs> uh, so, uh, this uh, should be uh, us finishing out the game today. Uh, 
first uh, stream, we did up to the symbiote. Second stream on Friday, we did the whole symbiote arc. Now, now that the symbiote's off, the game's basically over, right? What else yeah. can go wrong? Don't look at the thumbnail of the stream. It's fine. We're good. <laughs> Everything's over, fine. Then. We're great. All right. Continue. Uh, and nothing can go wrong. If only we had a handy dandy particle accelerator to destroy it with. All right, mm. we got some skill points Would here. Would be convenient. I really think we should deal with the Harry is dying situation before we go destroying his one chance for uh, uh, superpowers and stuff. Well, he might, it seems like the kind of thing Amanda might develop a complex about. Is that is that really a problem? <laughs> <laughs> he I'm sure he'll be fine. I feel like, well, somebody on the last stream was like, this is basically Peter, like, stealing his friend's cancer medication. And, like, oh, now Jesus. he's like, this was evil the whole time. It must be destroyed. And it's like, Pete. You're still stealing fun. your friend's yeah. cancer medication. Now you're just burning it instead of taking it for yourself. Pete's like, this is problematic, actually. I need to get rid of it. I knew he was a menace. Uh. Oh, we got a little Miles homemade suit. I like this one. This is fun. Yeah. But we've got oh, yeah, the cat. Can... We cannot We cannot get rid change of the cat. away from Bodega yeah. Cat. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Red oh, yeah, I, I watched Across the Spider-Verse again yesterday uh, with some friends for a movie night. And, uh, oh, man. I mean, I knew it was good. I'd already watched it. But, like, it's so fun the second time around. Like Into oh, yeah. the Spider-Verse, every frame has so many details in it. Um, that you don't even notice on the first go through. And like I've, I've you know used Spider Verse as an example in some videos, so I've cut through it frame by frame at times. And it's like there's so many fucking details. They're everywhere. Uh, when Kingpin is first introduced and in into the Spider Verse, and he's talking about the Collider before his motivation for why he's doing it is revealed, he's fiddling with his wedding ring in the very first shot. Um, when uh, when Pete and Miles are having that conversation on the side of the building, there's a guy inside the building with like a cup of coffee just watching in absolute amusement, and he gets. And accidentally spills the coffee on himself. And it's only on screen for like five frames. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And across the Spider Verse, no, those films are great. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. Uh, and also, I was, uh, I was trying really hard not to like spoil the things, which is fucking hard for me because I, I, every time I noticed something, I wanted to point it out like, oh, this is a fun little clue. But um, I, I elected not to, which meant I got to see my friend absolutely like open mouth with realization at he's in the wrong universe because <laughs> um, like because i was like oh that's fun they keep showing like on the outside shot it's raining but when i cut back to miles on the inside when we look outside it's not raining that's fun but i was like no no i should stay quiet about this because <laughs> because i looked over and he was like i could see the equations floating around his head yeah I think that was my favorite part of rewatching it because I did a uh, we did a movie shark on across the Spider Verse with them Wally from Rolling with Difficulty a while back, oh, and yeah. that is that was the second time I had watched it uh, since seeing it in theaters. And yeah, that whole end sequence where he's in the wrong universe is the part that I think was the coolest to see on the rewatch and to know what is happening and then catch yeah. just so much. There's so much clever little details, and they've chosen exactly the correct ones to make it that if it's your first time seeing the movie, you might not necessarily figure out what's going on until Miles does. And if it's mm -hmm. your second time seeing the movie, you're filled with this existential dread, knowing exactly yeah. what's gone wrong and seeing all of the signs that no one else has noticed yet, in like none of the characters in the films have noticed yet, and it's, yeah. it's so perfectly constructed. I, it it's, was great. Wait, is, like, this, so is this into or across? Across. This is across. Oh, I have not seen across. I'm excited to oh. eventually see it. It's on Netflix, man. Well, I know. You know me. When has anything being readily available ever made it easier for me to actually watch the damn thing? I'm still not done with Blue Eye Samurai. <laughs> How did I even give you my login? <laughs> and I've been uh, busy. I'm trying to stay on No, no, no. I mean, I've also been busy. I, I feel that. But, um, oh, it was so fun. Uh, and one thing I liked about it is that, like, there are other explanations or, like, confusions before the, the reveal. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when he does the, like, Spider-Man... And he was like, who's Spider-Man? <laughs> friends I was watching with were like, does she not like watch the news? She's got to know who Spider-Man is, right? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that was the part. That was the one line for me where I'm like, no, I know what's happening. <laughs> There's uh, no something's way. Something's gone. There's no way. Uh, his mom doesn't know. It was too much. It was too important to him during the first half of the movie for it to be something she just straight up does not like, know exists now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But that's what's fun. It's like, this could be, is this a weird writing inconsistency or is something horribly wrong? Yeah, good exactly. Very good. Yeah. Alrighty. 
So uh, as with last time, we are raising money for UNICEF, uh, organization that does uh, work supporting uh, children's health, safety, education, and rights all around the world. Um, we are just shy of $5,000, I think, from our last stream, um, like 4,600, I want to say. We can think of some uh, some potential stream conversation goals, like hot takes or more cursed smasher pass for yes. uh, for like a, like a six thousand dollar <laughs> threshold. But we can uh, we can get to that a little bit when we get to that. For now, um, thank you to everybody who's donated so far, and anyone who might be able to um, donate, uh, your generosity will help kids uh, all around the world. Mm -hmm. Oz Corp. Here we go. Well, I'm always down for more cursed smasher pass. You know me, so as the person who introduced this concept to the stream, I'm of course ready to double down, money where my mouth is. <laughs> <sighs> you should do more outposts? No, we're speed running. <laughs> Unless I'm catastrophically underleveled, I'm not going to do more outposts. Can't you tell that we're speed running by the fact that this is the third stream of this game? <laughs> and the official yeah, speed run for this game is like four hours long. <laughs> The goal is uh, completion of the story, not uh, Pete's ultimate power growth. Mm -hmm. Also, look at um, Harry uh, framed by green mist in the background. <laughs> He's fine. I don't want you to lose yourself. Like I did. Oh, it's also some purple here. lighting, too, so it's like, like goblin mode by sexual lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm amazed that they just haven't had a green goblin in these games yet. Maybe it would have been too obvious. You know, it's the thing I think about, because, like, I love that Across the Spider-Verse has the spot as a big bad guy, right? Because I think it's fun to get to use a, a Spider-Man villain who's maybe not so iconically tied to Peter. Like, uh, you know, your Doc Ox and your Green Goblins are, for better or for worse, deeply deeply ingrained in the peter parker story and i think it's very smart to do a different villain uh for that case but these games do feel like maybe they should they should gun for those big big shots because like mm -hmm. they're they're pretty standard spider-man stories i feel like we'll we'll see some some goblin uh stuff in the future mm -hmm. oh, here we go objectively i know that harry getting envenomed is bad but I've been on team, please give him back his cancer meds since like day one, so I'm not mad. Like maybe now he, like, if he does this and it goes horribly wrong, that's not as bad as Pete being like, no man, this is bad for you probably, and just not letting him have it back. Yeah, it does feel like the stakes are so much higher for him than everyone else. Yeah, it's like Harry's actively physically dying because he tried to save your life, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, obviously the fact that he just immediately turned into Venom isn't good. But, like... <laughs> yeah, it is interesting but that like he did... But, like, what, Red? That he Finish did immediately go Venom. <laughs> <laughs> I think that some of this game is speedrunning things that I think they could have stood to yeah. take a little more time with, but yeah. that's fine. Yeah, that's fair. I think the I implication... I just think, like, if he'd gotten it back and, like, it was initially Agent Venom... Like, this may as well just be a big monster that has no Harry in it. Um, yeah. Also, we are playing as Venom now. <laughs> Ooh! In Venom Harry's, uh... How do I put this? In Venom Harry's, uh, defense, had Pete not been using it so much, maybe he wouldn't have immediately turned into Venom. Yeah, I think the implication is that if, uh, if Pete hadn't gotten so much more aggressive with it after like touching the rock and stuff um it wouldn't have accelerated so much and done this to harry because uh, it really does seem like this would have happened to pete eventually <laughs> but it is also interesting that it broke out and immediately went for harry and not damn venom is also cheeked up to hell it was ridiculous because that proves it was the symbiote all along. Yeah, um, symbiote has taste. I did see the message you, you sent, the text from your mom. Like, oh, yeah. wow, yeah, the spider can, for real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom is an ex, but like, it's so funny because our dynamic is always like, oh, I, like, I as a person don't want to be like, hey mom, here's a funny sexual joke I made. 
But then as soon as she sees it, she's like, oh, that's pretty funny. Here's one of mine. And just fucking <laughs> obliterates me. <laughs> oh, I'm punching up in my weight class, man. I'm fighting for my life here. I love how much the controller screams when you play this game. You can't really hear it through the stream, but uh, the controller's going nuts over here. It really makes you feel like you're wrangling a horrifying alien parasite. Yeah. You ever used an Oscorp guard as a literal battering ram? <laughs> you ever hit a motherfucker with another motherfucker? Are we... Uh, yeah, no, we're solidly over ten minutes. We can do that now. Yeah. <laughs> we can oh. officially curse. God, I'm so bad at this. Uh, I think it's just blind luck that I didn't get any of my Tears of the Kingdom streams demonetized by just stream of consciousnessing my way into the fuck word again. <laughs> it's the first seven seconds. <laughs> That's yeah. the critical... Uh, I've only beefed with that hard one. I feel like this game should have shown Harry being even sicker before he puts this Venom suit back on, so that when it really does overtake him entirely, it's it's even more emphasis that like he was without the suit for too long, and that's part of why it's going so crazy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, also, I think it would have been more interesting if, like, if Peter had had to sort of... They could have done something very cool with a replication of the moral choice he had to do at the end of the first game, where he had to choose between saving May and saving the entire city if it's like okay harry is like fully dying and it's like i ha we have to destroy the symbiote but this is the only way to save him and he's like he's my friend and you know slaps it back on him and then this shit happens and it's like well is this still better than him being dead though like maybe <laughs> i don't know i'm not i'm not trying to fanfic rewrite how it should have ended this yeah. but like you know yeah. if i had to definitely think it'd be different <laughs> <laughs> Venom is just a, a roid rage metaphor. It's like, okay, we just need to put this on him. Uh, he'll he'll calm down in a little bit. He'll stop eating people, and then it'll be fine. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh man, these guys really ragdoll when you kill him. I guess it is though interesting that he Harry chose to do this to himself. Cause someone in the comments pointed out that um, uh, where is it? He's Venom because he chose to be Venom. Agent Venom and Symbiote Spider-Man had it forced on them. Which is a good point. Like, this is kind of a rule of threes, like... Because when Harry got Agent Venom for the first time, it was like... You mm -hmm. know, something his dad did to him, and then when Peter was dying, he, he wasn't like, Give me the Symbiote, I'll be okay. You know, it was kind of an accident. But this was Harry being like, Actually, I want this back now. And actively choosing to do it, and then he becomes a big buff whole yeah. Spider-Man. Because even though Harry is very justifiably upset with Pete... Uh, the symbiote also being very upset with Pete, it kind of makes sense that the immediate response would be the, like, more nuclear option, like, actually fuck everybody here, I'm gonna go, uh, I was gonna say goblin mode, but, um, venom mode. Yeah, wrong, wrong supervillain identity. How do we jump? How do you jump? Oh, <laughs> it's like point launch, got it. I suppose the turntables have indeed yeah. turned. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting how much of his physicality is very cold like. Uh, thank you to Chaincore for that oh. 200 craven buck donation, which does put us over the $5,000 goal. Yay. Appreciate your donation to craven bucks. Craven <laughs> feels a little bit out of the spotlight, but <laughs> almost like something else has quickly eclipsed him in, in threat category. <laughs> Craven and deciding between in popularity and the Craven cast has been really hit on the numbers. Their uh, Spotify downloads have gone down significantly. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Craven is caught between feeling excitement for possibility of new hunt versus a uh, little bit of secondhand embarrassment for being out of the spotlight. <laughs> Craven is pretty sure this guy would choke him harder if he asked. So like, <laughs> ah shit! Did Craven get cancelled? <laughs> <laughs> Your faith is problematic, Craven the Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Call out post for Craven. It's like Craven gets a notification on his phone, like, caked up symbiotes in my area, okay, we play. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Craven is over party. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Craven can be under too. <laughs> <laughs> Craven is very versatile. <laughs> He's law of the jungle to adapt to survive. <laughs> One might call Craven verse. <laughs> <laughs> he all new meaning to Spider-Verse movies. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're having fun here. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Get back here. 
Anyone seen any good movies lately? Because I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> what bad movie have you seen lately that made yeah, you say I it like that? I Howard the Duck last night, and I wanted it to be fun so badly, and it's just bad. We watched Gosh. Mission Impossible 1 while Sisters A and B were here, along with Sister A's husband, Husband A. See, that's fun. That's a good, fun movie. It's Howard a really Duck's good movie. bad all the way down. <laughs> Sister B fell it's asleep, fun. but we still asked her what happened in it. <laughs> she did not know. Sister B, though, figured out, um, was almost onto the twist uh, of the movie very early. Um, can I can I spoil Mission Impossible 1? <laughs> the movie that's been out for years and years and years? Yeah, the movie yeah. that's okay. been out yeah. for as long as you and I have been alive? Yeah, I think yeah. that's okay. fine. Okay, so, uh, Red, as you have mentioned, your parents, mainly your dad, is very upset with the Mission Impossible 1 movie because they kill his entire team in the first 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Like, the original uh -huh. team from the show, they just fucking ax him immediately. Um, Sister B figured out when uh, Jim, the guy who's in charge, it turns out to be the double agent, um, is uh -huh. calling to abort, and they're like, stop communicating, they're tracking this frequency. Sister B was like, how does he know that? And uh, Sai and I were just like, oh, I don't know, maybe he's, he's got information that, that we don't have. Um, but mm -hmm. she, she figured that out pretty quickly. Sister B's secondary career as a secret agent nearly got blown. <laughs> uh, Howard the Duck is so bad, and I, it's, here's the thing, like, looking at it i'm like oh i love the 90s ninja turtle movies with their silly little costumes and when they're doing all those little gags and things i bet this will be like that and then i'll have a good time and even if it's like you know even if it wouldn't be called a good movie i bet it'll be a fun movie and then it wasn't then it was a miserable <laughs> it was miserable watching this unlikable duck try and like one-liner his way through a plot that he should not have been in and then they had the gall in the end credits to play to make it like howard is their band manager and we're gonna do the Howard the Duck song, and then uh, the credits are gonna roll. And I'm like, well, the whole movie should have been him managing this band and not the whole having to fight an evil monster from space or whatever. Ah, oh, God. Wow. A lot of that going around today. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you watch a bad movie and then it just haunts you. Like, why was this bad? <laughs> what was wrong with this? How could how could this have gone so wrong? Like, for I instance, think I when I watched Rebel Moon the other about week. Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm very I think I'm very aware of what made it bad. Yeah, probably. I like um I know what James Dodge was trying to say, but I love that it says, Do you think good stays up in heaven because he's afraid of what he made? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did uh, immediately like say God, but I I, I Those think Those are movies that hold up. Those are movies that actually are yeah. let me talk on that one, because like Spy oh, Kids boy. the first movie is just a good movie. Like I me and my boyfriend rewatched all three of the original movies recently. I haven't seen any of the new stuff, so I can't think of that. But the first movie is just a very clever little concept executed perfectly with a couple like weird creative choices that make it interesting. And I think everyone should watch it because it's very fun. Um, the second movie you could skip unless you're trying to do the full trilogy, uh, but it does have the hardest line of all time. Do you think God stays in heaven because he too lives in uh, fear of what he's created? And it's got like the neat dinosaur stuff. So if you if you do, like it's not, it's not not worth watching, but just compared to the other two, it doesn't really have anything that makes it stand out. And then the third movie is just, it, it's crazy, but it's so much fun. Like it's, it's completely goofy. It's become at this point almost a parody of itself, but everyone is still clearly having a good time. And when they do their little team up scene at the end where they have all of their like villains and like the team members from the previous movies show up to be like, I'll help you fight at five Sylvester Stallones. It's fantastic. It's so, so good. And it has some of the best Antonio Banderas uh, lines of all time. He In the third movie, he does the thing where he's like poking at the little brain. And he's in his lab coat. He's like, nobody move. <laughs> and I love it so much. And then he gets to smack the brains away. It's fantastic. I love the Spy Kids movies. They're so, so fun. Antonio Banderas truly does not miss. He never does. No. He's got the range. We want to update the... Craven! Is Craven! Craven oh, is back yeah, in spotlight and no, even more shirtless than ever. I think it's still... Can, can you guys do have the video up check if the goal is for 5,000 or 10,000? I think I said it for 10. It's for 5,000. That's for 5? 5? All right, let's yeah. update it. One sec. Hold on. I just on. saw another person say, ooh, goal was reached. And I'm like, ah, Yay. we did not fix that. Craven is here to have sweaty wrestling competition with extremely sexy spider <laughs> 5001. Craven is going to live forever. <laughs> Craven knows a man who will treat him rough and right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Listen, I got I 12 hours of sleep last wavelength. night, and that was not enough to deal with this. <laughs> Soft boy Parker doesn't have shit on whoever this is. <laughs> <laughs> now, bully Parker, we love him. At last, yeah. Nemesis, for end, she, uh, nemesis ended with oh, no. Parker's spider. He man. has more now cake. Venom is my best enemy. <laughs> what? He has more cake. <laughs> <laughs> I need that, uh, the, the meme with the guy who's walking with the, the woman and then he turns around and sees the other woman. You know the one. Yeah. 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 The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah distracted yeah. boyfriend. I mean, I need that, but with Craven and Parker and Venom. <laughs> Long have I dreamt of a perfect death drenched in fire and blood. Will you give it to me? <laughs> I love it. So they're it. both cancer victims. Essentially. Well, Harry has some kind of broad, you know, fantasy disease. He's got bad bone syndrome or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goblin disease. <laughs> Let your vengeance feast upon my flesh. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know if it's, if it's more or less encouraging to fight a guy who's way too into you killing him. <laughs> you know, I feel like... Oh, Harry's talking! Harry's talking! Wait, what did he say? It, it's subtitled, like, uh, it, I'm, I'm back. I just saw the let your vengeance feast upon my flesh thing. But Harry was like, like, you destroyed our work, you know, hurt our friends. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> that flashbang effect just makes it look like we're doing a crossfade to like a time skip, like it's another part of the fight now. I don't know why they did it. Craven right stole his tongue. <laughs> now he yeah. has don't more worry. tongue. <laughs> he got better. He's got a tongue hydra. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. That's not good. <laughs> Yes, yes, you will be my <laughs> final hunt, and I shall be your first. Okay, Craven. <laughs> Let us show the world what death should be. <laughs> Craven. <laughs> Craven suspects this will be last hunt. Time to get all problematic opinions out without worry of retribution or advertiser boycott. <laughs> <laughs> Let walk left try to cancel this. jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are they going to do? Cancel Craven more? <laughs> Doink. <laughs> Look, it's not our fault they wrote him this way. <laughs> really, where does Craven on the page stop and our interpretation begin? Hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, the, well I watched back that our first kill couple streams and I was surprised that he's got less of a deep voice than I expected him to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we took some creative liberties. How is he not already dead? He's strunk, he's got like uh, turbo drugs. He got yeeted into a gigantic screen and then electrocuted. Yeah, it's but this is like thing. superhero about universe. Yeah. I like that for this entire scene, Peter's just been taking a little nap Ooh. because he got smacked into a wall slightly hard. Munch, munch, munch. <laughs> Harry's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Throwing people into walls is one thing, but I ate that man's face. <laughs> Pretty sure That's that was okay, Craven consented head. first, so it was alright. Yeah. Face eating is okay if consent is given. <laughs> it was like, oh, what was that Pete was saying about me losing myself? Nah, this is probably fine. <laughs> uh, We're Lieutenant, good. We're good. Lieutenant Tanuki, Cravencast has a new host. That's how Cravencast works. <laughs> Whoever kills former host of Craven Cast becomes new host of Craven Cast. Hi, Mom. Sorry, <laughs> I just ate a man. <laughs> welcome to the Venom Cast. I can't really do a Venom voice, but like, uh, like, welcome to the Venom Cast. I don't know how any of this technology works. He signed welcome over the company to me, and I have to figure all this out on the fly. I forgot about <laughs> Ghost Mom. Yeah. We're very glad that you could join us today on the Venom Cast. 
will not be doing a Venom voice. I think my voice has suffered enough for one week. Cowards. I gotta record all of I, I gotta talk like this for like four hours on Thursday. That's why you're all too weak to be best us. Have you considered honey? <laughs> I chug so much tea when we're recording Rolling with Difficulty. I I have to pee so badly the entire time we're recording that <laughs> podcast. That's the real secret behind Rolling with Difficulty, is that Indigo is constantly on the verge of needing to run to a restroom while we're that recording. That explains a lot I'm about Danny's general attitude. <laughs> constantly chugging tea while we're recording to do Danny's voice. A uh, Silver Inferno for the first episode. Human heads or baby heads? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't always have enough time to get it. Sorry, we don't always have enough time to get a bite to eat. And that's why this episode of the Venom Cast is sponsored by HelloFresh. <laughs> if the delivery's not your speed, maybe the driver will be what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think this bit has uh, shorter legs given the physical limitations mm. of doing the Venom voice at scale. No, I mean, those legs. Those legs be popping much bigger than Craven's <laughs> legs. <laughs> Quads the size of a lesser man's chest. Or, you know, the head he just ate. Thank you, Spider Man, for showing back up. This episode of the Venom Cast is brought to you by fuckloads of steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, is it time for Spider-Man to lift the heavy thing? Nah, nah he just kind of gets out of it. <laughs> it's a cosmetic. What about holding thing? two heavy things together? Is that on the table? Uh, that's another good one. I love the lighting that they've got for this point in the day. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, like a morning glow. I was watching my boyfriend play through this game and he got to this point and I was like, ooh, I wish there was this lighting all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so that you could Golden see hour, it a lot. Baby. <laughs> yeah. It'd be cool if there was a way you could decide what the lighting looked like. Like, if you could choose what time of day it was when you were um, swinging around after you finished the game or something. I think they either are about to add that or have added that. Why don't you just put in the game when you put the game out? Why don't you just put the game uh, done? It, it, is, it is tricky. And also, it's a reason to get people playing back later to add a feature like that. Yeah. That's why yeah, New Game Plus usually launches later than the rest of the game. I need to find him. Apologize. So yes, it should have been there the whole time. It might be there now. It might have been something they added recently, but uh, uh, it was not at launch, unfortunately. Hmm. Did, it, did we get any explanation for... Was Venom just for shits and gigs doing his dead mom's voice? I was gonna say, if uh, Venom showed up and started doing my, my dead mom's voice, it would be on site. Like, uh, Craven. <laughs> Weak shit. Peter, get out of my face. This is... We're, we're 1v1 fighting and Venom ain't gonna be on Earth for much longer. <laughs> yeah. Send his sorry ass back to space. <laughs> yeah. Harry, are you back here? Not concerned by all these uh, tentacles. <laughs> at all. I think Peter's just really That's hoping that if fine. he ignores the Venom problem, it'll just stop being a problem. <laughs> Like, it's fine. I fixed it. It's fine. No, I'm not turning around. I remember that I was so reasonable when I had the symbiote on. Clearly, Harry is similar. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. we're gonna figure out a cure. Something better. <laughs> the comedy of him looking straight at the tentacles, like, maybe he's still around here somewhere. It's like, yeah, maybe, Harry? Pete. <laughs> what context clues tipped you off? Give you one guess, buddy. Give you one little... Thought. A little symbiote. Oh, they're really mm, going full the thing. Mr. Simbi Baby. Mm. Yeah, they're they're going Simbi very baby. Simbi, yeah. <laughs> they're going very um uh like web of darkness or whatever it's called. Uh oh my god, a cosplayer. Web of shadows. Web of Thank shadows. you. Oh shit. He's symbiotifying random people. Yeah. Just like oh, in yeah. Web of Shadow. Yeah, the Venom cast definitely donates to the American Cancer Society. You're not wrong. Thank you. Oh, eh. that's true. <laughs> Dude, these things are brutal. Gonna need Miles' help. Us. His name was Peter Parker. <laughs> Miles, there's, Miles, there's mm. trouble with Harry. I'm sure Miles has figured this out. <laughs> hey, Peter, there's uh, all these big black goop 
things popping up all over town, and a bunch of uh, people have shown up covered in black goop. You wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? As the one who was previously covered in black goop, do you know where there's black goop on people? What have you Sir, been up to? Sir, as our local expert in being gooped, would you like to comment on the goop situation? <laughs> These things are hard to fight when they first show up. The uh, the difficulty spike is real. <laughs> I'm sure that's intentional. Yeah. We now go live to the source of the goop. <laughs> Just a normal goopy day. Yes, Mr. Corvid or Mrs. Corvid. <laughs> Another goopy day in Goop York. <laughs> as long as Bodega Cat doesn't get gooped, it's all good. <laughs> uh oh, do we have more skills? Yes, we have more skills. To the Where's OSP the... extended crew, what's your favorite goop? Oh. I like the ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, real life goop, um, probably like 100% hydration bread dough. Yeah. Chocolate mousse. <laughs> I'm going to stick goop. with the ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I know it's not like a real thing, but someone's got to have a vat. It's like that slime they used to use on Nick. There's got to be a vat of that somewhere in storage, right? Mm. Probably. I, I think they probably just get rid of it after they use it. It can't stay good for that long. <laughs> no way. I think an art department PA loves more than holding on to something incredibly strange for far longer than they should. Yeah, but goop? That stuff's got to denature so fast. Why not goop, you know? Why not yes, goop? I hadn't considered that. Think about that one, huh? <laughs> why not yeah, goop? yeah, I'm reevaluating. You didn't consider that, did you, Red? <laughs> you didn't consider, why not goop? I can honestly say, I certainly didn't. You've opened my eyes today. Why not goop? Just remember that in your heart whenever you're Embrace the goop, feeling or doubt. let the goop embrace you. <laughs> <laughs> and if, point, that's, why not goop? if that's too hard to remember, WNG, why not goop? Why not goop? <laughs> why not goop? <laughs> Or W W uh, G. What would Goop do? <laughs> what would Goop do? <laughs> Hunter Base is mysterious. That's one of the fun things about like classic practical effects, like space horror movies. Everything is so goopy. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta love it. Really makes the aliens and alien and aliens more intimidating. Just how goopy mm -hmm. they are. It's like I don't want that to eat me, but I also don't want it to touch me. Like that's good horror. That's some good horror. I love how Rio was like, "Hey Pete, you need to find Miles," and then he fully did not do that. Miles basically got himself out. <laughs> like yeah. Peter kind of helped. But, like, really not a lot. <laughs> he just brought himself to the scene stuff. of the crime as Miles was basically solo carrying the whole operation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That seems to be something of a running theme in this game. Yeah. What spells can I use around here? Which is cool, though, because it fits with the fact that Peter thinks he needs to do everything himself, but is incorrect in this assessment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Did we sign on something to do for hitting 5k? Um, no. We joked about doing a smasher pass and then we did nothing. I think we had uh, joked about no. doing smasher pass for 6k, but we yes. could do 5k. I think 6k is good. I, I think that... Okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's yeah. do 6k. We can do another cursed... Uh, Gotta make you guys work for yeah, it. Yeah, like Marvel yeah. slash whatever smasher pass, and then I can do my... Uh, my uh, world's tallest buildings random generator <laughs> smash up. Because <laughs> that was very fun. <laughs> God. Well, I was watching back through the stream because I was like, I remember making some kind of horrible joke, but I can't remember what it was. And then I found it. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Fighting these I think things it's cool is if all tough. these symbiote guys look different to each other. It makes sense that they don't, but mm. it would be neat. There will be more enemy variety later. Yay. However, with the tools we currently have, 
a uh, higher symbiote enemy variety would um, uh, ruin us. <laughs> ah, very true. That man went ragdolling. Slurp. Wow, I can't believe you killed that guy. <laughs> Spider-Man, menace or threat. <laughs> And Goop York is Goop will be gooped. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> From Chroma Corbett. No, they retracted the message. <laughs> That's okay, Chroma Corbett. I saw it. <laughs> yes. She's echo of accordion. Almost done. Just need a low frequency boost. The pulse. Something like... Oh, there we go. Miles is just doing sound tech in this uh, in this dock while Peter's <laughs> fighting for his two, life two. against symbiotes. Mm -hmm. Something about I just, I feel like the resonance of an actual bell is going to be a little bit different than playing it back on your phone's tiny speakers. What? You know? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Correct. I just feel like, sound like even if you crank that volume all the way up, like you'd have better luck playing one of those little mosquito whistle tones. <laughs> Oh, we actually, we, we had this exact, I was still like, why am I getting deja vu? We played another one of the uh, Marvel home games uh, over the weekend, and mm. we were fighting a symbiote. So we were like, all right, how are we going to, a lot of smartphone jokes uh, were made, <laughs> a lot of mosquito whistle tones. Uh, we did immediately, of course, lure them to a bell tower. Bell percent. That game is so fucking unbalanced, it's really funny. <laughs> oh yeah. Austin and I are gonna have thoughts about it later. I think Rolling with Difficulty Patrons, we are planning on like doing a little like just at some point shooting the shit and talking about how we feel about it. Uh, so look forward to that. But um, <laughs> from my perspective at least, it is very funny because tr in true superhero form, there are some situations that certain characters are just incredibly well specced for and a lot of situations that there's kind of nothing they can do except for like their yeah. one their one damage dealing move. Uh, so my character is very like tech specific and we had one thing where it was like, oh, AIM is like invading this building uh, full of technology and like, uh, oh, I can get in. And like, th there's a superpower that's basically just like, you can talk to com computers and make them do what you want them to, which is the most broken, like non specific it it's incredibly busted from a narrative standpoint. So it's like, oh, can mm -hmm. I tell the security cameras to fritz out for the 30 seconds we need to get in position? And it's like, yes, you can. Um, and then this session, it's like, oh, it's a symbiote with weaknesses to fire and sound, two things I don't have weapons that can do. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll try and hit it with my little repulsor blast once a turn. <laughs> yeah. um, As someone who l built a character for that game is specifically like, I don't need to be good at fighting. I can just go bam, bam, bam all over the place and it'll be fun for me. Uh, it's, 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 it's tough. I'm like, I do a point of damage, maybe, if I hit something and I have 10 hit points, I need to you run as fast as possible. You gave I can't believe that it lets you have that few hit points. Uh, I have the, I'm the same exact points same way with my focus agent, pool. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I think this is the one hand of like, okay, as someone who frequently plays support characters that are not meant to do a lot of damage, uh, in, across a bunch of TTRPGs, like, I get having a balance where you don't want every character to be able to do uh, a, a big hit every turn or, or like to be good at things that are not the combat part. But the, mm -hmm. the Marvel RPG is so geared towards you're going to have to fight a villain eventually. It does yeah. feel a little silly that like it lets you build a character that functionally can't do all that much in a fight. Yeah, it's like those games where you can like die during character creation. It's like, why, oh would, you, why would you let that happen? Yeah. And I don't get me wrong, I love my little, my funky little dude, my, my, my young superhero saving the world or whatever, but like, it is sort of like, I guess if we get into a fight, then that's sort of where uh, Indigo checks out for the game, <laughs> because at this point it becomes, try not to get hit at all possible yeah. costs, and that way I will <laughs> don't survive die, don't this die, encounter. Don't die. <laughs> I'll just plop down on a yes. corner and either die or won't. <laughs> well, this is kind of the gamification of that thing that we've been discussing with, um superhero worlds and how they need to essentially provide enough enrichment for the heroes uh because like 
if it's just you have to here's a big strong bad guy here superman you need to fight dark side good luck he's a damage sponge and you basically are the same character twice have fun um mm -hmm. but then it's like oh no lex luther hit that cruise ship with his laser to provide a distraction so he can escape because we have to go save that cruise ship now <laughs> like that kind of thing um mm. So in, in the Marvel game, because Austin's been having a lot of fun coming up with scenarios where there actually is a lot of things that we can do. Yeah. Uh, but the game isn't really helping him at all. <laughs> no. Like, Austin's talent as a game master aside, the game is not helping him. No, no. The game is, like, very much designed to just... Good fucking luck. I'll throw stuff at you and hopefully you can figure it out. Austin's the one who's putting in all the heavy lifting to be like, all right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna add this kind of threat and this kind of threat, and uh, they can do this for extra fun, and you know, maybe maybe this will work. But it's one of those games where there's not a lot mechanically that you can do, and you basically get one thing you can do per turn, which means if you mess up and like it doesn't hit, you basically waste a turn. And like, for you know, for all I complain about 5e compared to 3.5, D&D 5e is very good at giving you a lot of things to try. So, mm -hmm. like, even if you miss with your attack, it's like, I can still use my bonus action to get something up, I can use my mobility, I can activate, like, an item or something that I have. Like, you never just, like, stand there, like, okay, well, there's nothing else I can really do. I guess I fucked up. Um, and I've played a lot of games where the action economy is like, okay, we try to make the rounds quick and snappy so that you don't really feel it, that you, you effectively get, you know, stuck and lose a turn zones, but, like... It is very frustrating to deal with, and I think a lot of TTRPG design doesn't really do a lot of work to stop that from happening. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not the no, resident I, I, game designer. I should talk to Magenta about this. I'm sure she's got thoughts. Yeah. Sorry, I just saw uh, Adam Wentworth comment. Oh no, I've seen this anime. <laughs> <laughs> stop that. <laughs> ah, smack it in the uvula. How much time does it need? Anyway. Yeah. Peter's about to destroy no. the symbiote with the sick power of dubstep. Hey. Of, I feel like the Marvel RPG is one of those ones where I'm like, well, this is fun to play in a home game where it's me and my buds and nothing matters. But I, I, it's, as someone who's had to play TTRPGs in a public space now, I'm like, no, I, this would be so terrible if it was a podcast. Like, if I had to play this in any sort of, like, public capacity, I'd be so mad so fast. I think that the only way that it would work as a pod would be if we were doing, like... If we were going really hard on the RP, if we all given ourselves, mm -hmm. like, intense, like, backstory junk, yeah. uh... Because, like, that is clearly, like, something that this game... Because I think... Is this a part by the Apocalypse reskin or no? I don't think it is. Uh, Frankly, I don't I think don't the Marvel think designers so. know what's part by the Apocalypse I'm pretty sure it's a D&D 5e reskin. <laughs> yeah, it really does feel like they took D&D 5e, they were like, we don't need 90% of this, and just sliced it all off. Just um, based on the way the action economy works, and like how your turn flows, I'm like, that's D&D right there. That's you're right, 5e. and the fact that all the stats are just renames of the D&D ones mm. so that they spell Marvel. Um, oh, that's yeah. cute. <laughs> it's cute-ish. It's like, yeah, we have agility instead of dexterity and like might instead of strength. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't anyway. say it was clever, I said it was cute. <laughs> correct, cute is the correct assessment. Um, but like, you know, it could be kind of a, a superhero soap opera thing. Uh, you know, that that's what Champions is for. Uh, like, when I played Champions, I think it was second edition, this was years ago. Uh, when you built your character, uh, you would, basically build a stable of DNPCs, dependent non-player characters, which are your, like, Aunt Mays and MJs and stuff like that. You know, the, the people who don't have powers, who aren't under your control as the player, but who, you know, depend on you for superheroics, can be imperiled to make you do stuff, you know, stuff like that. Um, and it was a huge mechanical component. Uh, I think you would get... I think the way that Champion's character creation worked, although it's been a very long time, is that you would basically you would have a pool of points that you could allocate when you were building your character, and you could take, like, disadvantages to gain more points to allocate elsewhere. So you could have a really busted power set as long as you took a disadvantage of, like, you have, like, an elemental weakness or something like that. Um, or the unlucky trait, which was clearly written to just allow you to spec up Spider-Man, because the uh. unlucky trait is, like, everything in your life that can go wrong will go wrong. Your girlfriends will die or leave you. Uh, your job will fire you because you're late. Your pizza delivery won't be on time, like that kind of thing. Um, but it does let you be pretty OP for the for the starting power set. And but I the think pizza. taking DNPCs. Hmm? But the pizza. Yeah, <laughs> pizza time. But I think some of the DNPCs 
would give you points to allocate them. So like the more people you had who were, wow, it's not suspicious for Spider-Man to hug this random woman. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that the Marvel game could benefit from having more going on, although I think Austin mentioned that the Champions game, the current edition, is like 600, the 600 pages, pages of rules. That might be a little bit too much. There's got to be a happy yeah. medium. Yeah, that's tough with TTRPGs. It's like, I, I love trying new systems, but if you give me more than like 100 pages of rules, and even then, I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> this is a lot of reading for a thing I'm doing for fun. Sorry, this scene with Ganki is very cute. Yeah. Am I pronouncing that? I'm very happy. Andy from Camo? She's cool. <laughs> This is so the cute, and the cat, the cat's now. losing her mind. Absolutely crazy. Oh, they're pros, they're pros. I, got uptown. I love the effect on the skybox of this just gloomy, awful weather. Mm. And also, now we have a bunch of symbiote nests all over the city, because fuck yeah. us, right? <laughs> I thought we weren't doing side quests. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, currently we're not, although I was pretty close to catastrophically underleveled, so we might need to... Do a nest or two? Might need to do a nest or two. <laughs> I want to get this wall thrash, because that really lets you wail on the enemies quickly. Um mm. I like that Rio was like, I'll make you something nice for dinner. We're just going to ignore the fact that it's the symbiote apocalypse out there. You know, yeah. we'll be fine. I'm oh, sorry, what's she going to do about it? Symbiote nests get us hero tokens, so we might Ooh. actually want to do that because the concussion burst is now the sonic burst, so we shoot dubstep, power of sick beats at the symbiotes, and that makes them lose their mind because they have... Um, <laughs> a uh, different musical taste. Uh, <laughs> yep, that's why. I, I don't know if it's trash and taste kids. or good taste. <laughs> I don't know what that Kendall, says about what me. what are your thoughts on dubstep? Um, it's usually bad, but like in the early 2010s, there was some good stuff out there. Not a lot, but, but what was good was good. Um, anyway, before I incriminate myself further, we're going to do some symbiote nests. <laughs> Where are the dubstep stands Spider-Man is canceled for his bad dubstep taste. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. I'm working on a crocheted blanket, um, but I'm making it pretty chunky, even though the yarn is not chunky by doing like three strands at once. However, the yarn just, uh, I guess I'm close to the end because it just <laughs> tangled itself all over the place. I'm like, yay, no! thank you. I like how freaky the symbiote nests look. Yeah. Yeah, they do a good job of making it gross and awful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Almost like a bug nest. Yeah. What's kind of nice that they let you play as Venom for that sequence? I guess because yeah. Pete was too unconscious to do anything. Yeah. yeah. And also as a way to get rid of Kraven, it really... You can't kill him in a cutscene. You need to you need to have that boss fight. Um, the player needs agency in the, in the fight. Yeah, it took yeah. a lot of work uh, on the back end to like make that work in-game. Uh, Brian and Tahar in an interview said, we we were willing to, to cut a lot of other stuff to be able to have that section as Venom because we thought it was really important to be able to establish how much of a threat he is through gameplay. Um, mm. So we, we, we had to trim a lot of other... Or not a lot of other things, but like we made choices for the sake of getting the Venom sequence in there because it was so important to have that moment of you playing as him. It's like, yeah, I know. That makes sense. That was, that was cool as shit. <laughs> yeah. I... I think this game could have benefited from some repacing on the main mm. plot line. Yeah. Like, I know we're speeding through it, but, like... This, this game and, like, the, the newer God of War games are kind of in this category that I haven't been able to figure out what I feel about it. But they feel like there is a plot, but you need to do a lot of open-world, very similar fights with very similar bad guys before the game will let you do the plot. And then the actual pace of the plot itself is generally very, very quick to make up for how much faffing about they make you do. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, the thing is, I'm saying this from the perspective of a person who is not playing the game, but is watching the game. Yeah. So, how good this gameplay feels has no bearing on how I feel about watching it. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I recognize is, you know, I, I'm analyzing this like it were a show, where it, it is a game and not a very different thing. But um, I think just, like, 
the way that we did the black suit arc, there were a lot of points where it's like, okay, this is a speed one. They're, they're writing the characters in a little bit of an awkward way to justify Pete going from like basically zero to 100 in the space of about a day in game. Um, and then when they resolve it, it's like, okay, that was very stressful. Let's go back to business as usual. And then immediately Harry becomes Venom, um, which is sad. But at this point, it's like, this doesn't feel like the same character who we were doing all the fun time Agent Venom stuff with. Uh, and I yeah. think that that transition could have been made more smooth by taking a little bit more time with it, um, mm -hmm. reframing it a little bit, letting, I mean, Harry having agency in it is cool. Harry being extremely like, just kind of over Pete and like not inclined to listen to him. And he's like, maybe you shouldn't be putting this goop back on your body. Like, I think it was in character, but I think the way that he got there feels a little bit quick and thus correspondingly a little bit contrived. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, Wait. in order to make the game pace itself correctly as a game, they have to cram the story into the little cutscenes where they don't let you play. Because it's not like this game has, like, multiple endings, you know? Like, yeah. there, there's a way that the plot's gonna go, it's just a matter of the player getting through it and going through the motions. So the act of going through the motions has to be made extremely fun. But it also needs to be made time-consuming to make the pacing of it feel manageable. And, like, this is also something that's true with Tears of the Kingdom, which is like, plot-wise, it is a straight line, and it is very, very simple. Um, you, you know, no complaints about that. Uh, and my main complaint about that game is that there's so much game in the game, because you need to go through a lot of game before it'll let you do the extremely simple point A to point B plot. Um, I don't know. I clearly have thoughts of- it's very funny that all your moves keep flinging you out of the mission area. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, Blue, that. I'm sure you have thoughts on this, but you can't really- <laughs> Anyway, yeah. You so, can do a deep yeah. dive later. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say, uh, yeah, Red, I think I'm... Yeah, I'm tricky. <laughs> yeah. I, think I, I think you've kind of grokked onto the thing that's been bugging me about this game, too, because I'm trying to figure out words for it, and I think I think that's it. It's just like the pacing is... It, it doesn't work for a story, but it, it might work for a, a game, and we're obviously not playing the game. So. Yeah, yeah. I think that if you were playing it and really felt like Spider-Man, I think it would be easier mm -hmm. to really feel like, oh, I'm in this. I get it. Yeah. Um, but just watching it, it's like, I've seen better-paced symbiote storylines. Not in movies, but, like, you know, they do exist. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why I want Harry to be, like, sicker when he eventually does get the symbiote. Like, I want to, like, actually know that there are stakes for him outside of, well, it's been a little bit, and Peter's been running around being a little mean. Mm -hmm. Like he looks like he's he's worn out, and I get that. Uh, mm. I, think I mean, he's that there pretty dang pale. They... <laughs> yeah, eh. there were things that I think they could have done to play it up if they wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. But I think they did a pretty good job of showing like his condition is deteriorating fast, and like Peter's gallivanting around like it's not a big deal. But yeah, I don't know. It also feels like. They haven't really had that much opportunity to let the symbiote kind of speak for itself, which it makes sense. But like, the the personality of the symbiote is such an interesting and subtle element of how the black suit Spider-Man arcs go. Uh, and in this case, it's like it made Peter worse. It was clearly very interested in Peter. Like, it, like mm -hmm. as soon as Harry was getting near him with it on, it was like freaking out and trying to get all up on him, which was interesting. And typically, that is kind of how it plays out. The symbiote develops this fascination with him and this kind of crush-like thing. And then when Peter rejects it, the symbiote is like, all right, fine, I don't need your smelly body anyway. And then rebounds onto whoever's closest uh, and then just becomes a problem. But like, it doesn't really feel like that part got super played up because mostly we've just been focusing on either Pete's personality wearing the suit or Harry's personality wearing the suit. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't really get how the symbiote is affecting either of them except just through, well, Peter doesn't normally act like that much of a dick. Uh, <laughs> and the weird thing about Harry talking to his dead mom, you know. <laughs> Which currently doesn't have further explanation. <laughs> yeah, when you put it like that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying not to be negative. I, I no, think no, it's, it's, yeah. it's there. Okay, Mr. Yeah, negative. Well, no, no, no. I, I, I don't think you're wrong. That's why I say it's like I, I, I genuinely don't think you're wrong. Um, there, there are places where you can kind of see the, the seams of the game. Um, where, for lack of a better way to describe it, the, the story ends and the game starts. Um, mm -hmm. and the, the many more difficult things you need to do to make something work as a video game in terms of story and pacing and narrative than just as, like, a comic or a show uh, or a movie. Um, and I've, I've said that I, I really like this story a lot, and it's, it's maybe one of my favorite 
um, Spider-Man stories, but that is not to say that it's perfect. And I like no, the beginning of this game a lot more than I like the end of it because I think the uh, the kind of like web of shadows storyline of like oh it's you know symbiotes everywhere is mm -hmm. a compelling threat but it's not my favorite version of Venom. I'll go on record that my favorite version of Venom is from the original cartoon where the episode mm -hmm. in the Spider-Man animated series is just Venom is chasing Spider-Man across the city. He is faster, stronger, and doesn't twig his spider sense because of the symbiote. <laughs> that is really, really scary and threatening. And that's a version of the story that I really like that just isn't in this. So I, the, the you know, into the, or not the, um, the Web of Shadow stuff is, is cool, but not necessarily for me. And it's a very steep threat acceleration. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, it's, you know, we got the suit off, great. And, like, the sequence of getting the suit off was good. And then it feels like another, like, four hours of gameplay and story elapsed within about two cutscenes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I'm... I really like the way that they did Venom in Spectacular Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, because Eddie Brock is a recurring character. Like, they, that show kind of slow builds out a lot of the villain introductions. Like, most of the bad guys are introduced Don't before they are supervillains. Um... Flint Marco is just a goon of the week a couple times before he yeah. becomes Sandman. And same with uh, Rhino, whose real name escapes me. Um, and Doc Ock Paul has Giamatti. like the longest lead time. <laughs> Sorry, what? Paul Giamatti. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am the Rhino. Um, yeah, you can tell. Uh, but like, I think Doc Ock has the longest lead time on that one in terms of like, mm -hmm. I mean, Venom, obviously, but like, because like Doc Ock is just some random Oscorp scientist for like eight episodes before he gets got and becomes evil. Um, but Eddie Brock is just a character in that. And he's kind of one of the many victims of circumstance of Pete's spider Manning destroying his personal life. Uh, because like i don't remember the exact specifics it's a little bit annoying to watch because it's like peter will never ever catch a break and he will always be blamed for things that aren't his fault and it sucks um but some of that just leads into the eddie brock thing and uh the reason why eddie becomes venom is because peter does the black suit arc thing and then he's like all right i've had enough of this and he goes and destroys the symbiote but he does it in front of eddie brock who's like you brought the symbiote back now i won't be fired for letting it get stolen under my watch and then in front of him he just sets it on fire <laughs> and then he's like spider-man why the fuck would you do that and then he leaves but then it turns out the symbiote's alive and eddie's like oh good maybe now we can like team up and get revenge on him and then of course the whole thing becomes a huge problem but like Eddie has this really interesting suite of character issues about being al alone and isolated and having nobody. Because, like, he and Pete have similar origin stories of, like, parents died in the same tragic accident, but Pete had, like, friends and family, and Eddie didn't. So then the symbiote is like, hey, you want to never have, like, isolation problems again? And he's like, yes, desperately. <laughs> so, like, that's an interesting personality to give to Venom. Um, sorry, I'm talking over one of the two cutscenes, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, Peter was like, hey, uh, Harry's bad. Stay away from him. And then MJ's like, oh, someone's at the door. And then, lo and behold. <laughs> Should I get gooped? Get gooped. Goop a loop, get gooped. First you got scorps, then you get gooped. <laughs> Goop doop, loop a doop. Anxious? Mm. Panicked? So, yeah. I just got coconut balls. You just gotta share this with your friends to totally goop them. Um, I really like, as I mentioned, the beginning of the game and the way that they established the setup of Harry feeling like um, he's like finally able to, to help and participate, and Pete feeling like, oh, you know, this 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 partnership I have with with Harry now is is so great. Like he's you know my my best friend from childhood, and we get to be Spider Man together. Hooray! But also the, this kind of feeling of like, oh. I was almost not strong enough to save all those people at Coney Island, and Harry was with the suit, so it's a little mm -hmm. bit of, you know, Peter's motivation for this suit makes me a better Spider-Man um, is kind of the only place that we, we really, really see it. Um, well, that's what I think is cool. Like, I think the game does a good job of characterizing Peter for the most part, although it kind of, of course, has to do some heavy lifting to justify him being, you know, fully yeah. Parker for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that... The characterization of the symbiote in isolation is a very interesting thing that a lot of the stories kind of dance around, but, like, 
this game seems to do it less than almost any version I've seen. Um, and like, I, there are versions of the characterization of the symbiote that I don't like. I think the version where there's this like really popular version that I think got kind of done in the comics where Venom is the protagonist, where it's like Pete was just uh, afraid of commitment and so weird of, of, and very mean, really, to the symbiote who is the true victim in this relationship. And it's like, <laughs> ah, that's not correct <laughs> or accurate. Um, like, it's a convenient way to frame it, but that's not how this w worked or, or, you know, is more interesting for how it works. Uh, and I think that the framing of the symbiote is kind of like not like a full person with its own agenda, but like trying to help out whoever it's bonded to, but not really with a moral compass to guide it or like making them a little bit more brutally efficient or stressing them out, or in Peter's case, functioning like a drug addiction. I think it's just, you know, there's a lot of different ways they can play it. It's just, we basically don't get a look at it through most of the game. Um, we only see it through the lens of Peter and then Harry. And with Harry, he just goes immediately full venom, let's eat this guy's head. So like, I'm a little bit, I haven't really been guided on how we got from point A to point B. It's a little bit sharp, sense. yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a mm. steep personality curve. Yeah. Talk. Yeah, I think a lot of it for me comes down to I really like Peter's story in this game. The story around it is a little dicier. Okay, but hear me out. Goop. Goop. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I like this scene. I feel like I'm on Harry's side with this one. <laughs> Coffee? Goop. The fight that the scene leads into is maybe the one that frustrated me the most watching uh, besides watching my boyfriend's play through this part of the game. Just because, like, that's Mary Jane Watson, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in this game, she's working for J. Jonah, writing articles. She just wrote a smear piece against Black Suit Spider-Man. Whatever. Um, you tell me she couldn't get a job literally anywhere else. She's, like, an incredibly decorated reporter, extremely talented. Like, she couldn't just write a book. I'm, I, I don't know. And I was like, there's so much of this where you're like, oh, Peter is... I'm mad at Peter. And I'm like, but have you considered just not working for the Daily Bugle? I mean, maybe jobs are tight know. right now. Maybe there's a lot of reporters going around. Yeah. He says the line. Feels like it's a high lethality job in this particular universe. They do set up that MJ wrote a book about Simcaria while she was, you know, out there with Pete during the events of the Miles Morales game, and that it sold 14 copies, which, like, Not that a lot seems a little harsh. That seems a little needlessly harsh to MJ. Like, yeah. <laughs> they need they didn't need to do her that dirty. The goop, however, is is going to to be uh, a mess. <laughs> Why did MJ gonna take a bullet for Spider-Man? <laughs> it was like very nice of her, but like, why would she do that? I'm mostly annoyed that they don't give her goop taser powers. Well, she still got the gun in her back pocket. <laughs> Of course, you gotta give her hair, though. MJ well, Scream is a character from the comics as well. I remember. Not a I don't think she's normally thing. MJ, but yeah. No, she's not. Yeah. They you were know, I feel like Harry could to... just symbiote Peter again if he's just symbioting everybody. Yeah. Like that. I feel like that would solve a lot of his problems. But first, he must make every single person he loves in his life a symbiote. They were going Everyone to just give... Everyone in the neighborhood knows Peter Spider-Man, right? They got it, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. At first, they were just going to give uh, MJ kind of like a, a black suit, um, like everyone else. But they decided, well, we can we can make her scream. It's the same color palette. We're not going to use the character otherwise, so might as well just make MJ scream. <laughs> Giving a symbiote a sonic attack feels very self-defeating. I don't think that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. So this is the this is the Peter gets to be on the other end of his own black suit fight yeah. with Miles. Mm -hmm. I also like to think that uh, the only reason they're able to afford property in this neighborhood is because property values went down substantially after they moved in. <laughs> <laughs> like people were like, "Ah, shit." <laughs> it's like that thing about like firing gunshots at 3 a.m. to keep the rent down in the oh neighborhood. God. Yep. Oh, 
You know, I'm a firm defender of the uh, MJ having her own character arc in the Sam Raimi movies and this manifesting in a way that's annoying to Peter but ultimately makes a lot of sense for her. I think mm -hmm. that giving her a power set to beat the shit out of Peter while she airs her grievances is another fun way to amp that up. <laughs> Yeah, I do actually quite, quite like this fight. There's I hate a lot of voice acting, but I'm sure Laura Bailey's having an absolute party. Yeah, there, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that's uh, conveyed through character dialogue during fights. So like, we get a lot of the worst of um, of of bully uh, Lowenthal when he's fighting the lizard and basically saying, "See, you suck. You're not strong enough. This is why." Uh, like everything went to hell for you and your your family ran away. It's like, wow, Peter, good God. Um, there's a lot of stuff, obviously, in the Miles and Spider-Man fight. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, there's some stuff in the uh, later fights uh, as well. That's, you know, character moments in here. It doesn't solve the problem of feeling like it's kind of truncated. Oh, oh that's fine. Um, I was going to say, it feels like, you know, uh, for this fight in particular... It's sort of the I know you're in there somewhere fight, but also mm -hmm. you are playing a video game where this is a boss fight, so you have to constantly smack MJ around um, yeah. while you're trying to talk her down from her thing. And I do really that somewhat undercuts the impact of the lines that they're being said. Is like, oh yeah, this is a great line. If only I wasn't doing my special finishing move while MJ you know, aired her grievance so loudly, and I tried to say my comforting words. I don't know. It's a video game. Like that's gonna be a, a conflict that pops up anyway, but. I think some of this might have been served better by having it not been said in the middle of a fight scene. Mm. I think it works great for the lizard fight where you're supposed to be smacking him around, but this one instance. <laughs> yeah, most I know you're in there somewhere fights inevitably end with the good guy like Obi-Wan style lowering their sword and letting them smack him and then be like, oh my god, what have I done? Um, I do like the setting of this in a perfectly nice suburban neighborhood, though. Oh, yeah. I dodged. Give me iframes, like, damn it. In this neighborhood, like, if they didn't already know, everyone in this day, Spider Man everyone is yelling, knows. MJ, it's me. We can talk <laughs> out our differences. Is this about I'm spending too much time at work? <laughs> Not enough time in our shared house. <laughs> right everyone there on. <laughs> 1337 uh, New York Lane. <laughs> I like to think that uh, the neighbors just also have like really good noise canceling headphones. So when stuff like this happens, they're like, all right, get to the basement, pull out the music. <laughs> it's all that one scene where Stan Lee is like cleaning the library with headphones in and yeah. Spider-Man's having a full fight behind him and he can't see. You can't pay the mortgage? <laughs> I'm sorry, I look up and that's the first thing I see. <laughs> A superhero game, everybody. You should have diversified your portfolio, Spider-Man. <laughs> I can't believe you've been storing it all as cash. <laughs> you know you only do that with the emergency fund. Narratively, though, I do really like making MJ a boss fight. It's very yeah. fun. It's a big yeah. oh shit moment, which is clearly what this is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Then making you, you know, megaton punch her for an entire fight is not my favorite, but like, that's just, you know. Yeah. They're not going to give you cool an entire different like a mechanic. It, like, if there was some sort of like dodge mechanic or something where it's specifically like you're trying to avoid hitting her as much as possible, but I understand, mm. like, like you're saying, like, you can't give him a whole new moveset just for one fight. Yeah, I mean, you could. But they did for the Venom fight. Like, very annoying. That's true. Yeah. There, there's definitely an argument to be made about, like, video game largesse and, you know, where is the, the, the development resource getting spent? You know, complicated cutscenes, very fancy um, boss encounters, level design, um, the stuff that's, that's on screen spectacularly for a fairly short amount of time, but otherwise is, you know... Um, only one portion of the game versus uh, 
spending more effort on on more missions so that the story can breathe. There's there's an argument to be made uh, either way. I, I think in this case, the the conclusion we're coming to is this game would have maybe benefited more from having a little more time in the the second half to spread things out because the first half is paced pretty goddamn well, but it's yeah. it just yeah. accelerates a little much, and that's one way to you know ramp up tension is to have things start moving faster, but you also start to lose some details in the middle. So I'm curious to see what they do going forward. Because I think the team in Insomniac was able to learn a lot from their successes in this game, of which there are many, as well as their um, the, the places where people are like, well, this uh, uh, maybe this wasn't um, the ideal way to go about. But even still, they're really talented, they're smart, I'm excited to see what they do next. I will say, probably my favorite segment of this game is where you're walking around the uh, Emily May Foundation before it gets, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> just because it's like, it's a cutscene while simultaneously being a bit of, you know, open world character development and makes it feel like a real thing that would make a difference were it able to yeah. exist. <laughs> So I think that's definitely something I'd like to see more of in the future with these games. Yeah. It's a fairly complex setup to have all that, you know, interior walkabout space. Um, and there's a lot of development resources that go into making it, but it's a really good, I think, use of that because you get to spend a lot of time in that environment, really soak it in. You can put a lot of character uh, moments in there with conversations and, you know, discussions and just, like, little bits of fleshing out the worlds to make it seem like it's happening at a, you know, more comfortable narrative pace. So. I feel like this whole fight is, like, written as a direct response to the way MJ was characterized in the Sam Raimi movies. This Possibly. feels like it's it's very, like, like fix-it fanfic of Pete being like, MJ, you're right, I'm so sorry, I was wrong and selfish, and you have a right to, you know... Uh, advocate for yourself and you know you're the most important character in your own life and I get that and let's do this MJ's way it's like yeah yeah this is cool this is, this is good husband Peter Parker are they married? I forget then he decks her across the face with a spidey punch after using that is the other problem I'm running into is like back. wow he's, he's saying such sweet wonderful things while he's like let me bust out my robot arms to be able to more efficiently punch her <laughs> <laughs> to be fair the only people that have like become un uh Unvenomed, he did have to deck a bunch, so he's like, "It's okay, this will help." And Just turn about. He got decked a bunch too. You know, it's all fair. Yeah. Although, you know, MJ all she did, did was try to that one him. time. So, like, <laughs> yeah. Definitely does a lot to make MJ feel like less of kind of an accessory in the game, that occasionally makes the gameplay a little bit more annoying. Yeah, MJ got treated a lot better in this game. It feels like a lot of this was a course game. correct from the MJ. Sorry, it, it feels like a lot of this was a course correct from the sequences in the first game where they had to play as MJ. Maybe we should let you like finish nah. this section before we <laughs> ask for your input on things. No, it's fine. <laughs> okay. I'll either die or I won't. <laughs> uh, while you're uh, finishing this, though, um, either Indigo or Red, how are we looking on the fundraiser? Oh yeah, I we took a look at it. It hasn't that, moved uh, since before. A little before. over five thousand, yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, five thousand eighty-eight. Uh, for anybody who wants to contribute to another round of uh, OSP <laughs> Smash Your Pass with Blue Doing Architecture, <laughs> um, please consider donating to our UNICEF fundraiser. Um, they do really good work all around the world, um, protecting um, children's health, uh, giving them access to education, uh, ensuring their uh, their legal rights. Um, and trying to uh, relieve a lot of the uh, the pain that's going on uh, in the world right now, um, not just in the uh, the obvious places um, like Israel and Palestine, but um, in Congo, uh, in uh, hold on, I'm getting attacked. Ah! Um, in uh, Armenia, where there was a big conflict uh, last year with uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, away from even the the obvious places that that need help there are a lot of things going on in the world uh, where they're doing good work yes and just a reminder we love the big donations but you don't need 
Your donation matters whether it's, you know, one dollar, five dollars, a link's left nut amount of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and we appreciate an thing because it, it, it is a fundraiser that directly goes through YouTube. Basically, YouTube works as a middleman and sends the money directly to them. Uh, they don't take a cut of it, and we never touch it. We never uh, touch this it. Is a thing. This yep. is a thing that I feel should be discussed because I, I saw there were so many things that happened at the end of 2023, and one of them was some kind of like, oh, charity scam question mark yeah. for somebody big? I don't know. So, like, I think it's important to say, like, YouTube just does that, YouTube just lets you do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's through Google fundraiser. Yeah. Yeah, it's not us opening up our own charity to then maybe eventually <laughs> donate to other places. This is just direct straight to UNICEF, along with everything we've done in the past through Google fundraising and through Tiltify. It goes right to the charity, basically as soon as the fundraiser closes. Minus, like, a day for processing payments. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to Anonymous, uh, Sam uh, Wilcoxon, uh, Drunk Robot, for your donations. Really do appreciate it. We've definitely been missing a lot of them as the game kind of picks up pace. Uh, another Anonymous uh, earlier. But thank you to all thank of you, you all. for your Craven Bucks. Now rebranded as yeah. Venom Bucks. Craven Bucks, <laughs> hey. much like crypto, uh, has just become useless. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. This one just rebranded. It's fine. Totally fine. Well, that was very cute. I like how they got to the core of MJ's characterization in her new version as Lois Lane. <laughs> oh, no. That one's not my observation. My dad pointed that one out. Uh, he watched back the stream and he was like, ah, oh, yeah, there's parts of this I like. It's interesting that MJ is just Lois Lane now. I quit. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Uh, thank you to uh, Doc Rect and Anonymous for donations as well. I think it would be really funny if they like panned out from this extremely cute moment to just like all of the neighbors like <laughs> like cheering from the windows. <laughs> <laughs> About fucking time. Neighbors are like, this ain't the first time we heard you two yelling about shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just smile and wave, boys. Harry slash Venom is off somewhere like, yes, yeah, soon they will destroy each other. And instead it just cuts back. And they're like, and that, that one time, I'm sorry I took you for granted. And that other time, <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't listen. <laughs> I love you. Also, you're a little bit of a monster back there. <laughs> hey, girl, if you ever want to develop superpowers, I mean, it'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Can't believe she did that whole fight in Lopers. Look at that. <laughs> Someone said J. Jonah Jameson definitely downplays at, wheel, at, will, appoint, uh, at will employment. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think New York might be an at will state. I mean, it, this is fantasy Marvel New York, so who knows what the rules are. New York State is an employment at will state. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, mind deployment. Wow, Spider-Man is some... What? Oops. I was just go gonna... <laughs> Red, you go. After this game's uh, non-JK Simmons unconditionally evil J. Jonah Jameson. It was a breath of fresh air seeing him in Across the Spider-Verse, voiced by the one true Jameson, <laughs> J.K. Simmons. Okay. Anyway. And J.K. Simmons shows up in the game you would least expect this year of yep. the two games that came out that he could have potentially been in in my mind. You would least inspect, expect, unless you have listened to uh, any of our previous streams. <laughs> yes. Um, I was just gonna read Drunk Robot's comment. Neighbors, wow, Spider-Man is some white guy and he's dating that woman on the Craven cast. <laughs> <laughs> also, thanks to Anonymous for the 20. Um, VB, Venom Bucks? Uh, um, conflict of interest there, Spidey. <laughs> Every state except Montana is at will. At will. Huh. Didn't know that.
reminds me. I owe someone else a call. Hey, Miss Morales. You uh make it home safe. Hi, Miss Morales. Sorry about it's everything. It's Banana Ski 91 again. The crime reported. That was Banana Ski 91. Oh wow, we gotta help him. <laughs> I think we failed to help him last time because it came in when we were noodling around. I love how take no shit Rio is like. Next time, answer my goddamn calls. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Holy> shit! <laughs> Thank oh you my God. to Anonymous for the one thousand venom bucks. All right. Jesus Christ. I think okay. Thank you so Smash much. Pass us at six thousand. <laughs> All right. Let me pull up a generator. What is, what's our category? Uh... Um. I think we should stay in the Marvel universe, you know? Sure. On theme with the game. Let's just do random Marvel characters? Yeah, why not? Ouch. Random Marvel okay. character generator online. Oh, give me a sec. I'll be back. Yep. One of the people in my D&D group thinks that he left his hat here. Oh. You can't escape Smasher Pass that easily. <laughs> I'll chase you to the end of the earth. <laughs> Naturally, naturally. Uh, I'm actually gonna switch. I gotta watch to... that show. You've talked it up so much. I simply have to. It's so good, and I, I think it's you. on Disney Plus. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna quickly do a couple Prowler um, stashes so that I can get some rare tech parts because this game uh, in the latter sections gets pretty unforgiving unless you have the fully upgraded um, Sonic Blast. Fun. Uh, well, that was weird. Good news, bad news, folks. Good news. OG Spider-Man looks to be finally back to his senses. I've got a character generator ready to go when we're ready to go. Awesome. Bad news. Yay. I like how the Danica cast or the Danica cast is just talking about like, yeah, Spider-Man's wearing a black suit and now he's like evil and weird and everybody can see it. <laughs> She's like, good news, gang. It all got fixed. Just as someone who makes podcasts for a living, the rate at which she puts out episodes is insane. How, <laughs> what's her recording setup like? <laughs> Who's doing her post? I mean, maybe, like, we only ever hear, like, five-minute bites of the Danny cast, so maybe it's just, like, maybe it's just, like, a YouTube short. Yeah, it's the like, clips they put on YouTube shorts. <laughs> yeah. Then what's the full episode? But then... What's the full episode of what? The Danicast. The Danicast. I mean, yeah. We're, the Danicast yeah. so quickly coming out. It's just like, at that point, just have them listen to the radio. Maybe she's secretly a speedster, and like she only uses it to get all of her productivity <laughs> done shocking. She quickly. talks really fast, and then she just slows it down. To she slows it down in post, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Smash or pass. All right. <laughs> Do we want to start with blue, and then we'll do the three of us who are not doing uh, buildings? Ah, sure. yes, let me find the building list. Give me yeah. two seconds. Smash your passport. Actually, you know what? Pass. While I find the building list, blue, uh, your building is Empire State Building. Empire State Building. We talked about this before. Um, I, hold on, where, where oh, is no. it? Um, uh, where are you? Uh, way over there. I really like the Empire State Building. I think it was exciting that it got to stay the world's tallest building for, like, 40 years. Um, mm -hmm. It used some new construction techniques, I think, to make <laughs> it work. Um, but it's a really great demonstration of the tapering principle in New York's um, 1916 zoning law that uh, allowed buildings to go up to um, higher levels so long as they got thinner and tapered in as they got taller. Um it's a very nice little encapsulation of, uh, of, of Art Deco design. Um, the, the building itself on the sides is not very complex. It's pretty much just, you know, stone and windows. Um, but the shape of it with the little channel in the middle, little kind of waterfall effect, looks really nice. And uh, the spire is, is very well done. I like the, uh, the kind of tapering effect you get on the top of it, too. Because um, that, that's a big spire. That's a very large spire, even the thin part as well. So it, it fits with the, the scale of the building, with the city really nicely. Even when it was nice. pretty alone in being the tallest building uh, in the city, it was um, 
it was a very very nice uh, like look at pictures of New York from like the, the 30s and 40s it's really really cool to see it uh, just like standing out among the rest of the skyscrapers um, easy smash very cool Someone in chat suggested I do Constellation Smash or Pass. Maybe if we get to 7K. What, 7K. <laughs> That's so many lists. <laughs> All right. So There's only 88 got... constellations, I think, so it wouldn't be that long. Red, your character's Domino. Domino. Oh, I remember her. Um, I, I feel like this is like the same problem that Jack had last time. It's like either a hard no or just the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> but you don't want to get lucky but um eh. she got luck powers i mean let's be real domino's the one getting lucky in that situation but, hey, but that's literally how her power works it's not even self aggrandizing yeah, <laughs> yeah i think <laughs> um i mean smash but like you know <laughs> it's a very basic very white bread kind of thing mm -hmm. uh cyan you got vision hmm sorry i have pretzel in my mouth i could hear uh, I couldn't hear it, but chats, somebody in chat was like, OMG, the chewing, so I knew something hideous was happening. <laughs> yeah, smash. Uh, I got Punisher. That's going to be a hard pass from me. Very I smart. Think, um, um, much too baggage. Yeah. Which brings us back around to blue in his buildings. Ah, uh, sorry. Just finished the pretzel. Okay, Bill. <laughs> Okay then, blue. Your building is. Dun, 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 dun. Where are these boxes? Okay, so uh, the here. torch in Dubai. The torch in Dubai. I will need a picture of that. It's, uh, this one. It's. It's fine. It's fine. I like the shape. It's a little more interesting than just a flat glass building. I think I do like the flares at the end. Um, yeah, it, it is perfectly fine. I think I'll, I'll, I'll say there's just all these pictures. Oh, yeah, they're not done. It's unfinished. Oh, well, that's because some just, of them are like, okay. in process pictures. I mean, I, I guess it's nice. It's. It looks like two buildings clipping into each other. The circular tube in the middle doesn't really fit. Something about it is off, and I can't place my finger on it. Mm. I... I can't articulate what I don't really like about it. But it's not that bad. Just like, this type, would have... It's okay. <laughs> a very dispassionate smash. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> mm. Red, you got Bucky Barnes. Oh. Hmm. I mean, I'm usually the one who's like, dude, too much baggage, no way. But like, I mean, I mean, really depends on where in the timeline and which version. Because <laughs> uh, like, the movie image Bucky... generated was definitely sidekick Bucky, but- um, oh, okay, then hard pass I'll on that you one. Uh, like... Not Winter Soldier, definitely, distinctly Bucky Barnes, but mm. you have to decide which variant of that I think is fair. I think, like, because cause in, like, the comics, he's basically just, like, Robin. Uh, he, he's a kid sidekick, and that is obviously a categorical pass. Uh, but then he becomes such an interesting character. But I think just pass, just, like, like <laughs> too, many, too many caveats. <laughs> Fair. Uh, Cyan, you got Shang-Chi. Ooh. Smash. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Classic. <laughs> I got Thor, but the picture is a uh, Lady Thor of our, our Dr. Jane, so Ooh. I think it's going to be a smash for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think there's kind of no losing with Thor except for Frog Thor. <laughs> yeah, right? It's sort of just a win win across the board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really bring back to blue. All right, All right blue. Queen, queen, Your building is. It would be great if I, like had this up in advance. There are way fewer of us this time, and by way fewer, I mean just one fewer. But Jack is such a big personality, he really fills the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's one Senjin Bay Tower 7. Ah, yes, I know it well. 
Can you spell the Zenjin part of that? Um, one S H E N Z H E N Shenzhen uh, Bay Tower Seven. Um, it's it's the city north of of uh, Hong Kong. Oh, I see it. Um, oh. Well, I shan't speak for you. That's a pretty nothing design. Um, it's definitely better than the than the USB dick stick from from last time. But that is It kinda looks like a PS5. Looks a little PS5 y. Um As far as glass skyscrapers go, it's definitely not the worst. But once again, it's like I can imagine like, you know, someone down at the Communist Party headquarters in Beijing like sees this building go up and is like, Oh god, we can't keep letting them get away with this. This is mm-hmm. not as bad. But it's pretty generic. I'm gonna say pass. Great, great. Uh, Red, you got Scarlet Witch. Oh, yeah, Smash. I mean, she's got so many issues. But again, <laughs> I'm a firm believer that if you're doing Smash or Pass with superpowers, you gotta consider how the power set would factor into things. Mm-hmm, and like, mm-hmm. she's a reality warper. The sky's the limit. <laughs> so like, you know, whatever. Sometimes a is a uh, Cyan, you got Jessica Jones. Hmm. Smash. <laughs> Fair. Uh, I got cable. Mm, Pass. No. There's just too many <laughs> daddy issues there. Mommy too much issues. Going it's on. just so much. Too much is going on. I don't. I'm not your therapist. You know. <laughs> this is not my job. And you. You think uh, cable believes in therapy? <laughs> no. Which is probably why he's a pass autom- almost automatically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your men of your generation don't talk about yeah. your feelings enough. There's nothing sexier than talking about your feelings and really doing the work to understand what's going on with you. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, that brings us back to Blue. Blue, your, uh, bleh, your building is the pinnacle in Guangzhou. The pinnacle in Guangzhou. All these good. Chinese skyscrapers. Look, no, it's this, this one. Oh, I know, but like... <sighs> Listen, I'm on the top 100 building, uh, top tallest 100 buildings list. Here's the deal. This one's actually kind of nice. Wait, hold on. There are too many buildings called the Pinnacle. Which one is this? Uh, the Pinnacle in Guangzhou, G-U-A-N-G-Z-H-O-U. I see. There are very few pictures of it. Ooh. Here's it's the like deal. It's like the Empire State Building, but chonkier. It's, yeah, it, what I think is Empire State building about it is the sense of, like, physical materials. It looks like there's some stone on this. The way the the middle of the building kind of gives way to this, um, like, cruciform crown at the top. Um, little bit of, like, Tribune Tower vibes. This is pretty good. I honestly like this a lot. Um, the the flat faces of the building have these strong uh, stone lines going up and down it, which gives it a nice sense of of cohesion rather than just being made of like nothing glass. But the sides are kind of beveled in a way that no uh, uh, sorry, like the non the non stone sides that are just glass are, are kind of beveled in a way that that makes it wrap around nicely. So no building is a jagged edge. Um, and then the top, the way that the the building kind of dissipates and tapers in. This is nice. No, this this is a smash. This one's good. More like this, China. Mm-hmm. This this one's good. I like that. <laughs> All right, Red. You got the Silver Surfer. Huh. Need a better angle for that unit. Huh. I feel like for some people he'd be an easy smash, but I think I got to pass. He's like generally if the only thing we're going to talk about is his dead wife, uh he's probably going to be a pass. Um <laughs> But I, I can't resist pointing out that thing that happens in Fantastic Four 2, where uh, he very much has some kind of weird like romantic tension with Zeus Storm, and in their introduction to each other, he projects a retelling of his tragic backstory onto his washboard abs so that she can look at it on there. It's the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life, but that's a pass. <laughs> that's Fair. pretty funny. Uh, Cyan, you got Rogue. Ooh, dangerous. <laughs> She's thinking, she's thinking. <laughs> well, realistically, she's Googling. Demare sucked it too. Okay. Smash. Risky. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but yeah, I like the too. hair. There you are. That's all. 
Okay. The mechanics of it are questionable. <laughs> eh. Mechanics, schmanics. All right. <laughs> yeah. Blue, uh, you have the Marquee Hotel. I got... Oh, oh, turn, oh, turn, oh. Turn. Oh. <laughs> and he goes turn side. I got... Wool- I got Wolverine. Uh, Ooh. Smash. I think that one. <laughs> also dangerous. High risk, high reward, you know. <laughs> All right, blues up. Nice. Very right. straightforward, understandable answer. <laughs> <laughs> understandable. Have We've a nice all day. seen Hugh Jackman. I feel like I'm not saying the craziest shit in the world here. No. <laughs> Certainly not. Very understandable. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Blue, you have the Marquee Hotel in Dubai. Okay. Um... This is the JW Marriott Marquee Hotel Dubai Tower One. Oh, this is this is trying so hard. Uh, it's two towers though. There, there's two buildings. You don't call this so Tower fun. One. They're connected. Okay, maybe they're like listed separately in the rankings. Um, All right, Chad. I don't think they heard me. I think we're in the clear. What did you say, Red? <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay, I, uh, this, this is the kind of building you build when you want to show off that you have money and are a good investment opportunity, um, but I, ah, uh, no, no, there's just, there's nothing here. It's like, yeah, you can do swoopy lines with glass, sure. I've seen worse, but this building thinks it's a lot cooler than it is. Um, I'm not, I'm not feeling this one. This is a pass. Oh, Chad didn't uh, do it either. Right. I said double the fun when you said this is two towers. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Red, you got Ant-Man. Uh, on the one hand, exciting applications for the power set. On the other hand, very bad husband. That's a, that's a pass. Well, it depends on which Ant-Man you're talking about, because... True, there are good Ant-Man. Terrible. Do, do yeah. not smash this man. <laughs> not not do all not, Do not smash this sad, sad scientist. <laughs> um, Scott Lang? Options. Maybe. I don't know. I think just not really my type, either way. Alright, Cyan, you got Spider-Man 2099. Miguel. <laughs> you're into bad boys. I need to stop eating pretzels during this game. <laughs> but who could resist the crump? There it is. Pass once again, not loving the costume, not loving the spikes. <gasps> but it's Oscar Isaac. Oscar it Isaac's Oscar awesome. Isaac. However, <laughs> spikes. <laughs> it's true. I would imagine the spikes don't stay on during... Yeah, the anyway. spikes seem like they're cosmetic. But anyway... <laughs> Listen, if he can't make uh, a good costume, can he make a good lover? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I got Storm, that feels like a pretty easy smash for Indigo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like there's no downsides here. Only I'm only winning. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blue, you're up. <laughs> Sorry, people are really into the fact that the spikes are going to stay on. <laughs> <laughs> From what little I know about Miguel... Not the most surprising. Always stay prepared, <laughs> ever vigilant. The spikes stay on. <laughs> um, Blue, you have Autograph Tower in Jakarta. Okay, give me a second to fight these guys. It's glass and rectangular, and it's got a little balcony on one side. Whoa, it's called Thamrin 9. That sounds like a planet in Star Trek. There we go. Oh. Yeah. Oops. This is... One of those pictures was just solidly a different building. Yeah, it's solidly a different building. Again, we've seen worse, but we've seen better. This is just kind of whatever. It's got some texture on the glass, which I guess is interesting, but... I don't know. Nah, it's a pass. It's just there. It's just kind of there. And sometimes that's fine, but in this in this case, I need to I need to raise my standards a little bit here. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Red, you got Moon Knight. Ooh. What was that thing I said about double the fun? <laughs> uh, <laughs> honestly, his heart's in the right place. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that could be fun. Yeah, let's do smash. 
It would be hypocritical of me to go, but he's Oscar Isaac, and then turn down Moon Knight. Yeah, oh. yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. JJ, uh, short one J, said, my cat got jealous of the cat on screen when I said kitty. Princess smacked me in the face. Oh. Ha! This is adorable. Cyan, you got Aunt May. Pass, probably, depending on the iteration. Most likely, pass. Yeah, despite her being the aunt to a 20-something, they always draw her about a million years old in the comics. <laughs> Unless you cast Marissa Tomei in it, which case. Yes, well then, you know. All bets are off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got Iron Man. That's going to be a pass for me. I don't got time to deal with an ego like that. There, there's only room for one person who kind of knows what they're doing in this room, and it's not. <laughs> yeah, very true. Tony Stark is a package deal of Tony Stark and Tony Stark's opinions on Tony Stark. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I'm not interested in either of those, frankly. All right, Blue, you finished the uh, last uh, the little last one. buzzy thing. So here we go. Uh, you have the iconic tower in Cairo. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, hold on. Let me open this up. I don't have to do the other one. Hmm. Hmm. Looking a little bit, uh... Hmm. They said they couldn't make something that's both penile and yonic. It the is the tallest building in Africa. Wrong. Interesting. Um... There are not many pictures of it. I yeah. can find more, but... I'm gonna turn off my mic until those sirens go away. This is... This is only fine. I see the idea. It's like two kind of half towers together, sure. It's... A if very I'm tall, being skinny toaster. if I'm being really generous, this is an interpretation of Egyptian temple architecture, but that's clearly not uh, a, <laughs> that that's too generous of a take. Um, with you know, like the front of those Egyptian temples, where it's the two high pillars on the side, and then like the little like facade in the middle. Um, it looks like maybe they were trying to go for that, but I, I don't think I can give them that. This <sighs> someone says it looks like a, a wine rack. <laughs> looks pretty wine racky, yeah. Um, and someone else says it looks like someone unzipped the tower. Oh God, yeah, that's um, that's pretty catastrophic. Uh, this is <sighs> this is nothing. It's just there. It's just tall, and it's there. Good for them for having the tallest building in Africa, but this ain't it. I'm sorry, gang. Not iconic. It is utterly forgettable. <laughs> Uh, I think we can Red, uh, got black go through one more. Widow. Yeah, I'll do one more round of them. Yeah. Sorry, I was talking in blue was saying something. Yeah. Sorry, I got black widow? Yeah. I mean, yeah, smash. Like, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I got eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I got eyes. This is, like, one of her jobs. She's going to be really good at it. Like... And you know there's going to be no emotional baggage. This is very much what, like, it's, it's, it's all business. So she's, she's in the business of kicking ass and also sometimes the business of pleasure. It's going to be great. And maybe <laughs> I'll die. But you know what? That's a risk I'm willing to take. Cyan, you got Nick Fury. Pass. But I had to think about it. <laughs> He's got so many contingencies. <laughs> I got Wasp, and in hard contrast to uh, the Ant-Man of it all, if you have the opportunity, if you get to interact with Jan Van Dyne in any way, interact with Jan Van Dyne. Yeah. <laughs> Truly it's my Yeah. Cool. And final building, Blue, you got Willis Tower in Chicago. Oh, let's go! Yeah, uh, no, Willis Tower... It's the Sears Tower. It, yeah, uh, Willis Tower, not actually the name. Uh, Sears Tower still. Not out of loyalty to uh, Sears as a company, but in recognition for the tower that was the tallest uh, building in the world for, like, 30 years. It's the third um, tallest in the U.S. still. Yeah. And North America. Yeah. Um, no, this is, this is a classic. Um, a great piece of engineering as well as architecture. Um, it famously figured out a new way to do... Um, tall construction so for instance if we look at uh i'm actually going to go over that way um if we look at the um empire state building it is very thick 
internally. You need a lot of columns to keep a building like this up to hold all of the weight and keep the building um, from like blowing over in the wind. So the internal floor space of the Empire State Building is not that great, honestly. It was the best they could do at the time, for sure. But in, you know, 40 years of, of new, uh, new technological innovation, you can do a lot more. So what the Sears Tower in Chicago did was basically use a bunch of tubes um, uh, all of the little buildings uh, that are kind of stacked next to each other are each a hollow tube and that is like a column so it's the rigid body that supports everything so instead of needing a gazillion internal columns to keep a building like the Empire State Building standing the Willis Tower uses I think it's nine um, kind of gridded tubes so the interior um, is very open and there are these kind of walls dividing it that are the structural elements rather than needing a gazillion columns um, like with uh, the Empire State. So it's a really cool upgrade to the way that we were able to design tall buildings that was bus assault by Jesus Swanson. Wow, uh, interesting. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus Swanson, for, for telling us that. Um, Uh-oh, 88 spotted in username. That's often a bad uh, sign. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> true. Maybe they were just born uh, before the 90s. Um, I don't possible. think this game would pull that. This doesn't seem like something they'd do. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, Willis Tower, uh, Sears Tower, uh, in truth, um, gorgeous building. Um, absolutely uh, iconic in contrast to what Cairo had going on. Um, easy, easy smash. Great piece of engineering, great piece of architecture. Uh, a classic in the Chicago skyline um, that uh, basically... Every other building in Chicago that exists that you can see at the skyline level exists to frame the Sears Tower. <laughs> and the Sears Tower exists to frame all of them. There's a great um, video by an architect named Stuart Hicks on YouTube talking about essentially why the, um, the Chicago skyline looks so nice in terms of just like visual composition, uh, looking at it from the angle of the, the lake um, with the balance of... Um, Grant Park in front of it and the other kind of layers of buildings leading up to uh, the Sears Tower. It's all-time classic. Fantastic. Nice. Great way to end out the list. <laughs> Alright, and that was that. Thank you all for contributing to this round of OSP um, Marvel and Architecture Smasher Pass. Perfect. And if we do 7K, we can try that constellation thing somebody suggested. <laughs> Hello, Sanctum Sanctorum. We. Oh yeah, I forgot the black cat was in this game for one mission and then yeah. just fucked off. <laughs> She was here to basically be like, by the way, I'm gay, and then just leave. Honestly, respect. <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> Insomniac developers are like, once <laughs> once you players show that you can behave, <laughs> she'll come back in the story later. <laughs> players Maybe did not show they could behave. Yeah. Oh, City Hall is getting wrecked. <laughs> I'm by by uh, the story of Black Cat in this game. <laughs> hey -o. She stole the get out of there stick so she could leave the plot even faster. This is probably the largest scale threat Venom has ever been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Web of Shadows, he does kind of turn into a kaiju, so there's also that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Thanks, Miles. <laughs> also, now the benefit of... It would be very of... funny if the Danny... Oh. Uh, no, go ahead. It would be very funny if the Danny cast did a little PSA about, like, 
Now, if you find yourself getting symbioted, don't panic. You'll probably awaken sometime later with Peter Par uh, Spider Man kicking you in the face. Don't worry, this is normal. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> It's gotta be rough being a random civilian in any sort of setting where bad guys just sometimes possess innocent people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, what are you gonna do about that, right? <coughs> like, yeah. do you get paid time off for that? Is that kind of the sick day? Occupational yeah, hazards like, oh, of being a New Yorker. This person never showed up today, and then, like, at 3 p.m., the boss gets a call, like, Yeah, you saw that thing on the news. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> but also, do people ever fake it? Like, so yeah. I want to call in sick, but I'm out of sick days, so I'm going to call in... I briefly got recruited into Villain of the Week's Army of the Dead. Um, we're fine now, but it wasn't fun. It's the newest uh, fad uh, unemployment fraud is, like, someone running downtown to get possessed by Venom. Like, I need the time <laughs> off. Bosses start demanding a doctor's note from the EMTs that checked you out after you yeah. got unpossessed. They got Mark a little Lee. pad of just like extra notes, you know. It's like well, this has become a part of our job very suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Lee's here to complete his redemption arc, and I'm happy about it. Oh yeah, Peter still has ambient symbiotiness inside of him left over from the hive mind. Oh, it's time for that Peter Parker battle in the center of the mind thing. Yep. I mentioned. Yeah. I'm just too good, baby. <laughs> OSP Red never misses a trope. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest trope identifier in the West. <laughs> if you've written a story, so have a lot of other people. <laughs> this is good, though. This is a funny way to do it out of order, because normally you have to do the battle in the center of the mind with Peter before you get the suit off. level up yeah let's go let me actually get some some new skills um i like that martin lee's powers have the same aesthetic when he's bad guy and when he's good guy yeah it's like yeah i'm gonna turn into my giant kaiju demon form you had a boss fight with and then we're going to fly away you can get a new suit too uh yeah let's see what we got Oh, into the Spider-Verse suit. Nice. Hey, -o. Little uh, costume. Okay. In terms of freeze frame bonus bonuses, uh, when Miguel and Miles are fighting across the Spider-Verse, uh, there's a brief, there like three frames where Miles is visibly in the suit, the, that suit, the one he got from Stan Lee. Oh yeah. Oh. I think that's my favorite um, Stan Lee cameo, where he sells the costume mm -hmm. and he's like, it always fits eventually. It's like, oh, that's really sweet. And then absolutely no refunds. Oh, yeah. <coughs> you good, dear? Yeah. Okay. We can symbiote, take back control, use our powers to save Spider Man. Where do we start? Oh yeah, Spider Cat's down here with us in, in Pete's brain. Follow me. Pete wakes up like, I wanna claw at stuff and knock <laughs> things over just to feel something. <laughs> Peter's physical body still wrangling the suit briefly pops cat ears out of the symbiote. <laughs> I'm gonna be bummed if this involves a Martin Lee heroic sacrifice, but I also will not be surprised. Oh, hmm. We'll see. <laughs> You can't hide your tropes from me. I see all. <laughs> you cannot hide your tropes from me. <laughs> These are all the people he's put away. It makes sense why Spider-Man would think about his fate. Most of us are here because of him. Reminds me of the uh, when when BDG left Polygon to go independent, and now um, the the waves of of people quitting YouTube um, this mm. year. Um, it is uh, obviously in one dimension very sad, uh, but it's cool to see people choosing to go out on a high note. Like, I've had mm -hmm. my fun, I've done everything I wanted, this is great, 
now let's let's take a step back so I can kind of enjoy it. I, I respect the choices that everybody's making. Um, respect to Matt Pat from Game Theory as well, um, whose video went like mini turbo viral uh, on trending and stuff um, mm -hmm. over the past uh, week. I know we, we've said, you know, game theory not our favorite style of, of presentation overall, but always, you know, respects to Matt Pat as a creator. Incredibly hardworking from everything everyone has said, an incredibly nice guy in general. So, um, to everybody who is uh, is choosing to, to wind down their, their YouTube activities, um, we're very happy for, uh, for their choices. Um, we are not going anywhere. We're going to be around for a very long time. Don't worry about us. Um, but I know it's... Uh, it's kind of scary uh, to be an observer uh, for all this and be like, where's everyone going? Um, they're they're good. They're just they're ready to, to change stuff up a little bit um, and yep. and take more time mm -hmm. for themselves and their families. So it's 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 not the easiest thing to, to see because uh, change is difficult, but it is it is nice and I I am glad for them. So I just wanted to say that. I think, oh, I think like knowing better tweeted something about this that I saw where it was like it, it did feel like there was there was something there was some kind of like change in the air at the beginning of the year. It is just kind of also partially that the huge influx of um, viewership in the pandemic has ebbed, and the video game industry has felt this as well. Um, mm. Where yeah, this is what uh, Peter would do to the Sinister Six if he had the symbiote suit. Like, I would ruin them. Um, because, you know, video games had a huge boost of, of players and stuff um, in the height of the pandemic as everybody st was stuck inside. And then as they're able to kind of go out and do things again, time on video games is decreasing. Time on, um, on YouTube is decreasing. So watch numbers are going down. Ad revenue is going down. And it's hard to see the numbers go down. Um mm. So I can understand where a lot of people is like, numbers. I can keep busting my butt for the numbers to keep going down. I can bust my butt even more to try to keep things even. Or I can just kind of like call it and, and be done. So again, we are staying. We're not going anywhere, <laughs> but we can understand the, the thought processes that other creators might be going through. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I also think like as, you know, the, the, don't get me wrong. Pandemic is still going strong. COVID and flu numbers this year are terrifyingly high. Yeah, it's the worst but, it's been in two years. <laughs> but that is not the general narrative around it. So I think for a lot of people, they're kind of feeling like, oh, I remember what things were like before this. Like, maybe I could actually start thinking about things outside of, you know, COVID safety and stuff like that. I mean, I might be giving too much credit in general for how much people were worrying about that in general. But, like, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. it feels like things... It feels like the world opened back up in a way that it hadn't been open in a while. Yeah. Where it was like, you know, when everything was in, when everyone was acknowledging that things were bad, it was like, we all have to be careful and we're all in this together. And now it's like, fuck do you mean? Obviously I can go back to doing other stuff than just online things. And like, I think it's, it's a factor uh, that might be affecting why this feels different than it has in previous Januaries. Um, I'm not saying that it is why people are like, now's a good time to leave. But I, I think that it might be a factor in, in the general vibe changing. Yeah. Also, a lot of people are coming up on their, their various, like, 10-year marks. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a, a good time to be like, all right, great. It's a nice round number. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, who's the director? Um, uh, Tarantino's like, I'm going to make 10 movies and I'm going to be done. It's like, all right, cool. For some people, it's like, I want to do 10 years of YouTube and then I'm going to be done. Um Alpha Rat had a video the other day of like, I've still got a few years in me, I'm not going anywhere. But like, I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. Let's let's look back at that. It was very cool to see him watch some of his oldest Pokemon uh, videos where it was like, uh, welcome back to uh, episode 2.5 of my Pokemon playthrough. Um, I was recording for about 10 minutes before I realized I didn't have any sound. It's a very funny video if you want to watch someone watch back through their earliest work. It's, it's genuinely really fun. Alpha Red's always great. Um, but a lot of people are probably coming up on having been on this platform for a long enough time that it's like, yeah, I think I've done uh, about as much as I uh, can do. Because also, people who started YouTube in the pandemic, at the start of it, like, they've been on YouTube for four years now. It's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like you also have to acknowledge too, like people get to a certain point in their lives where like they are a little on the older side, they have a family, they have might have kids. Like it's very understandable to be like, Oh, I'm at this phase of my life where I don't want to be you know, playing a game for a video for hours and hours and hours or yep. you know, doing all the research and that's a very understandable move to make. It's a it's a weird space to work in, is this like new media, YouTube, social media content creation y area because it's very untraditional. Mm -hmm. uh, but there comes a point where, you know, sometimes people want to yeah. take a step back and do something else. And I think that that's probably what a lot of this comes from as well, in addition to, you know, the more extenuating circumstances of passage of time and the state of uh, the world yeah. and our in, you know, numbers and everything. Like, it, it's okay that if like someone it. wants to change their career in the middle of their life. Oh. Also, not to get back into the game, but I fucking called it. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't be so hasty. Well, I mean, he might not be dead, but, like, it's shaped like that. <laughs> A very good character moment for Miles, where it's like, I can't forgive you, but I can't... I gotta get you out of my head, man. You're taking up too much space in there. <laughs> yeah, gotta I'm clear letting out the it go. A bit. You okay, man? I'm fine. Just keep fighting. Yeah. The galvanized power is pretty cool. Grievous pain effort. I'm fine, Martin Lee. The subtitles are denying that you are fine. <laughs> What I was going to say earlier was the benefit of all that work we did for the upgrades is that we now have the triple shot Sonic Blast, um, mm. which is so nice. So we shoot a single Sonic Blast and then it shoots out three other ones, which basically gives us, you know, three times the benefit of the, the gadget ability. And of course, this being like the one gadget attack that really fucks up the symbiotes. It's good to get this one because the game becomes kind of impossible without it at the very end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know, do we have any other thoughts on, uh, you know, various, like, ten years of making videos for people and people deciding to be like, maybe I'm, I'm done? Um, or was that know, pretty I much all we've got? I think that, um... Oh, I don't know. I, like, I do have thoughts on this. Um, but, like, I think they're all kind of tangled up with this other thing I've been thinking about, which is, like, as a person, you know, it's okay to not be ready for something yet. Mm-hmm because you as a person are going to change and you might become ready for something later when you previously could never imagine that. Uh, whether that's like a comfort zone thing or like a, you know, stage in your life or something like that. And like, we're not going anywhere on YouTube and I don't want to go anywhere but YouTube. I'm very happy with what we're doing on YouTube. But there was a time in my life when the thought of stopping what we were doing or being stopped was like really, really scary to me. Oh yeah, and real quick, no uh, catastrophic character moment for Peter right here. <laughs> oh shit. And this, they kind of, I didn't really talk about this before because obviously spoilers, um, they kind of reversed the placement of why Peter was so hung up on the symbiote making him a better Spider-Man because he thought that it would stop things like this. Mm-hmm. It was a fun reveal. Yeah. Poor Yuri. I really thought it was going to be Uncle Ben when I saw this scene the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the rights for Uncle Ben are tied up with Marvel uh, and Sony in the film world. <laughs> Watch out. Kip up. New suit. What? Oh, what? What? Go. I've got this. Huh. Anti Venom. You know, weirdly. I had it spoiled for me that this was in the game and clean forgot about it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Embrace the goop. Mm -hmm. Recolor it. Invert that goop. Become a guiding light. It's almost like it's been color inverted. Like that's some kind of power that Mr. Negative had. <laughs> oh, that's literally how it works. Cool. Fun. I do like that the anti-venom basically sets them on fire. <laughs> God, they just explode. I like that they shaped that like a Martin Lee Road sacrifice, and then we're like, he's fine, actually. It's like, what's gonna happen to you? I guess we'll find out. And the answer was nothing. I 
I like the anti-venom suit. I know I'm in a minority opinion on that one, but I, I like it. It could have been better, yeah, yeah cool. but I like it. People in chat supporting you. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. It looks like a good suit to me. Yeah. I feel like if you add too much to it, then it sort of undercuts the yeah. like cool contrast effect it has going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. That's a cool power. So, like, lore-wise, I guess this means that Peter has a little symbiote friend who's a good guy now. Yeah. That's weird. It'll be interesting how they do this with Spider-Man 3. Because um, it's like, huh, is he just going to keep that forever now, or what? Yeah, they had a pretty clean way to get rid of the uh, advanced suit in the first game, because it gets the absolute yeah. shit kicked out of it when you're fighting Doc Ock. Yeah. Oh, I love that. If you get the anti-venom and a parry effect, you can take out the brutes pretty fast. And those big guys are a pain. Mm. Guess I should thank you. Oh yeah, it really seems like Pete should give the suit to Harry. You know, that's a good idea. <laughs> that would probably certainly help. Actually, I have squared the circle. I think I know how they're going to handle this. Yay! <laughs> Right. It's so cool that they gave Martin Lee a redemption arc when it yeah. was not expected or necessarily even, like, asked for. It was like, okay, we dealt with Martin Lee. Cool, that's it. But the Spider-Men are better than that. They they put in the work. Good for them. Does he still have powers? I think so. Maybe MJ was right. Why would the city need me? And it has you. <laughs> I don't know. This city still looks like it's I don't know, Peter. Have you seen how fucked everything is? This is a two Spider-Man job, you <laughs> slacker. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, twist my arm. Maybe, maybe the world doesn't need me. Maybe I can retire or something. No, just hang. So what I want to see is, do I have so close level thirty-eight? I think this is the one. Hold on. Let me look something up. <laughs> um, uh, Spider-Man level 38. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I inspect. I inspect. <laughs> So what I was saying was yeah. that um, mm -hmm. I, I think that a lot of people, you know, leaving YouTube this year, I think the reason why a lot of people freaked out about that is like, oh, everything's changing. These things that were staples in my life are gone now. Um, and it's it's scary to see it from the outside, and it's kind of scary to see it from the inside, too, you know? Like, these are, a lot of these people are like our peers and, and stuff like that, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, you see that and you think about, like, what's it going to look like, you know, if and when I stop doing this thing that I love doing. Um, and the thing I was saying about, you know, the thing, the thoughts I have that are tangled up in this is that, like, it's okay to not be ready to think about that, you know? Yeah. Like, it's okay to not be ready to do that. Like, if you were at the point where it's like, I could quit tomorrow and feel nothing, um, that might be saying something about, <laughs> you know, where, where you're at. But, like, you know, if you're doing something and you still love doing it and the thought of stopping makes you sad, like, you... You don't need to borrow stress from the future by, you know, contemplating how, you know, you know, mementoing your mori too much can be bad for you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think we're we're not going anywhere fast, but like, you know, things do change and people change and grow and people's circumstances change. And like, just because I am not presently at a point where I would, I'm like, I want to stop doing this and I can't, you know, and I can 
I can't imagine being in a spot where I would want to stop doing, you know, telling the stories I love. It doesn't mean that it's impossible for that to ever happen. Um, you know, life is full of changes, some expected, some unexpected, and uh, I think everyone basically lives several lives over the course of their lifetime. You know, they spend time as different people, basically. Um, different parts of their life and different stages of it manifest as essentially different ways for them to exist. It's like, you know, I, I was a very different kind of person when I was a student and I was wrangling that all the time. And it took me, you know, a few years post-graduation to figure out who I was when I wasn't in a rigid structured environment like that. Uh, and I think that it's, it's normal to be scared of change, but it's also completely healthy for your life to change in very significant ways and for you to enter new stages of it at times. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of people basically fully transitioning from one stage that we're familiar with to another one. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's the kind of thing that kind of makes you a little bit melancholic and contemplative, but like, it's a completely neutral fact of existence that this is a thing that happens. Um, and as long as, you know, these guys are finding ways to live and finding ways to, to do what they love and, and, you know, grow as people, I think that it's nothing but good to see people making that kind of choice, you know. Sometimes it is time for things to end, and it's important for a person to be able to acknowledge that and, and recognize that because, you know, being afraid of change is can also be bad. You know, sometimes it's time for things to stop. But yeah. to clarify, not true for us, not yet. We're anyway. not going anywhere. But also, not for a like, long -ass time. thinking about you know how we, um, how we have evolved over time. We talk about this a lot in the ten years of OSP video which is kind of our soft like we've been doing this for 10 years let's look back for a minute uh we're not retiring we're just kind of like like taking an introspection break um it's uh hold on which way am i doing this uh okay um what we have done on the channel has changed we, we were never you know one trick ponies we had oh ouch sir excuse <laughs> you um we never had a, a formula that was so rigidly stuck that we could only do this one thing, and then as soon as that stops working, we're toast. We have grown, we've evolved. New series, new ideas, new types of things we've talked about. Like, you know, me figuring out the architecture stuff last year was a huge evolution in the kinds of videos that I can make that has opened up a ton of new opportunities for video topics, and that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, things are changing, but that's a completely natural evolution of, of what we've done and, and what we can do. Um, you know, we, we've done some experiments that, that turned out well, some experiments that are like, oh, okay, that's cool, but I don't think we really need to do that again. Um, so, ow, I died, I died, I'm not dead, I live. I live, I die, I live again. Um, so even within like the scope of us doing pretty much the same gig pretty consistently, that is, still with a caveat of like but we've evolved what we've done within the osp space over time mm. yeah we haven't been doing the exact yeah. same thing for 10 years which is good because that means that we can grow and change and stay invested and interested in what we're doing with our platform mm -hmm. I love kicking these symbiotes when they're so uh, dubstepped up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just so kickable. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Change is scary. I also I wonder if some of it's just like a time frame thing because YouTube has been around for a while, but I feel like it started becoming like a quote unquote career in around 2011, 2012. That feels like when we started getting the first really big YouTubers who were like making mm -hmm. it a living. Yeah. Um, and we're about hitting the 10 year mark on that. Yeah. Uh, we're like, you know, we're, we're in a different place than we were a decade ago. Uh, it happens to be a place that's still extremely conducive to YouTubing, but it is different than it was when we were, you know, high school, college, stuff like that, you know, yeah. things change. And for a lot of mm -hmm. people, they're, you know, I think almost everybody is going to be in a different place, you know, with a 10-year gap in between. Um, but I also think that YouTube is one of those things that it's sort of 
easier to do while things in your life are changing around you. I mean, we've been maintaining the channel through, you know, for me at least, high school, then college for Blue, and then graduation, and the pandemic. And it's been able to go steady, which means I think that, like, unlike a lot of jobs, it's easier for you to sort of... You sort of need to look at it and be like, hang on, is this still working? Like, you know, a job might just fire you, or, like, the company might go under, and then that choice is made for you. But something yeah. like this that's essentially a hobby, you know that becomes a job, you as the person doing it have basically sole agency over whether or not you keep doing it. And sometimes that means you have to take time to actually like look at it and evaluate like where am I at and do I want to keep doing this? Like I, it would be easy to keep doing this, but you know, is that what's actually healthy for me? Uh, again, the, the whole fear of change thing kind of factors into that. And I think that we might have kind of seen just a confluence of a lot of people kind of simultaneously having that like, am I doing, should I do this? Am I doing this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm grinding out symbiote nests to uh, <laughs> to get this one costume that I want to be able to have because it's my favorite costume <laughs> in the game. It's like, yeah, and, yeah, anti venom is nice and all, but like. Well, no, it's it is it is um, thematically uh, relevant. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. All right. Well, who am I to deny themes? Ow. Sir, I'm stuck in level geometry. <laughs> I'll be with you in a moment. The true weakness of the <laughs> But yeah, the, the thing I was talking about, about like fear of changing comfort zones, like there was a. This is something that Blue and I talked about a bunch actually, because uh, we mentioned this in the 10 year anniversary thing that for a while it was like, I think we got like one more year of this. It's like, I think we got like one more year, maybe like five more years. And then after a certain point, it's like, oh, this is just kind of continuing to work, huh? Um, but like, I was very much. I was pr coming at it from the exact opposite angle. When we started, I was like, this is the first thing I've ever done that has a significant audience. Like, like, this is the first thing I've ever done that people have seen and liked. Because um, I, I had very minimal, like, internet access before uh, high school and stuff like that. So I basically had none of that, like, online community stuff. And it was like, oh, this is working. Oh, this is really working. And, like, every time it was like, I think we got, like, one more year of this. I was like, please don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and no, I, th I thought I was always saying five, but even still, the same, even same still, idea. You know, it is still like putting a, a time limit on this thing where I was like, this is the one thing that, that's worked so far. Uh, and like, I, I, you know, I wanted to use it as a springboard to like do comic stuff, because that was another thing that I really wanted to do, but I knew getting an audience for that would be hard, and like maybe moving on to like writing and voiceover stuff and stuff like that. And there's a lot of things that we could still, like, you know, a lot of directions Take we can go from here. Okay. Um, but this was like the base, this was like the solid yeah. foundation. And it was also like the first thing I'd done that was really working, and it was, uh, <laughs> there were times where I was like, oh man, I, I hope that like, <laughs> how to phrase this, when you're, when you've transferred between schools several times, you get this feeling that a lot of friendships are founded in the circumstance in which that friendship started, and then if the circumstance changes, like if you're, if you're at school with somebody and then you go to a different school, it's like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I will not be as good friends with this person anymore if we don't spend all this time together. Uh, and thankfully, our time after college <laughs> and high school proved that completely incorrect, but yeah. at the time, it was still a thing I was worried about. And again, that's what I was talking about. Like, it's okay to be afraid of something and to let yourself grow and learn over time that you don't need to be afraid of that thing. You don't need to like force yourself out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone will change over time. Um, and I think we've, we've sort of drifted towards the same midpoint starting from opposite directions where we're like, this is going really well and we're both down to continue it indefinitely but it no longer really freaks me out the thought of it ending. Yeah. You know? Like, it's not gonna for a hot minute if we're lucky, but like, it's no longer something that I don't even want to think about uh, because, you know, I've gotten more mature and, you know, things are different now. Uh, certain things that I was afraid of have been proven incorrect, which is, you know, nice. Yeah. <laughs> this is really the OSP therapy power hour today. Yeah. <laughs> How, how's chat, uh, uh, enjoying the uh, the discussion i hope they're not they like thinking are. are they like sneakily <laughs> announcing that they're like no we're trying to make it abundantly clear we're not going anywhere <laughs> no 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 i, they I don't think they... everyone is pretty on the same page on that part <laughs> yeah although i think someone was calling we thought it was funny that jameson called you out for grinding for a new series <laughs> <laughs> Oof. chat wants to know how old we are i'm 27 gang 27 <laughs> 
We've been out of college for a few years. We, we, we graduated right before the pandemic kind of hit home. We had like one year, I think, yeah. before everything got weird. Yep. So it's like, oh, I'm getting my legs under me, figuring out who I am as a person, and then, wah, things got a lot harder to do that. <laughs> um, you guys narrowly beat me getting out of college, and I graduated the year that everyone got sent home for the pandemic. Uh, yeah. That was my senior spring, as it were. And it Honestly, sucked. I think we were very lucky. I would have been terrible at distance learning. Like, if I had the option to just alt-tab into something else, you know I would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely was a... Uh... Tricky. I was a teaching assistant at the time too, and for a motion picture editing class, and that was Ooh. tricky because no one has a rig at home in college that can functionally that. run Zoom and an editing software at the same time. So it went from being a class where like most of what I did as a TA was walk around and help people like troubleshoot Avid Media Composer, which made me very good at troubleshooting. It's a uh, it's a thing I'm very glad that I did, even if it was created uh, like two months of maybe the, the worst two months of working a job in my life. But um, as soon as we everyone got booted home, it was like, oh yeah, everyone is going to have massive tech issues every single class. There's almost yeah. no way we can functionally do the things that we're supposed to be doing anymore, just because like mm -hmm. no one is going to have the money to fully buy a completely up to code editing software and. Like, we were getting, you know, passes for the software itself, but, like, a computer that can run it and then also keep Zoom going or, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, just, like, even doing the assignments for the class, like, running the software without Zoom going, that was proving difficult because a lot of us would go to editing labs and, like, use the resources available to us on the physical campus in order to do yeah. that kind of work. And, like, you just can't mm -hmm. expect people to do that at home and, like, be able to afford it, but there was like really no solution because no one knew how long it was going to last. And it, I feel really bad for people who were taking that class that semester because like, I really don't know that they got anything out of it. Uh, just, just despite the best efforts of the professor who I think really did give it his all, uh, it, it was just in a really unfortunate situation for that one skill yeah. set. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really rough. It was, I think it was simultaneously like way more disruptive than people expected and also like kind of less. Because, again, a lot of this I put in the uh, Those Dang Phones video, because, like, you know, the, the amount to which distance learning and distance working is possible now is, is kind of bananas. Like, um, there were a few people who I was following online at the time who were like, oh, so it turns out this whole time I could have been working from home when, you know, my, my chronic illness or my disability made it very difficult for me to come in. And you could have set it up so I could do that in like a week of work, even though you were telling me that it was just impossible and therefore I could not work for you. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. But like, like that obviously that sucks, but the fact that the fix turned out to be that fast is actually hugely good. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it obviously sucks to make the realization, but afterwards it's like, oh, oh, so in the future I can actually get accommodations. That's good. Uh huh. It yeah. sucks it that it people wouldn't them give them. Say, oh, <laughs> we simply can't do it. It's like, you yeah. could. Therefore, you can. <laughs> yeah, the, the bullshit has been uh, exposed. <laughs> the fix is in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I think I've, I've said this somewhere, but my delineation for what is millennial versus uh, Gen Z is not like, what year were you born? It's, did you finish your undergrad college before or after COVID hit. Because if, mm. if you got the full college experience, no COVID, you had a fundamentally different life experience than people who had all or part of their education disrupted. And yeah. we're seeing the effects of that on, like, I've, I've heard um, people talk about uh, seventh graders uh you know performing at a fourth grade level just because there's three years of huge disruptions to learning that couldn't really account for uh while yeah, keeping kids rough. safe and then it's like yeah they're they're really not doing as well as kids who were able to have a, a complete learning experience <laughs> pre-covid yeah yeah, and again, well, again that's that, that's assuming that. you know everyone can can afford college. Um, someone mm -hmm. in the comments pointed that out. Very, I think. Very true. I mean, obviously, it's a very conditional. It, it is an extremely useful way to delineate 
you know, all other things being equal. Uh, but there is no way to define generations that covers all cases and does not need to be modified for yeah. specifics. No, exactly. Yeah, I mean, just even, like, um, the way that it, uh, it kind of registers in my mind is, like, thinking about Cyan's sisters. Um, mm -hmm. The other three of them all had COVID hit during part of their education. So she has a fundamentally different lived experience with her education and, and background than um, than her other three sisters. So that's yeah. the the difference in, in, in their case. But it, it will take shape differently for different people, and that's obviously Wait, part of it. Mm -hmm. But as opposed to, like, what memes do you think are the hottest memes? It's like, I think the COVID thing is more of a... Thank you, dear. Um, is more of a differentiator you than, uh, correctly in like, how you text or... Yeah. Yeah. Cyan has returned with snackage. And by snackage, he means lunchage. Yay. We're talking about the, um... Uh, the did you have COVID while in school generational divide between millennials and Gen Z. I think we kind of explored all there is to explore in that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that, that basically topic, did but... it, but. Nice. I made a mini onigiri for uh, blue and I have barbecued turkey and rice. Thank you, dear. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go. I'm currently grinding for uh, symbiote suits because I want to uh, get a certain, uh, outfit here. <laughs> I might take a little five minute break to get myself some snackage. Yeah. So I will be right back. This is definitely not warm enough. Oh no. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> when Red gets back, I'll swip it, switch it around. Oops. Is Indigo alive? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just <laughs> hanging back. I uh, did have my college experience affected by COVID, and therefore didn't feel like this was a point where I should chime in because it was coming from the perspective of someone who did not. But no, yeah, it, I, I think Blue onto something there with that because it's definitely a very different way that you have to navigate the post-college life if, yeah. uh, you know, that all went crazy. Um, two minutes to yeah, that's how long I have to fend off these bad guys for. I like that when you are in um, surge mode as anti-venom, you basically just shoot lasers instead of webs. <laughs> shoo, shoo. Gotta give shoo. you something there. Oh, 94% sonic burst integrity. Mm. My apartment is a freaking oven. It's supposed to get a bunch of like uh, sleet and snow and ice and cold weather here in the Northeast uh, soon. My apartment building has been cranking up the heat and I can only close my radiator so much. And so my, I'm like literally walking around in like shorts and oh, like no. a t-shirt, like dear God, I feel like a sweat monster. And then I have all the windows in my apartment like open. It's, it's a nightmare in here right now. I'm sorry if people are getting outside noise. I have to keep this thing open. I cannot <laughs> control it. That's okay. We, um in our last apartment lived above someone who just cranked the heat so like each apartment kind of had its own ac it was a very nice apartment building mm. and i swear the people below us just boiled because it heated our building we never had to turn our heat on we had to run <laughs> yeah. our I've air conditioning in the winter the wall. yeah i'm trying to avoid that so badly i'm like because i got very i adore my apartment uh, i got very lucky the only utility i pay for is electricity and so I'm like trying to avoid running the AC as much as possible. Yeah, it's that's the one fair. thing that could rack up that use. Winter is a nice Sophia pays or Indigo pays almost no utilities <laughs> month. Yeah. Gosh. Americans do use radiators. Pretty much every apartment I've ever lived in has had a radiator. Um, I think it just depends on when the building was constructed for the most part. Uh, yeah. Uh, New York and Philly and Boston have a lot of older constructions and they tend to have radiators in them. I don't know if that's true of like some of the newer towns. Uh, I don't know if like the West Coast, well the West Coast probably has a, a certain parts of it less of an issue with the uh, heat 
portion of the year, but uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Do Europeans uh, think that Americans don't use radiators? This is a, I, I mean this entirely out of curiosity. I just, this is not a thing I've ever heard before. I don't remember off the top of my head what heating systems uh, Europeans are most familiar with. But yes, we do use radiators. Not in newer places because it tends to not be the most efficient. But a lot of the old places do have radiators. Mm -hmm. It's really common in the Northeast, which is where you know we all went, live and, and or have lived at some point. But uh, yeah, I don't know what it's like when you get further out west or down south. The U.S. is a big place. Yeah. Europeans don't have garbage disposals. A lot of Americans don't have garbage <laughs> disposals. <laughs> Not I a don't. universal thing. <laughs> no. My boyfriend and I have been looking at apartments together, and uh, we're trying to really make the adult move of, like, what's, like, the things that we absolutely have to have, like, in our apartment? And we've decided that dishwasher has just been upgraded after a couple of weeks of doing a lot more dishes than either of us really care to. We're like, maybe it's time. Maybe we, like, make that a hard, <laughs> a hard limit. I haven't had a dishwasher in years. It would feel like luxury to have a dishwasher. Honestly, I still sometimes, like, we have a dishwasher. It's right next to the sink, but I still sometimes will just start hand washing things. And I'm like, I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I could see if I needed, like, if I just, like, had some cereal, I'm like, oh, I'll just wash the bowl right now, and then I won't have to, you know, wait for it to come out of the dishwasher. I only have so many bowls. But um, I cannot wait to, like, not have that be my problem all the time. I'm like, great. Ugh. I want a dishwasher so bad. Have I talked about this on stream before? Indigo versus dishwasher soccer continues. Is this, I don't know. This is not a subconscious desire. I have. Re I really want a dishwasher, you guys. Please tell us. I don't think we've had the stream conversation before. <laughs> well, it, that's pretty much the beginning and end of it. Um, I really want a dishwasher. Uh, I don't have one, and doing dishes is my least favorite chore in the entire world. Apparently What's stopping me is that I rent, so if I buy a dishwasher, I would need to find somewhere to put it, and then also uh, I would have to buy a dishwasher. <laughs> um, yeah. Someday. Also, it's hard to find apartments in my budget that uh, have dishwashers and like in unit laundry and stuff, but I'll settle for laundry and building, which is what I usually am able to find pretty easily. We don't use coin-operated heaters. We also don't use coin-operated heaters. <laughs> Is that It's like you have to common? get up in the middle of the night to uh, just punch some that more coins That was the thing in, in like, I, and I only know this because of an Ace Attorney game, but that was a thing in like Victorian England, right? Like they had to like pay the gas meter or whatever. I mean, we, we have to pay for gas, but we don't have <laughs> Not to. Not in real time. <laughs> yeah. Like we just get billed for it. At the end of a reasonable <laughs> monthly billing cycle. <laughs> The pay is pretty outrageous nowadays, uh, but at least you don't have to go coin by coin. Yeah. I will not be using disposable dishes. Uh, I would like to not have to get a bunch of paper, what's it, who's it? And uh, also I have all these plates now and I feel like I gotta use them. <laughs> it's only really become a problem as my boyfriend and I have become people who really like to cook because we'll make a lot of uh, plate intensive recipes and then I'll look at my kitchen the next day I'm like oh we used every single dish spoon etc yeah. I got one of these measuring cups and I'm like it would be so nice if I could just throw these in a dishwasher overnight and not have to worry about it imagine if your car shut down on the freeway until you gave it a quarter honestly <laughs> don't give BMW ideas they already make you pay a monthly fee to use the remote start feature <laughs> fucking vampires <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to get the... No, because I need to do ten more entire levels. No, this isn't going to work. I think you can do it. Uh, do the Mysterio okay. ones. Well, actually, do no, you want me to do really something while you, while you eat? No, because here's the thing. I wanted to get the, uh, the, the, the comic um, uh, black suit, but that's level 50, and it's 3,000 XP for each level up. That's... A lot. I don't think I can do that. All. Yeah, I, that's. Um, no. Yeah. 
That, that's what level are you at now? Yeah. 37. Yeah. So it's at least 13 more levels of... No, that, that, that's too much. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. No, that's going to that's gonna take like hours it's and hours. It's only 2 o'clock. Yeah, but I want to finish the game today. So uh, looking at the math, it, it ain't going to math, folks. Uh, these are the, the most um, uh, efficient ways to, to grind XP. And short of doing every last little one of these, which will take us hours... Um, it's not going to happen. So we're going to beeline through the rest of the story. Uh, I will not uh, be able to get the... Um, Can I do something while you eat? Uh, sure. Um, yes. If you want to go towards the mission, you can. Although that'll probably trigger a cutscene. I'm going to quickly run to the restroom first, actually. What are these yellow things? Uh, those yellow things are... Um, they're basically like parkour challenges. They're a little tricky. You can give it a shot if you want. You have to fly in a path. Oh, yeah, no, I'm bad at that. Yeah. What's the trumpet? Uh, the trumpet is a side mission. Um, I can do that. It's a Miles mission. They can be fun, yeah. Cool, we'll do the trumpet while you... Uh... Where are we supposed to go? Oh. Yeah. Be I feel like my thing with dishes, too, is, like, I really don't mind just about any other chore. One of the things I think is the few, one of the few advantages for me as a person working from home, because I really do like, like, being out and talking with people, uh, is that... Um, I can just vacuum or like take the trash out or throw some laundry in while I'm putzing around. Like it's one of the few things I'm like, this is actually a huge advantage because if I did not do this, I would never get these things done. And I mm. like doing those chores, but I just hate fucking doing the dishes. It's like all slimy, your hands get all wet. Ugh. That's very true. What snack did you get, Red? Get through this popcorn. Popcorn? Well, <laughs> yep, I got popcorn. Are you crunching it directly into the mic? Because if not, you should be. Ooh, good idea. Hold on, let me, mm -hmm. let's ASMR this a little bit. While well, well, I twip my way around so Blue through? can eat something. <laughs> Alright. I know I could theoretically use gloves, but it's just, it's adding more steps to the thing I already don't want to be doing. So by the time I get to doing dishes, they're just, they're either happening or they're not, one way or another. Um, whip. Violet. Someday. Someday. Oh, what's the blue thing? Having a dishwasher is, I mean, would recommend. Um, uh, it's the luxury I strive for more than any other. I wonder if you can get like a little one, like a countertop I'm, one. I know they like make countertop place. ones. I just feel like it would be, I, I don't really have any it's counter space in my apartment currently. And uh, mm. I don't know where I would put it. Like it, it's sort of a, if I'm getting a countertop dishwasher at that point, I have to find an apartment big enough to use the countertop dishwasher, and then I've sort of circled around to, well, why don't you just find an apartment that already has a dishwasher in it? Mm, makes sense. How do I get the bebop? Oh. Ah. You got the- you timed that person out before I could. Mm. Give me the bebop. I don't have a lot of devices in my apartment because uh, I have very limited counter space. Um, so if I do have something like this, if it's like a rice cooker or something like that, that can be stowed away. It doesn't need to live in my counter constantly. Um, similar, like, I don't have any big coffee makers or anything. I just use a French press because I'm like, there's nowhere else to put proper stuff. Everything's got to happen in this kettle or in anything else. Uh, I'm hoping next apartment to get a bigger kitchen, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm planning on, uh, I'm trying to get more into like, like growing my own herbs and spices and like making my mm. own like extracts for things because it's very alchemist coded, which is something I've always been fond of. Um, but um, the, where this story is going is that at some point I'm going to need to buy a bottle of vodka because I want to make my own vanilla extract and you make that by steeping vanilla beans in vodka. Um, you could also you do rum, but you don't have that either. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I've like it's the same thing either way. I've never in my life purchased alcohol. <laughs> I simply do not drink it and have never tried it, so I don't know the science of it. Like, like I don't. Know. Okay. Like, well, can I use the self checkout if, if it's alcohol? Like, is that okay? You cannot. Nope. Shit. <laughs> Almost certainly, you will have to show your ID to a person. Uh, although oh, I will say that having moved into Philly, uh, I think I've gotten ID in the last two years. So, uh, you're 25. All you're gonna have to do is uh, pick up the ID. What? Uh, you're over the age of 21. Meant to say. I, I was 25. gonna say she's definitely older than 25. <laughs> she's older than 25. We said I, I that on the stream. I have previously been 25, but it's been a couple. Of years. <laughs> previously been 25. I'm 25. All of us are over 21. It is the easiest thing in the world. Uh, Red, I promise you, it's going to be the smoothest experience of your life. You just got to pick up a bottle of the thing you want, take it to counter, show ID, and be uh, exit stage left. Ugh. Great. I 
I've gotten so spoiled by self checkout. I love not having to deal with people when I can help it. Um, I feel like that until the something about self checkouts at supermarkets specifically can never remember my fingertips. I think it's because I used to I used to do a lot of soldering and stuff when I was the armor for our fencing team in college, and I burned my fingertips a lot. And I'm worried I've maybe burned them to the point where some self checkout schemes just can't like comprehend them. Like I. I got so mad. I was trying to say like I have two lemons, and it wouldn't let me click on like lemon. And I was trying to like I went to like type it in the word. I was like, okay, well maybe it's an issue with the like screen of various fruits and veg. And it was like, no, 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 it's still not like connecting to your hand. And I'm like, oh my god, this is this is my living nightmare. My boyfriend eventually was like, what's taking you so long? But they they didn't have them. This is my local grocery store. Uh, and also, I didn't have the proper equipment, and I was trying to just get out of the store, and all the lines for the actual cashiers were too long. Uh, and then, it, egg on my face, it took me far longer to wait for one of them to come over and be like, are you just not tapping the screen? And I'm like, no, 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 you see, I am, but I am struggling immensely. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I seem to have a secret agent in my way into being really bad at using this thing that I'm going to encounter a lot in my life. That would be a very funny problem for a James Bond type to have. Burned all my fingerprints yeah. off. Can't use a smartphone Can't anymore. Can't use a smartphone anymore. Nice. It does. It's Never only like self checkouts at like a couple yeah, grocery stores. It's not every inside. screen. Most screens mm -hmm. work fine. So I'm pretty sure I have fingerprints and stuff, but I don't know why those self checkouts <laughs> didn't seem to work. You have, it's like, happened to me a couple times. Analysis works. No, yeah. I use a passcode <laughs> because I mm -hmm. uh, haven't updated my phone's software in like four years. I don't know if it's a software thing. I think it might be a hardware thing. Well, I still haven't set it up either way. Yeah, well, either way. One of them is. Indigo uh, wants a dishwasher. I was educated on right. how to buy vodka at the grocery store. Interesting. And that I might not have fingerprints. Well, be careful and let me know what you find. Is this in the truck? No. I really don't think you'll have any problems, Red. I think this is going to be a pretty smooth experience for you. I agree. I think it's probably going to be fine. It's just, you know, the, the unknown is always frightening before you experience it for the first time. Yeah. Having bought a, a, a certain amount of alcohol in my own life, I, it's been pretty anticlimactic, all things considered. <laughs> I figured. Red, why and are you finally, I'll get to, to make vanilla extract. Uh, I oh. want to make my own vanilla extract. <laughs> um, of course. I, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that I can figure out how to, like, you know, grow my own, like, oregano and thyme and stuff like that. Not that difficult, cool. actually. Herbs are surprisingly hardy. Yeah, I've just been trying not to bite the bullet and buy dirt it feels weird to have to buy dirt you know i mean you could try so to steal it from the you park you really but... have to buy the dirt the one time and then it's, you get a pretty good supply of it yeah plus you get to go to a garden center and those are always so fun oh very true very true anyway Take i'm excited to, to foray into it but vanilla extract would be the quickest easiest least growing-y thing i could do for you know alchemisting my way through a kitchen on account of how I don't think it's possible for me to hand grow vanilla plants in my own home. I feel like that is the hard limit on what I could possibly be doing. <laughs> vanilla orchids are like really hard to grow, right? I think that's right. Is it vanilla orchid? Do I even know what I'm talking about? My understanding about? is that orchids are a complicated plant, but I have never heard the term vanilla orchid before. Christmas before Christmas so I don't know. No, I was right. Vanilla orchid. It's a thing. Huh. Oh, they are important. orchids. That's so weird. Funky. Um, you can press uh, R1 and circle, and that'll fuck them up. Toss. Huh, this does look like a thing I could Toss. theoretically grow at home, but it has hefty growing considerations. Toss. As someone who's killed a lot of houseplants in her day, I recommend starting with a much Toss. easier plant. Maybe a pothos mm -hmm. or a snake plant, perhaps? <laughs> could even go for some aloe if you want the kitchen vibe. I will say, if you, uh, if you get, like, a starter plant, a lot of uh, herbs are really hard to kill. Mm -hmm. So if that's where you want to start, maybe instead of an orchid, you do start with set oregano. Why? Yeah, maybe. Doink. I would say go for basil. It's the one herb that I've managed to not kill so far. Um, Time rosemary is, is very detrimental. Uh, basil's pretty hard. Down to, on basil and mint are both pretty yourself. hard to kill and need to be in for pots for a there reason. There it is. Because yeah. you don't like, put them in a pot, they will take over the entire garden that they're planted in. So I would yeah. highly recommend you going for one of those leafier guys to begin. Could make like a mint syrup, probably. That might be good. Well, yeah, I actually did have what? a mint plant for a little while. Um, well, the bigger problem is I had about 50 mint plants all sharing one little pot. So eventually they just killed themselves. 
Mm. I've successfully managed to kill Mint. I didn't think it was possible. Join the club. We'll try that again. <laughs> yeah, no, I noticed I got shot. Thank you. <laughs> so what you can do is you can use either, um, in this case, see the, the R1, those little gadgets. You can hold R1 and then press any of these little buttons here, and it'll do certain attacks. Yeah, like that. You can press triangle. And you'll do a little really attack. You can punch him while he's in the air. Oh, well, the no. That's wrong again. It's the wrong ones. So you can do more of those attacks with holding R1 and then the other buttons. Yeah. And you can uh, press chat, square to punch uh, them. We see you about some plants that are toxic to pets. Um, Red does, Red not, does have not have any pets, unless and I specifically got rid of any plants that were going to be toxic to cats before I got Ziggy. So we're all we're all on it. Don't worry, we got you covered. <laughs> Finisher on boots. That's the um the having popcorn difficulties. That also works. Yeah, you can do mm. more of that. I do like making my own pop, like popping my own corn. You know, get the kernels and spice to your liking. Mm. It's one of the only instances where I've used like a pre-made spice mix because uh, everything but the elote seasoning on some popcorn is pretty tight from uh, Trader Joe's. Mm. Very good. Nice little kick. A little cheesy. Very good. Very tasty. I have very square, weak square, popcorn square, opinions. Square, I just love the movie theater square. butter kind. I mean, that's square, the ultimate, right? Square, like, mm -hmm. square, square. There's so literally nothing square. in this world when I love more than going to a movie button, and getting just the world's butteriest, yeah. most disgusting batch of that. popcorn. It is. Oh, nice. Still so sad. Because, like, no, it's okay. I'll figure it out. In pursuit of being COVID safe, I haven't felt comfortable like eating in a movie theater since the pandemic started. So, like, it's it's the great tragedy. But I can just replicate it by having a large TV I sit near and popcorn I make at home. Yeah, I feel like I've lucked out because uh, I guess the other perk of working from home and working freelance is I make my own schedule so I can go to a lot of like matinees where it's yeah. just me and usually nobody else. Maybe once in a while you'll get one old person at the far corner of the theater, but I felt okay eating popcorn in Click this scenario. I'm like, there's literally no one else in this room. Mm -hmm. I, this is, I've paid like. 10 bucks to watch this movie alone in a different room than my own apartment. <laughs> yeah, no, very true. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, that reminds me. Do we know when they're releasing uh, Sonic 3? Nope. <laughs> no shit. I don't know that they've announced that. But they have to. They have. My they, they have the teaser with uh, Shadow's shoes. Oh, but did it have, like, the release date for... I mean, no. they didn't say they were doing the movie. I guess I was quest asking did they say what date it was going out on. December 20th, 2024. Oh, never mind. Uh, they're trying to make it a holiday release. Hold on. Let's see if they've announced the casting for, for, for my boy. Okay. But there's something out there they're still looking for. So I found the second no, it's, it's not yet, uh... Hmm. Ooh, ooh, who could it be? Charlie Parker saxophone. Oh, Miles, head over to CK Walker Park. Okay, why? Mm, One of our interns said she heard a guy mm. talking about a saxophone in town. I didn't believe her at first. She's kind of a <laughs> Keith you David for Shadow would be such a fun move. <laughs> really interested in finding it. As he should be. Charlie Just turn him and Andrew Trouble loose on each other, see what happens. <laughs> Who should I look for at the park? Hmm. Wait, hold on, go back. Hmm. Hold um, L2. No, never mind. Uh, just go up to that little door. Press triangle, yeah. Gotta change clothes first. Don't want to disrupt the festival. Gotta be Miles mode. You don't have okay, to. no, I've got it. Andy Samberg, but doing his Ben Riley voice the whole time. <laughs> Excellent. I like it. Uh, sorry, I'm too busy thinking about my tragic past. Ugh, this is a particularly harrowing memory. I saw someone fan cast him as Apollo in the Percy Jackson series, and I think that that's great casting. Personally. Oh, I would love that. I think love that, that would be so good. Are you trumpet, I also fairly recently watched um, 
pop star and uh, the tennis one they did that's like that same thing for like seven days in hell or something. Uh, those movies are pretty funny. I, I didn't watch them when they were coming out, but they're big for my boyfriend. And uh, going back to the now, I'm like, yeah, I, I can appreciate the humor in these. There's a lot of stuff that's landing for me in this. <laughs> The whole mythos around Lonely Island is fascinating. <laughs> Can't go through that. It has a mythos now? Well, it's just, it's like kind really of like, missed, like, their characters. Oh. Yeah. We, uh, I feel like I really kind of, like, missed them when they were at their peak. Like, I just wasn't a big, I didn't watch a lot of, like, SNL as a kid and shit. So, like, I kind of, I, I wasn't tuned in. Um, but it, it is, I, I do like the humor. I think that there's a lot that works in it. And it's very much a time capsule of the mid 2010s. Extremely true. Hey, Spider Man. Spider Man the cat. Hey, Miles. Mateo. Sounding good, man. Wow, I didn't know you played the trumpet. I dabble, I dabble. Hey, I was actually going to call you. When I was in keynote music this morning getting my horn fixed, some kids brought in a sax they found on the street. I was thinking it could potentially be the baby. Cat, 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 cat. I don't want to get anyone in Bite trouble. Bite the cat. I'm trying to do the right thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. You talking about keynote on Cathedral? Yeah, talk to Eugene. Thanks. Headed there right now. All Trump right. Sounds great, bro. We're still not uh, done with our quest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Spider-Man. You're uh. Yeah. Your saxophone's in this, uh, another castle. Yeah. <laughs> This uh this whole side sequence um is actually really cool. Um it doesn't uh get top billing in the plot of the game because it's of course relegated to a side thing but it mm. kind of along with the um the the flame sequence is one of the most story forward um side sequences and is a really cool look into what's going on um in uh miles's world kind of a follow-on from from his storyline in the game with rio morales being this kind of figure uh in the city and it's uh, it leads to a really cool sequence at the end with uh, with the museum, um, one of those little interactive spaces like the one we were just in. Um, it's a shame it wasn't put into the main story because I think it would have been really cool for pacing, but of course with a game that's as tightly packed as this, it's kind of hard to figure out where you would put it, and if I had to put mm -hmm. it into a main mission, I I don't know where I'd put it. Um, but... It's it's good, and I, I wish there was more kind of stuff like this that just shows what they're what they're doing as Spider Men's in their their kind of not the world in danger, just trying to do good lives. I don't really know where I was going with and that. And it helps that um, I think we mentioned this last stream, but having two Spider Men running around also kind of takes the pressure off the player to constantly be doing main plot stuff. Because it's kind of implied that like the other Spider-Man is probably doing plot stuff while you're, you know, dicking yeah. around finding some guy's saxophone. <laughs> it's an important saxophone. I believe you. So you're gonna hit R1 a bunch to web him up, and then you can punch these guys. You can also hold L1 and then push any of the attack buttons. That's L2. That's L2. L1. I thought you said that was L2. Well, uh, so you hold L1 and then you see those. Okay, yeah, so. Kind of like that. Cool. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm doing my best, man. This no, is not no, my... I'm, I'm just trying to convey, like. <laughs> not my game. <laughs> what, what buttons do. There's a lot of buttons you push in combination. Mm hmm. But... <laughs> Cat. <laughs> These are also really cool missions because they give you a little bit of actual music history, which is pretty fun. He needs that to record his masterpiece. 
Ornithology, 1946. New bird fan. My dad was. I don't know much about that. Mm, mm. Oh. <laughs> it's cool seeing the passion that these characters have for all this. The cat just pokes out at the most inopportune times. I love this cat so much. I think you mean most opportune times. Yeah, I guess. Doink. I wish they played more with fun camera angles when characters are on the sides of buildings. Still eating? I'm. I had one. They're pretty large. <laughs> okay. Three big onigiri. Oh. I hear something out in the world. Mm -hmm. Seems like one of those little spider bots. Gotta go to the theater. Time to take down the boss of this operation. And find the rest of those museum pieces. Okay. Uh, so so in the conversation, this might be the chance to finally complain about Rebel Moon while everything's stuck. But You've no. done this. Yeah, go ahead. Finally, your chance. You've done this so many times. This is like yeah, the but third I keep time getting talked about it in a week. Bad. <laughs> you know, I, I don't actually want to hold everybody prisoner talking about this bad movie that sucks, but it is interesting to me. Go to the roof. Yeah, we're gonna do hard bop, and then we'll we'll continue on with the main story. Yeah, Red, go ahead. Talk about Rebel Moon. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. The problem is like now it's been a few days since I watched it, and like it is so deeply and profoundly unmemorable. Uh, I think what I found most interesting about it is that like sometimes, you know, you break from the standard issue hero's journey because you have like a cool new idea. And like you want to subvert expectations a little bit, and I think sometimes you do it just because you don't know how writing works. <laughs> ah, interesting. <laughs> so like, the the movie did like three things that subverted my expectations, and they were always things that the movie did not do. Um, so they put a lot of work into like introducing in the first set piece, uh, which is of course the Tatooine equivalent, you know, humble farm boy situation. Um, they introduce, basically, among the crew of asshole stormtroopers, there is one who seems like a decent sort. You know, he's got, like, a moral compass, doesn't like his peers being shitty. Um, there's an, a British robot soldier of the old republic kind of thing. Um, and then there's our ass-kicking lady protagonist. And then there's a hapless lady who... Uh, gets attacked and it makes our hapless lady protagonist, or badass lady protagonist uh, rush into a rescue and they have a fight sequence with her and the good guy stormtrooper and the noble hearted robot guy and they like have a cool fight scene and then the robot guy just sprints out into the night and we just don't see the good hearted stormtrooper again and then she's like I have to go with this farm boy and we have to go recruit a bunch of other guys to be the main characters and help us protect this village from the bad guys. And it's like, what happened to the people that you just had a whole fight scene fighting alongside? <laughs> why, why are those not option? Why are you going to space before you try option one? Um, and that just felt like a weird dangling thread of the writing. And it's like, oh, you know, if you were like, I'm going to introduce a good hearted stormtrooper. And then as a twist, he's not going to join the crew. That would be something, but this honestly felt like the writers forgot about him between scenes. Um, also, maybe the bot was too expensive to keep because he was voiced by Anthony Hopkins. Um, and then they just go through a linear the sequence of work. Yes, you can. I dodged too soon, though, so I didn't get a chance. Ah. 
And then they just That's go through a linear sequence of recruiting a bunch of different badasses. And they are each introduced with one fight scene each. Uh, then they join the crew, and then they just don't talk to each other at all. Um, and usually they are introduced with a problem that is solved in the same scene and in the same location. So, like, you introduce the problem and the solution in the same set piece. Which isn't automatically bad, but it is very, um... It's kind of weak, writing-wise. It, it kind of makes the world feel very small and all the problems very self-solving. Um, and the one time, the one time the movie was like, I'm gonna do something clever. Because for context, for those of you who are lucky enough to not know, um, Rebel Moon is Zack Snyder does Star Wars. Zack Snyder was like, hey, Star Wars people, you want me to do a Star War for you? And they were like, no, we're good, thanks. He was like, all right, fine, whatever. Hey, Netflix, you want me to do a Star War for you? And they were like, oh, yes, Mr. Snyder, please do a Star War for us. So it is Star Wars. It's Zack Snyder's Star Wars. His main character is a humble farm boy who's being guided by a jaded soldier from the old regime who's an incredible badass in combat, but also she's the main character. They basically split Luke Skywalker into two characters and then used half of them whatever they want. Um, and then the first thing that happens is they meet a smuggler in a tavern and he's like, I'm gonna help you out, but maybe I'm in this for myself. So that's fun. It's very creative. But then the twist, I don't care about spoiling this, and neither do you. The twist is that he actually betrays them. He sells them all out, and then he dies. It's like, oh no, I can't believe that Han Solo was evil. That's so crazy, because I thought he was Han Solo, who was good. Um, so that's about as sophisticated as the writing in the movie gets. Uh, but it's very easy to telegraph that that's what's happening, because he's like... In the lead up to that, he's like, man, you know, I was in this for myself, but like, you, you, you changed me, you know, you make me want to be a better guy, all, all your like heroism and ideals. And I was like, you have not had a conversation since the movie started. <laughs> None of you people talk to each other between fight scenes. Uh, so the only reason they would be doing that is either they were going to kill him or they were going to make him betray them. And it turned out it was both. So that was very, very creative. It's another case where the movie is bad because it is simply badly written and well, like, poorly put together. I think that Snyder is a good choreographer and a good cinematographer, but he shouldn't be allowed to write the movies that he's directing. Glad <laughs> right, I remembered which one was the break. Hmm. Glad I remembered which one was the break. <laughs> it's like, from Miles' perspective, why would you get your license? <laughs> it's the slowest method of transportation in New York. Mm. A lot of people in New York don't have their license. That's a joke in Across the Spider-Verse. Well, I can't believe the guy with the goatee was evil this whole time. I'm sure you do care about this music. But those things don't belong to you. Was that real life honking? I think it was. I can check. You're under arrest. event would not have been possible without our wonderful curator, Angela, mm -hmm. and this entire community. The way we pulled together to recover the stolen items is nothing less than... Okay, okay. We received more frames. Yeah, remember we got them for the Zelda things? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cleo? Cleo? Um, I don't know. I th oh, no, I do know. She's up... She's in the game room, napping on the chair. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yay, now we get to the museum. And this is legitimately really cool. You won't be able to hear it very well because the game music is low, but when you get to these instruments, it'll start to play a little bit of the instruments with some of the compositions um, to give you a little bit more of a, a sense of what's going on, not just seeing it and reading about it, but actually hearing this music. Um, this is a really, really cool little section of the game here. <laughs> it's cute. I like how they give you all these little, like, walk-around things that are just nice, nice things in the city that make you want to protect it more. Yeah. What I also really like about this section is that it shows um, very directly that artistry is a form of activism, and they often do go hand-in-hand. Um, mm. So not only is it good music, but also uh, it was part of the long uh, struggle for, for equal rights. Um, 
in in American history. Uh, so I think it's really really cool that they have that there. Yeah, I'm glad to see I have which is. Also why you see some people being like, this game is woke propaganda. It's like, ah, yes, black people existing, the agenda of the woke left. When will they stop? Um, I think this is really cool, and I'm glad this is here. Mm -hmm. What happened? Hmm? Oh, got it. Yeah, cars outside. Yeah, this museum is super cool. Uh, this is also kind of a soft little advertisement to go check out the local museums in your cities or towns because there are a lot of things like this out there that aren't the you know the big fancy museums with galleries and galleries of space, but the stuff celebrating local history. Um, it's easy to overlook, but if you've got a little you know local museum in your area. Check it out because there's usually a lot of really cool stuff to discover there. Hey, mm -hmm. I heard you helped find the missing saxophone. Yeah, I got to hold it. Er, coke miracle from that hunk of metal. My dad was a big Charlie Parker fan. He'd be happy to know the sax is here for everyone to appreciate. And maybe lead them back to the music. Music is mm. magic. God, like this is a very expensive video game space that took a lot of work to put together. That is absolutely worth every minute of the time that was put into it. Yeah, Langston Hughes, classic. Mm -hmm. Down on Lenox Avenue the other night, by the pale, dull pallor of an old yeah. gas lamp. Eerie blues. There's a little bit of uh, kind of Marvel character history mixed in with this. Uh, I think one of the characters is. Um, uh, associated with the Howling Commandos, which is like, okay, sure, that's just comic stuff, oh, but I... Hell yeah. I want to say pretty much everything else in here is... That's, like, not obviously a, a little Marvel nudge, um, is just genuine music history. Extremely cool. Should we go back to saving the city at some point? Yeah, uh, after this. <laughs> okay. It's like, everyone's, like, super venomized out there, but, you know, music's important. <laughs> the timing of doing this mission... Maybe not ideal, but yeah. it's fine. It's fine. Those civilians can handle a little veneming. We, we've all been there, except for Miles. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, this character, long and distinguished career in S.H.I.E.L.D. Not quite, but sure. <laughs> this ties everything into the world, so it's like, okay, that's kind of an obvious... Uh, um, obvious Marvel nod. Uh, Angela. I feel like this would have been served to be in the main story. I know that that's the whole like open world, oh, do stuff at your own pace, but this should have been in the main story. I don't know where I would have put it, but it should have been in there, I think. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I real quick googled the person they mentioned who like gave their lives doing something to stop Hydra. Um, he, very minor character in one of the comics, looks like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Saxophone. Charlie oh, Parker. So basically, Bebop let musicians show up. Cool. Gene was right. That is what yeah. MCs do. Gotta listen a little more closely. It's also a cool connection for Miles because he has such an association with making his own music, so it's. I'm sure he's like, oh, I, I gotta be taking notes on all this stuff. This is great. <laughs> I'm learning so much. <clears throat> Thank you all. Thank you so much. Angela told me the museum has a record number of new members. You can dance 10 out of 10 game? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you, Ma. Now hear me out. What if we really teamed up on the next one? I can get my own suit. Ma. Maybe. Algo con brillo. Ma, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Get out of here. <laughs> dance with me. This is just a yeah, sweet a sequence. I love these side missions so much. So cute. 
definitely does a lot to get you invested in the city and make it feel worth saving. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely one of the challenges of uh, superhero stories, which we've discussed at length in various other places, but like yeah. making the uh, taking the time to focus on the non superheroic stuff is, is very important yeah. for the tone. You said, uh, read that you were watching um, Justice League and the yeah. way that Superman interacts with the citizens of Metropolis or wherever the hell else they are is, is really cool. Yeah, I've been re because it's, uh, it's up on Netflix, so I've been re watching the. Um, Justice League, and they do a lot of fun, just like dialogueless character building in the first episode that does a lot to sort of set the tone. Uh, and one of those things is that when they're fighting those like white Martian tripod things, uh, every time Superman gets like punted into a building or you know smashed through something, any civilian in the area will immediately rush to try and help him up. <laughs> it's really cute. Yeah. Um, there's also a lot of other stuff. I like how uh, they sort of. So there's a, a twist in the uh, first couple episodes, which is not a spoiler. Uh, at one point, it looks like Batman has been killed. Uh, I mean, it happens off screen and we don't see his body, but the Martian Manhunter is like, he's gone. Uh, and then the twist is that at the end, obviously he was fine. And the Martian Manhunter was like covering for him to like conceal his presence from the bad guys so that he could sneak in and, you know, reverse the polarity of the main thingy that they needed to deal with. Um, but one of the ways that they sort of hide that twist, even though obviously Batman's not going to die in episode one of the Justice League show, uh, is that everything Jean does in their first meeting is designed to make Batman uncomfortable and untrusting of him. Because, um, like, first of all, he's telepathic, which is already a big no-no for the man with one million secrets. Um, <laughs> and uh, secondly, like, just the way, like, the way that Jean's power set naturally manifests, he doesn't really have a consideration of physical boundaries. And at one point, he saves Batman from a blast by phasing through his body to get to it faster, which is like, Jean, my man, personal space. But like, he doesn't know. Um, and it's just a clever way to um, sort of make the audience discount the idea that Jean and Batman have a plan together, uh, even though clearly that is what's happening. Yeah. I'm excited to watch it back at some point. Yeah, it's real good. Unfortunately, they managed to make Norman sympathetic in this game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Norman can be a supervillain as a treat. This is what you want. Did they make him sympathetic, or is he just being attacked by a guy who happens to be the villain at this exact second? No, he he's able to actually show some human vulnerability throughout the story. There's a lot of stuff that's abundantly his fault in the first game, but he has a, a pretty straightforward, like, I just want to protect my family motivation, especially that, that audio log you're able to pick up um, uh, a little bit earlier on is like, oh... Yeah, this is, this is a sad billionaire. Mm. In many ways, the worst genre of billionaire, but... Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not even having any fucking fun. Yeah. <laughs> Peter just gets bapped. Boink. Such a delicate motion. What's he gonna do with that thing? Find out. You need to know. There is going. The host and symbiote are perfectly fused. I'll find a way to save it. You can't. But you can still stop the symbiote. How? Uh, someone in chat saying, check out the actual National Jazz Museum in Harlem if you're ever able by Malcolm X and West 129th. Absolutely, you should do that. I lived in Harlem for a while. Uh, one of the coolest things about Harlem is just how deeply entrenched jazz music is with the neighborhood. There's a lot of places mm. that have a lot of like live jazz on Friday nights and things. So if you are there, you might it may be fun to do a little stop at the museum and then go get yourself something to eat and listen to some music. It'd be a really cool little one-two punch. Uh, yes. One of one of my favorite things to do in the nice. city. Um, we, me, my roommate, old roommate, and I in New York used to go to the Harlem Shake a lot, which would do a lot of like local live jazz on Friday nights, and that was That's always cool. pretty tight because you get 
a great milkshake and a burger, and then also get to hear some pretty tight music. So oh, that's highly a cute recommend. name for that. I get it. <laughs> also, now we see the city getting absolutely ruined. <laughs> well, I'm glad Miles had fun with the museum. Yeah, it's lousy with goop up in here. <laughs> You don't want an indigo gaming stream, Chroma Corvid. <laughs> Just, I play games very differently than <laughs> Boon Red 2. It would be homework. Uh, we would have a flow chart, and we oh would check God, it off every time yeah. we see a line of dialogue. <laughs> you don't want this. Man. I wonder really what nice Insomniac developer it. had the responsibility of manually gooping up all of New York like this. I mean, look at all this stuff. There's tendrils of symbiote sludge everywhere. Mm. Does make it a lot more fun to swing through because there's just handholds and junk everywhere. Goo. That does make sense. Venom has the same primary method of locomotion as you, so... What? <laughs> Indigo homework stream. Oh boy. <laughs> Funniest thing to me is that you can tell people on the internet, like, hey, this thing that I was considering doing would be a bad idea, and I decided not to do it because it wouldn't be fun. And they're like, no, I want to see it anyway. Yeah, it's like the Brian David Gilbert, like, yep, when he was the making the Castlevania video. It's like, uh -huh. Not even that, just like the Castlevania video. He's like, this was just like an academic list of hundreds of monsters, and then I was like, no, I gotta make this, I gotta make this doable, let's make it just the fuckable ones. Well, but that's um, the thing, like, he, he put a clip from that in the final Unraveled to prove to people, like, this yeah. is what you were asking for. It's boring. That clip is more of what... <laughs> I think, like, there's a world where, because realistically, of everyone on the channel, I'm the only one who could stream Baldur's Gate in, in any capacity, but... I played that game like it's homework, and I don't think that- I, I'm not kidding when I say like it's homework. It would not be fun to watch. It would be very much like, I'm here and I'm focused and I have a to-do list and we are going to hit this to-do list or so help you God. Uh, I did think it'd be fun to do a Baldur's Gate stream and there's no way to make this happen because I, I don't have any cross-system compatibility with anyone, but like to get a group of people together and have them every day of the week, a different person plays the game, and the, but you play as the same character every time and so it's just one save file, and you just never tell each other what you've done. So one person could be playing the game as like, I'm gonna play this like an evil run through, and the other person could be like, I'm gonna romance X Y Z, and just everyone's doing their own thing, and you have to just sort of constantly adapt to whatever the other people have already done as they're playing it. I think that would be so fun, but it's it, like it's, there's no way to pull that off unless you live with five other people who also will stream this for you. The ultimate improv, like yes, it. and. <laughs> I also yeah, liked, exactly. I liked the Danny cast. Uh, being so positive and helpful, and I also liked crime reported symbiote horde. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, a lot of that going around today. Just someone being like, oh, there's a symbiote horde, let me get on the app! <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 Smasher Pass is just all smash, no pass. Oh, I don't know, you might be okay. underestimating the crew. <laughs> We could do that for 7k. We're only about 700 away. So oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Also, um, I will say this to see if we can uh, get um, up to our, our stream goal of, of 10k for this this three, uh, three stream series. If we get to 10, I will mm -hmm. promise, I will commit to doing a bonus stream of blues like architecture, rant, rave, smasher pass, with all of the buildings from the great skyscraper race from oh the first skyscraper being philadelphia city hall up to <laughs> the burj khalifa so basically like all of them uh and possibly even more because that that might not be like a full stream length i will do at least that but like a couple hours of, of streaming some kind of nonsense uh, uh i will <laughs> i will make that my my stream commitment if we get to 10k as i will do a full stream of a blue, like, solo chaos hour, just architecture smasher pass. <laughs> this Hell is my yeah. promise. If you can make it happen before we finish the game, <laughs> so it will oh, be. 
have started playing Baldur's Gate 3 chat. I'm in a bit of a hiatus right now because me and my boyfriend went Hazzy's on a PS5 and so until we move in together uh, every two weeks we trade it off and it's currently it's his week with the play <laughs> Mom said it's his week with the PlayStation <laughs> so I can't play Baldur's Gate right now but I'm, I'm in Act 3 of my first run through and I already cannot wait to start second one. This game's so fucking good. Oh man. I like that there are just symbiotes everywhere now. It's not even crimes, there's just- they're all over the place. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's their city, we just live in it. New York City has finally become as gross as people who don't like New York say it is. <laughs> New York City truly has gotten scorped. <laughs> <laughs> I went to New York City and it was full of these goofy guys. <laughs> I saw a rat on the street just minding its business, and that was the Are deal you breaker sure you for me. Uh, watching the '90s Ninja Turtles by any chance? <laughs> we need more ooze. Ooh. It's so funny to me whenever people are like, ew, there's rats in New York. It's like, bro, there's rats everywhere humans live. Those are fellow New Yorkers at this point. One of them could be Master Splinter. Would you really yeah, be you so know. rude to Master Splinter? You don't know. He could be voiced by Jackie Chan. That's crazy. I saw uh, at, at one point when I was in New York, I, there was a rat that was just kind of like, clearly, you know, trying to find its way back down its little hole to whatever little corner it was chilling in. And I saw a guy who was walking my way, like, spot the rat and almost do the sort of like, are you going to the left? Am I going? I'm going to the left. Oh, no, we're both going to the left. Okay, I'm going to go to the right. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> It's like, obviously the rat doesn't want to, like, get too near anybody. No. Um, the pigeons, on the other hand, couldn't give less of a fuck. Uh, we got Miles' new suit that everyone is way too angry about. <laughs> it's not good, but it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I like it. It's a little toothpaste looking, which is the main complaint. There is another color variant you can get for this that actually looks all right. Um... I think us in the toothpaste suit should not be casting stones in the toothpaste suit. Department. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do miss the cat, though. The suit is not that bad. <laughs> Peter has had way worse. I do miss the cat, yeah. It's very Spider-Gwen coded to the point where it kind of just makes me wish that it was Spider-Gwen suit. Mm. Oh, could you imagine if we got a, a version of Spider Gwen in the Insomniac games? We don't have a Gwen Stacy so far. It could happen. I could read. Happen. I feel like someone told me that if they were considering another Spider in the next game, it might be Silk, not Gwen. Which is I also have also heard of that. But... Well, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll see that later. <laughs> yeah. I do like Silk. I've never heard of the character of Silk before this game. She's a little newer. Um, to, I don't think I've read too too yeah, much of her like individual runs, but it's definitely like um, present in the Spider Verse, as it were. Call the play coach. Great. Let's split up. Cover more ground. You find the meteorite. I do like that Miles' new mask does even less to conceal his identity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you to Mr. Uh, SVCD for the uh, 160 Swedish krona. You mean Craven Bucks. Sorry, <laughs> Venom Bucks. <laughs> God, New York is such a mess. I just keep looking at the screen. I'm like, wow, it is awful out there. It's just so gooey. It's very funny to me that they didn't design any of these suits with pockets. So whenever the characters put their phone away, they just kind of turn around, put it in the general vicinity of their ass, and then fly <laughs> away yeah. with the fact that they have absolutely no pockets back there on full display. He just, like, webs it to his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow. I forgot I had an alarm for uh, when my 
cold brew was going to be ready. And I was like, oh, it's going to go off at some point. I should oh. turn that off. It was literally set for like one minute from now. Oh. <laughs> <So> <laughs> nice. I just dodged a bullet and you're all welcome. <laughs> Perhaps I will take five minutes to prepare myself for delicious cold brew. But I'll do that after we finish beating up these guys. Then I can have two coffee beverages. Nom 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 nom. Red will be unstoppable. Yes, yes. Does caffeine not make you tired? No, it just kind of doesn't do anything. I just, at this point, am enjoying figuring out flavor combinations for coffees. That's fair. This is some of the stuff that has, like, hazelnut infused into it. Interesting. Okay, uh, stream friends. We are exactly, um, $32 away, or no, sorry, $35 away from funny number. Nice. <laughs> and seeing as we have missed it most of the time, <laughs> coordinate. <laughs> Make it happen, gang. <laughs> yes, the funny number. And we're five hundred and uh, thirty-five dollars away from a really funny number. <laughs> yes, Obi, you're right. That would be the funnier number. <laughs> symbiotes at me. A lot of people being like, gotta wait for 6969. Yes! That's what we're that would on. be great. But first we gotta hit 69. <laughs> we've had one, We should yes. lock down what we're doing if we hit 7k, because we've alternately proposed a few different forms of sma Smasher Pass. Um, uh, bed went behead with the different oh Spider-Man movie iterations. I... Ooh. I, I, I don't know. That would be so quick because there there haven't been yeah. that many Spider-Man movies. No way that thing is talking to me. Um, I mean, like, I guess we could do constellations, but <laughs> I feel like only one of us knows yeah. the constellations at any sort of a. Where am I? I like Orion's belt. Oh. <laughs> Oh, are we in the symbiote hive mines now? Yeah, you got, you got goofed in. You got splorped? Splorping. Got scorped. <laughs> it's slor it's slorping time. Yeah, scorped is the hot new Gen Z slang that all the millennials uh, don't use correctly. It's a little bit weird to me that the symbiote is like, Miles is the one I'm going to be focusing on, like, whoa. I don't hate it. Just like. Neither do you. Come on, Miles. Oh, I see. He just, it just wants everybody. That makes sense. Yeah. He wants to spoil oh, all and this the is people. Just a, this is a perversion of Harry trying to protect everybody and not losing anybody. Yeah. Has Harry met Miles? Uh, at Coney Island for five minutes. <laughs> cool. Oh, I see. They're they're using his his girlfriend as hostage. Oh no. Bit of a bit of a weak character beat, but you know. We need another reason for Miles and Peter to fight each other. Splorpin. Splorpin. <laughs> Sparkin! Time. Haley's in trouble. Pete, I saw the uh, let's see if we can get Miles a uh, new colorway for this suit. Because there's a black and red one that does actually look pretty good. Love that part where he said it's venoming time and uh, venomed all over those guys. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Holding. Uh, go back. Going. <laughs> Why aren't the cheeks emphasized? Something more gets into this. Why aren't they? What else is new? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Evolved suits. It's... This one, much better. Much mm. better. I like the svelte racing stripes. Yeah. You can get blue suit. 
I don't know why. You can't get this blue suit. This is just such a generic... How is this different from any of the others? It's just kind of flat. Whatever. Uh, 39, yeah, nowhere near. That looks like a blue lantern suit. Completely wrong dimension. But yeah. It's got that energy. Or like a Fantastic Four-y kind of deal. Mm. All right, well, we didn't come to a conclusion about what to do for when we hit 7K, so chat, I want to hear what you think we should do. If we smash or pass, what category of people should we be smashing out of passing? Chat is indicating that it is indeed Fantastic Four. Okay. Baldur's Gate 3, Greek mythological figures, historical figures, Spider-Man hot takes are just a lightning round. A lot of possibilities. I should pass DC characters at all. Yeah, we did that on the, um, one of the longer stray streams. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Smasher pass, but everybody has a different Smasher pass theme. God, that's, that's pretty funny. So much. It's pretty funny. Definitely increases the amount of back end work we need to get a generator. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> We are coming towards the back end of the game. We've still got, you know, stuff yet to do. We have an hour and a half left of stream. Hmm. Now we're looking. Well, we missed funny number, but we haven't uh, missed funnier funny number. Okay, we still have a chance. Uh, still time. <laughs> You're telling me there's a chance. It's a sleepier right, day well, overall, I think. <laughs> okay, well, if we do, everybody has their own Smasher Pass theme. I could take Constellations. I think that's a very funny idea. Keep that one alive. And you go, Cyan? You got any thoughts on what you want? Sorry, I'm watching uh, a reel where someone has to untangle goats that have climbed over each other trying oh to drink no. milk. <laughs> what? And you go, you could do the Baldur's Gate characters. You're the I local could do the Baldur's Gate characters. I feel like. Uh, a lot of the answers are going to be pretty um, smash focused, but I'm <laughs> down. Who's doing architecture again, I would assume? Probably, yeah. There's plenty more buildings where that came from. Uh, Cyan, you got a category that Smasher Pass that speaks to you? No. <laughs> cool. <laughs> You've also played Baldur's Gate 3, right? At least some of it. I've played some of it, yeah. But that would eliminate the point of everyone getting a different, uh, different That's character. True. Yeah. Periodic elements. Oh yeah, I really want to smash that hydrogen. <laughs> I feel like Smasher Pass is at its best when you're doing something that isn't really... <laughs> a human in any way, shape, or form, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. the absurdity is what makes it work. There's Thank a really you. good Hugbees video that's yeah. Pokemon Smasher Pass that gets into very existential concepts very quickly. That's Markiplier, mm. right? Uh, the no, best one that's one we've Hugbees. ever done was the Smash Bros. Smasher Pass. Ah, uh, yes. Because Super that Smash one was Press. the most close to that. Yeah. Constellations, Baldur's Gate 3, Architecture. Cyan, if you're not feeling it, you also don't have to participate. <laughs> don't want to subject you to it. <laughs> the whole point of the Architecture one was that I had an out because I don't like playing it normally. I'm just tired, man. <laughs> okay. I think I'm probably getting sick. Then we can oh. do a, uh, uh, a three-player version for 7K. Sorry, just to be clear, does Haley know that Spider-Man is Miles? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, right, everyone mind. in Miles' life knows that Miles is Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, 
I, as opposed to... Because I didn't to... think that. So when, when he was like, I like you a lot, and I think you like me, and we should go out, I was like, Sp Pete, Pete, Miles, <laughs> come on, man. Sorry. Too many different spiders, man. Mm-hmm. Well, that's adorable. <laughs> a little, little fist pump in celebration by Miles. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. The world's exploding with goop, but I've got a date. <laughs> now I gotta save the world. All right, so 7K, gang, that's that's the deal. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Ozpod crew all have an individual Smash Pass category. Yeah. It's nice to see Pete trying to do good by Harry. Just leaving a nice little voicemail. So if the Venom symbiote thing is like hive mind, I feel like literally everybody in New York knows Peter's secret identity now. Fuck, <laughs> good point. Yeah. The spite is Spider hell on suits. anyone with photosensitive epilepsy, but doing all these like flame effects while the lights are flickering on and off is really cool. It's like yes. the shot in uh, the Batman where he's um, through the tunnel and mm -hmm. uh, or in the hallway and getting shot, and it's just the light of the muzzle flashes. Really Very fun. True. Uh, someone suggested spider suits smasher pass. Oh, honestly, that's pretty good. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like that one a lot. Can, like go into the menu or something. Mm. We only have so many unlocked. We can still see them though. Better to have a visual. Have to to Very true. So I love how the controller just kind of screams sometimes. <laughs> I kept trying to figure out why my controller was dying so quickly on the PS5, and then I realized, ah, it's because it lights up and screams at me when I'm playing these games. Yeah. Really asking a lot of the poor thing. Mm-hmm. Harry! Harry, talk to me! The internet was in a golden age when that it's me boy on the PS5 meme was everywhere. What? Mm. Like the summer of Pokemon Go. You've seen the it's me boy on the PS5 thing, right? PS5 was a long ways away at that point, no, no. right? That was summer 2016. What? No, 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 no. We're talking about something different. It was like a it's me boy on the PS5 speaking to you inside your brain. This is I have no like a reason for this. You never, you missed the It's Me Boy on the PS5 thing? Obviously, yes, given my means, incredulity, uh, I'll, I'll my incredulous hold on, response. Hold on. Because you said the summer of Pokemon Go, which was 2016. Yeah, I was, it was like another golden age. Oh. It was just like the summer of Pokemon Go. Got it. Oh, did Venom just lick Peter? Come on, man, you're not beating the alligator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just put this in the chat. You can you can watch it later. It's like thirty seconds. Yo, bro. Not cool. Well, I see this is an important fight, but I need to, I need to see this video that Red sent me. All right, all right. Uh, time out. Thirty-five seconds. Okay, hold on, hold on. It's me, boy, on the PS5. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Here we go. It's loading. It's loading. Soon. Soon. Soon he'll understand. Oh, he'll heal the world this. Together. I knew you couldn't have missed it. It was everywhere.
Whoa. That was loud. Was that Ziggs? Hello? We still there? I'm here. Okay. There was a really what? loud meow, and I asked who it was, and I oh, got Oh, that was, that was uh, Ziggy. <clears throat> I was I walking back from the restroom to my desk, and she screamed. Got it. I see. I, I've seen various edits of the, it's it's like it's me or the PS4, it's me or the PS5. Um, the <laughs> bit changed when we got to a new console, they had to find different rhymes, but I've never seen that one in particular. <laughs> That's a little oh. much. So apparently you watching it played it for the entire stream. <laughs> I mean, I had it on yep. my phone, so they probably just heard it on oh, the I audio. See. Anyway, yeah, it's a good, good, good summer, good time. Wild. <laughs> we need to call MJ. I know where the meteorite is. All right. You all need to meet it by May. Oh. What's going on out there, guys? It's the meteorite that the symbiote arrived. Level up. He's using it level 39, level 40. Yeah. No, we need to grind out another 10 levels to get the, um, the, uh, animated OG black suit. Which, they have a white suit variant of, which is really cool, but it's all the way down here, and that's a lot of skill points that, that I don't uh. have. Miles' Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. suit is pretty sick. This one's honestly really fun. Aww. Yeah, that's alright. I like the sportswear suit. I like the one that has him in a big puffer jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Impervious to all damage. The perfect machine. Okay. So we are going to Queens. Alright. There's symbiotes everywhere down there. Uh, <laughs> New York is a mess. At this point oh, in the what game, else is new? New yeah. York is like how everyone who hates New York describes New York. Red, you're very much like nail on the head with, with that one. <laughs> Thanks. It's like I went to New York, there were tendrils everywhere, everybody was trying to attack <laughs> me and turn me into their hive mind. I couldn't get a cab, everyone was so rude. The service, mm-mm. Uh, they said I was on the menu. I no, I did not like that. Left uh -huh, a very mean uh -huh. review. Ah, uh, yeah, so this is Jameson's, like, one nice thing that he says <laughs> the entire time. And even then, it's like a little McCarthyist, so like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Thanks, Jonah. I would describe tendrils as a miasma. It's like a gas. Yeah. His one in the first game with the Devil's Breath was a lot more redeeming. They really just leaned into making Jonah an absolute shithead, which... I understand is the choice they made for this game, but for him to have truly no redeeming qualities makes him a little flat. Mm. Yeah, I like Jameson when he's portrayed as, like, you know, dedicated to the truth, like a newsman would be. Yeah. You know, like, the thing is, this is a rare thing for him because he is usually Spider-Man's most outspoken opponent, and Spider-Man is usually not bad. Like, he's doing his best. He'll sometimes fuck up and be unlucky, but, like, it's not actually, you know, bad. Oh, I flopped. <laughs> so Jameson is always just taking this extremely negative perspective on him and how he works. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I just saw you absolutely eat <laughs> shit when you landed. <laughs> I was wondering whether or not... <laughs> chose to take that one on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the entire front of my body. <laughs> Alright, um, last mission, let's go. Mm -hmm. It's a long one, though, so we're Ooh. stream's not done yet. Except the park reservoir. There's still time for four different rounds of Smasher Pass. All those symbiotes get out of Manhattan. Goodbye, Earth. Hello, Planet Goo. Hello, Planet Goo. I love the They're rock aware. with googly eyes for no reason. Yes. Creating goo and creating symbiotes. But 
it was useless until Harry was hit. Yeah. And that particle accelerator what damaged it in the first place. Cut off a piece at low power. Right, so what if we crank the power up? Like way past 11. Might destroy it. Or free everyone connected to the hive mind. Theoretically. But that reservoir's gotta be mobbed with symbiotes. And no Harry's not gonna let that rock out of his sight. Unless he sees something he wants more. Now that's really, really cute that they used that little little token green for goblin. Harry. Because this is a green yeah. goblin. <laughs> Harry uh, it thinks he's healing the world. I like that of course Spider Man gets the noble warrior on the flying horse. <laughs> yep. I'm really curious to see what they do in the third game. Yeah. I and, gotta say, this is a really yeah, interesting way to reframe the symbiote and specifically tie it in with Harry's ultimately heroic motivation of trying to heal the world. Yeah. Yeah. The story is there. It's just yeah. sped through. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, like, not only is it there, it's doing things that a lot of ver previous versions of the Black Suit Spider-Man arc haven't done, which I think is very interesting. Um, now, a lot of this was very kind of, like, by the book, but also, you know, they remixed ideas in interesting ways. The way they did the Spider-Man has a fight while he's asleep thing is cool, because yeah. instead of it being the Sinister Six, because it's kind of a strictly one supervillain per game kind of situation, it was like, all right, you're fighting Kravitz Hunters and uh, MJ. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is a hell of a twist on the formula, and I like it. Um, what a twist. And making Harry Venom instead of, you know, any sort of Goblin Jr. kind of situation is already cool. But actually making it not just like, oh, he's evil and he hates Spider-Man on principle, but making it be like, no, he legitimately thinks that he can save the world with this power. Like, and that's all he's ever wanted to do. It takes his character in an interesting direction. Yeah. They're just standing there. Menacingly. <laughs> Oh, they switched Miles' suit back. No, let me... <laughs> Cheating bastards. I, I changed the color to the one that looks better. Game. Yeah, I think maybe some of these cutscenes are rendered, like, not in engine, There's almost. A couple where you are locked into a certain suit, depending on, like, where... Like, mostly it's for the Venom suit stuff, but I think yeah. there might be one or two where... It's, it's like how they did in the first game the when... Beat. Yeah. It's like how they did in the first game when you're playing the, uh... When you have the final suit. And it's like, no matter what you've done, a lot of those cutscenes are going to be in the final suit. Yeah. Uh, which probably saves on a lot of, like, uh, rendering power, because they could just pre-render them and then play them back. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Vicky, welcome to standing up on me. Can I... You want to say anything to the stream? Wow, that, that was incredible. That was loud. <laughs> she spoke it directly into the microphone. You're also just a loud cat, Sydney. Loudest cat in the West. She's a born performer. Now, I would really like to have played that chase, because Venom chasing Spider-Man is such a, yeah. a staple of Venom stories. Ugh. But I understand that in this kind of game, you can't really be chased. It doesn't work very well. You can chase things. You chase the lizard, and, and that works from gameplay because the stuff is in front of you. But just given the way this game operates, unless you do like the full crash cam where it's facing backwards, then you don't know what you're swinging into. It's really hard to pull off a sequence of you being chased in this type of Spider-Man video game. So I get why they yeah, didn't do it, shame. but I wish they could. <laughs> oh, you know what? That makes the thing when MJ's escaping from Symbio Peter and she's like, don't look back, MJ, is like, that's a cute little way to mechanically account for the fact that you can't look back. You really can't. <laughs> I feel like a game with almost, I think, my understanding, 99% of the appeal being that the traversal mechanics are really satisfying should maybe put more effort into having chase scenes, though, because that feels like, mm. well, you've built these incredible traversal mechanics. Let's... Use those. Unless you really pull the camera way far back, I don't think there's a way to convey, like, visually what you are running from, as well as here's the environment in front of you for which to run. <laughs> I think that there, there are things you could do with sound design if you so desired uh, mm -hmm. to make it very intimidating. Like, 
I'm sure that horror games have done that, where you're sprinting forward away from a, an opponent. Also, like, it's the symbiote. You could have the tentacles kind of, like, lashing out. Well, because they had that very briefly in the MJ chase. But, like, it didn't go on for very long. I, I think that there were ways that they could have stretched that out if they wanted. Also, the smell of the hazelnut coffee is really getting tantalizing. So I'm going to just real quick flash some milk in that and be right back. Because I don't want to miss the end of the game. is um, making biscuits into my leg, which is all well and good, except her claws come out, and ouch. Cat. I'm happy that you're having a good time, but perhaps we could reach some sort of agreement. <laughs> Maybe blanket is a good option. Maybe really anything like other than Indigo's leg. <laughs> perhaps. A business proposition. No? You seem uninterested in making a deal, Cat. This thing can take a while to uh, recharge. Ah. <laughs> uh, there we go. Looks like the meteorite's connected to the rest of the hive. Acquire rock. Just a normal rock. I can also end the world. Planes Venom chasing Spider Man? That would have been fun. <laughs> We'll see what they do with the Venom game. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there was a way to make a chase. It feels... I don't know. There's so many things about this game that feel really well thought out, and there's so many things where I'm like, it feels like you spent like a couple more months at least making this game. You could have rounded out a lot of other things. Yeah. This game was very ambitious in a lot of dimensions. And in some ways I do like that, you know, they can take a game like Miles Morales, which was a uh, like less than a third of the cost of, of this game. Um, and still turn out something that was really enjoyable, really compelling narratively. Not the most, you know, fancy smancy expensive game uh, in the world, but is just good and fun and well made and it just works. It's like Bethesda, except actually, um, that I, I almost like the smaller adventures more than the, the big one, because there's so many things. Mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah, it's cool that like there's a lot of stuff that is big and cool and expensive and, and fun and really flashy, but for the same reason that seeing that stuff in movies is like, okay, that's fun, that's flashy, but. <laughs> Yeah, like, you yeah. still need to have a good base around it. What are we talking about? I'm just um, saying, like, I think that this game has a lot of things that are really impressive about it, but, uh, you know, it feels like if they had spent a couple more months in development, stuff like the chase sequences and things could have been rounded out in a way that would have made for, like, a more rounded experience. But I, I don't want to take anything away from it. Like, it still seems like a very good game. Um, I don't know. And then It's, it's a little uneven in places. About, uh, yeah. yeah, the distribution of big flashy scenes in movies and also games. Yeah, I think that um, this game, I feel like if they had taken more time with it, it could have been a more overall balanced experience. I think it's good, but there are some games mm -hmm. where I'm like, this is good and more time wouldn't have made it better. Like Tears of the Kingdom, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that is exactly what they wanted it to be. Uh, this game feels like they there were concessions made for the release date. Uh, nothing game-breaking, it just means that like they didn't have enough time to even out how much effort was put into the various parts of the game. Yeah. I nothing wrong with sense. it, just a thing. Yeah. Huh. I, and I guess it's this like- This game follows the 80% rule, basically. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that means I'm, I'm almost like more excited for the, uh, the next spin-off game they do. Um, because I like seeing what they can do with a, a little bit of a smaller game where it's still, you know, this very 
good engine, this this beautiful um, city environment that they've built, and all these you know, traversal mechanics and stuff that are really fun and really compelling to play around in. But I, I like to see what they can do with a bit of a, a smaller scope, focusing more on character and... Uh, eh. I'm getting chased by Behemoth. <laughs> I do really like how the game feels different when you're playing as NJ, and things that are problems, but things that you can punch when you're either the Spider-Man, is like an immediate gut drop of a boss fight when you're MJ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That didn't work. That didn't work. Ah. of you to shoot. Oh, I can't shoot you. Okay, cool. Red is eating fudge. <laughs> something about this game just really made me think of, you know, something slightly viscous in texture. Can't think of what it was. Goo. Goo. <laughs> Goo. Right, here we go. They are just insisting on putting Miles in the suit version we don't like. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. They probably did just pre-render a lot of the sending stuff. Yeah. Because it's all going to happen at a specific time of day, specific cast. You know, they don't need to do it in engine because it's going to play out the same every time. <laughs> Pretty sure your plus one isn't invited to our high school reunion, Harry. Normally I'm quite fond of the Venom Spider-Man uh, fucked up homoerotic tension thing. <laughs> I like that they've added poignancy to it because it's layered on top of the Harry and Peter tragic homoerotic tension thing. Yeah. Hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say a little bit with the stuff about, like, what is expensive in this game, like, abundantly expensive like this right here versus mm. what's just good story and good design is that I I think it, this game made me feel comfortable that, like, my tastes in video games are not ruinously expensive game design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's nice to be able to see an example of, like, oh, this is abundantly not that. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't feel like... I uh, am am easy to uh, to to be played. <laughs> what is she doing? Oh, I remember that stage of the Demon King boss fight. <laughs> yeah. What is funny to me, though, is that he has no reason to be called Venom. He just was like, we're not Harry anymore, we're Venom. It's like, what? Is that the name of the <laughs> alien group? This hasn't been established. <laughs> Which is why I like how they do it in Spectacular Spider-Man, where he literally just names himself that, because his entire motivation is just fucking with Peter Parker. Yeah. So the line is, we're poison to Peter Parker. We're Venom. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's cute. Okay. So we're just calling him that because it's one of the things he called himself. Okay. May as well. Well, if it works, it works, right? Yeah. so weird that he named himself after Miles' superpower for some reason. You're so right, Simon. Yeah. In this universe where it goes the other direction, yeah, really. <laughs> it's always funny to me when, like, an adaptation of a work, like, does a lot to plant the things that they need to to, like, establish it for a new audience, but, like, misses a spot 
and uh, in in into the Spider Verse, the fact that Miles' abilities are called Venom Strikes is like it just becomes a thing that he says at one point. I don't remember where, where exactly I, I heard him say it, and I was like, oh, that's the first time I've heard that phrase, but you're saying it like it's something I should already know. Um, Aw, oh, Venom, you smacked him too hard. I thought you were supposed to become brothers. Please, remember everything we've been through. Nice really going, like dumbass. Point. You broke him. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Jack's point about uh, threatening game over screens, you know, insert more quarters to continue. Um, being slightly <laughs> more fun than just ragdolling and just being dead. Oh, yes, I think Peter B. calls it a Venom Blast in the first film out of nowhere. You're right, I think... Yeah, I remember I remember the scene. It's when um, it's Miles' little Dark Knight of the Soul, where they're about to leave him behind and then go do the, uh, the, th the collider together, and Peter B. says, Then Venom strike me right now! And it's like, then what, you? <laughs> and, yeah, so that, that's what I was talking about. Anyway, funny stuff. Completely covered in symbiote, like, oh yeah. yeah, let's not touch that. Floor is lava, floor is lava. Floor is lava. Floor is goop. Floor is goop. Floor is goop. Then maybe you should touch it. Go touch the goop, Blue. Touch the goop. Touching hey, the goop has never steered hey, you wrong. Look at this I... cool new suit you got out of touch the, goop. the goop. I don't. Go touch the goop. I don't like. I don't What's like. What's the worst this? that could happen? You know. I don't. Perhaps you should let the goop touch, touch the goop. you. <laughs> goop seems very I think the goop interested could be good. in that concept. Yeah, touch the goop. Don't appreciate how uh, close-minded uh, Blue is being about the goop. <laughs> <laughs> Blue seems very anti-goop. <laughs> this spider menace is prejudiced against goop. The goop makes really good points, actually. <laughs> Symbiote Jameson just being like, I think Spider-Man should touch the goop and join the hive. <laughs> This is a hard boss fight. <laughs> There's kind of not a lot you can do to, to deal with him. I would hope it's a hard boss fight. It is the final boss fight, I would assume. Mm. There's a few more steps. <laughs> ah, well, yeah. Oh, I guess I really just have to nail it with the counters. In terms of things that have irreparably damaged my vocabulary, X with extra steps and X but in a different font are really high up there. <laughs> Just so universally applicable. There's many situations in which it becomes good to include. I gotta do so many dishes today. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting them off by being on the stream. <laughs> One thing I can't do is stream and watch dishes. Irresponsibility. At the same time. Very true. They do pretty cleanly transition into cutscenes from gameplay, which I like. Yeah. Yeah. Venom, that's not how consent works. <laughs> Peter's like, you and I watch different anime, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they keep framing that big work for Oscorp sign behind Harry. Like, yeah. I get it. <laughs> Narratively, this is an interesting twist on the formula, because normally the symbiote is the one that's carrying a torch for Peter and keeping, like, you want to join us. This guy's just my rebound. And, like, the host has almost generally hates Peter's guts on principle. So this is kind of an interesting twist where, like, both halves of them are kind of in agreement. Like, yeah, we want this guy back. <laughs> He's being so weird about it, though. Part 
of me kind of wishes that they'd given the anti-venom suit a different looking symbiote spiky power thingy. I don't know. Yeah, they just kind of palette swap it white. They just kind of palette swapped the original moves from the symbiote and like, I don't know, I think it being under his power, it should, it should do more spider-like stuff. Maybe he just gets extra arms or something, I don't know. Oops, I got eaten. Ow. What? No, it's okay. I just got grabbed. Oh. The goop just wants a little a little poke, a little taste. Let the goop have a little taste, huh? Let the goop ever do to you. <laughs> Simply let the goop lick you. If it wasn't designed for that, why would its tongue be so big? Yes. See? The Even logic the is flawless. Trust the goop. Oh, no, I die. I die. Oh, jeez. Oh, Why would Venom bit not my trust head off. <laughs> bit Venom, me that's fucking very... head off. <laughs> it's kind of funny when the game AI hasn't quite figured out that you're dead and just like blunders into your ragdoll cutscene. Because it's like, like, now get up. <laughs> so I can do that again. I think this boss fight is just requesting that I be better at the parry timing windows. And you know what? <laughs> Fine. There's so much hazelnut in the whole group. This is great. Ooh. Ooh. Controller level low. Hold on. Oh no. Yeah, still list here. Yeah. I got it. He looks very Cheers. cool when he's mid, like, being on fire. <laughs> doing some rigorous paint bucketing in the background. Of the live comic very color. nice, very yeah. nice. Some of these frames are very funny. I think this is a higher density of extremely funny false facial expressions per page than I've drawn possibly in any chapter thus far. You did send me one screen cap that was quite hilarious. I've needed to diversify my false with wide eyes portfolio because I didn't want to just draw the same goofy ass chibi expression every time. jump over that. Yeah, dick. <clears throat> that always feels like a little bit of a reward, because, like, I was working on drawing some comic stuff just because I had some downtime, and I was like, ah, well, I can't play Baldur's Gate, so I guess I'll have to do one of my <laughs> other hobbies. Uh, and I finally got to a point in it where I'm like, oh, this character I love, I can finally start drawing them because they've appeared on, yep, <laughs> on page yep. for the first time, and it's like, ah, excellent. Although this it is a treat for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's very fun to hit that point and to hit the point of like, I no longer need to do all of this work to mm -hmm. establish these characters and introduce them. I can just turn them loose oh and let them hang out with each other. Yeah. <laughs> the Avengers oh. Tower dream of every uh -huh. creative with an oh. ensemble cast. The Slammed Hawkeye the and events thing. Oh, ass to the camera too. Sounds like someone's not uh, embracing the goop. No, someone's not embracing yeah, the, the goop. The goop could probably help. You could really be working with the goop more on this <laughs> one, honestly. Like, <laughs> yeah. The goop well, kind of feels like you're not meeting it halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Would Ziggy and Cleo be good of spider cats? <laughs> Sorry, what? Uh, question from chat. Would Ziggy and Cleo be good spider cats? Um, Define good. Define good, yeah. <laughs> I don't think either of them would be particularly motivated in the crime fighting department. I feel like Ziggy might do the crimes. She did almost kill people staying in my apartment. <laughs> nice. oh, yes, there are child minded. safety locks on my gas stove now, and it's not because I have a child, but it is because I have a cat. <laughs> oh, boy. I think Ziggy would make a good, like, minion for a, for a major villain, you know? Mm. Yeah.
think this is probably the most dangerous an individual Venom has been. Yeah. Because they kind of have to amp him up in order to facilitate the sort of Arkham-style punching a whole bunch of minions form of combat that the games have been setting up. Um, and I like what it turns into in terms of, like, reshaping the boss arena. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Ziggy does have wares if you have coins. Ziggy would be an excellent vendor in a video game. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Ziggy would be a perfect reskin for the guy in Resident Evil 4 that turns up and sells his junk and shit. Yeah, no, Ziggy is... Constantly collecting every particle of dust in my apartment, um, <laughs> just by me method of existing. So I think uh, I think if I realistically had to put Ziggy into some sort of heroic role, it's definitely a vendor NPC. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a good one. It's looking pretty tempting right about now. <laughs> Touchable, even. Shoot into the goop. Sure would be nice to succumb to the sweet embrace of the goop, you know. Let the goop give you a little pat on the back. You know what I heard? I heard the goop has an eight pack. <laughs> you know, that the goop is absolutely shredded. Kate, say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that the goop makes your butt look nicer if you wear it. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine told me that. <laughs> This goop is peat tested, Spidey approved. Oscorp brand goop. I'm never gonna heal the world with you. People are like, you know, I really liked the goop more before it was so goddamn corporate. <laughs> <laughs> the goop really sold out, you know. I liked the goop when it was small and independent. Yeah. But now that it's talking about taking over the world, it's just truly just like endgame capitalism, am I right? Oh, also there's rules. Wings. Oh, what the fuck? I thought he was gonna just give himself spider legs or something. Winged Venom your angle does exist your in the devil. comics. <laughs> what does? Winged Venom. Oh, well, I mean, everything exists in the comics. You know, that's fair. I like the giant tendril that's just chasing through the streets. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If you shouldn't embrace the goop, why does the goop want so badly to embrace you? Yeah, give him the goop. Venom's like, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> Peter really spends an awful lot of this game getting rescued. Yeah. And honestly, I'm not mad about it. I think he deserved that. Do that teamwork. Especially since one of his primary complaints when he was gooped was, I'm the hero, I don't get saved. Just like, don't worry, Peter, we'll let the bad guy <laughs> kick your ass so bad that you need to get saved too. That's what you wanted, right? Oh, this is a fun twist on the Spider-Man pulls a heavy thing together. Yeah. Kind of thing. Sign just says BBY. BBY! <laughs> BBY! <laughs> God, it's I funny love that the it's traditional that Spider Man's suit always gets absolutely shredded in the final fight to yeah. show that he's like in it's bad state. Gotta. But it's an organic suit on it's this hard. one, so it ends up looking like very unsettlingly like fungal in how like ripped it is. It's an important part, part of the Spider Man character, but also like, you know, <laughs> it's a. Side effect of the suit itself, because like, how do you show a man is injured if he is covered head to toe in skin tight spandex if you do not destroy the suit a little? Because literally nothing else would ever be visible. <laughs> this is very true. Very true. It's both a time honored tradition and <laughs> and a side effect of the particular design of the spidey suits. Uh huh. Uh huh. You're absolutely right. 
Oh, in terms of weird things to visit if you visit New York, uh, the island on which they shot the final fight in the first Spider-Man movie, uh, they set up all that like filming equipment and like sets and stuff, and then they just never broke them down, so they're yeah. still out there. Um, and I think the ruins of an old asylum that was there back in the day. Interesting. Ouch. You know, the fight between Miles and Venom is a lot less fraught. You know, there's there's no personal tension. It's just business. Venom doesn't want to date this guy. <laughs> and that just really, like, reduces the impact. Miles doesn't need to be told to embrace the goop, because the goop doesn't want to embrace Miles. The goop is kind of over Miles, to be honest. <laughs> Like we had you for 20 seconds and you zapped us. Rude. Yeah. <laughs> we threatened your girlfriend and it literally didn't even matter. So you're just you're just too much of a hassle to deal with. I just don't know what to do with you. <laughs> Peter, we can just exploit that massive guilt complex and it's easy, but you make things complicated. Yeah. I like that this is a boss fight that actually invisible. involves web swinging. True. We have to go invisible in this fight. Oh, uh, it just doesn't work, I don't think. Well, I'm gonna try mm. again. That could be a fun chase sequence kind of cat and mouse thing. Yeah. Mm. Miles' invisibility really not utilized in this game kind of at all. Miles? I mean, it shows up in those hunter stealth sections. Yeah, yeah, but even then, you don't really need to do it. Yeah. Context in which Venom told MJ he has us now. Uh, uh, Peter doesn't need you anymore. Oh, well, he's not beating the allegations on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, mm. MJ is your friend. You should be telling her to embrace the goop too. But no, the symbiote has other ideas. Give in to the goop. Give in to the goop. Get gooped. I can, you know, I've heard that the goop has a really solid tax goop. policy. Um, I heard the goop has dental. No, I died. Ooh, <laughs> I died yeah, immediately. Very important. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna need the dental for the like six rows of teeth that you have. Exactly. That's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. The goop gets it. The goop gets it. Put that shit on a poster. <laughs> Put that shit. Write it in gold. The goop gets it. The goop gets it, and the goop gets you. <laughs> but goop does not get it. So get goop. Get goop, guys. The goop says there's get no goop problem. gang. And there's no I in goop. <laughs> eh, I'm back with cookies. Hello. We're really trying to sell Spider-Man on this goop thing, but he's, he's being real uncooperative about it. Man, that's the symbiote talking. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think you should consider this from the goop's point of view, really. I just don't really think he's gotten inside the goop's head. You know, he, he really hasn't seen things through the goop's eyes sufficiently. You know, walk a mile in a man's goop, and I think oh, Venom really does start to understand where he's at. I didn't think Venom had wings. He did now. He got him uh, after the last one. Yeah, fight. he flies now. He flies now. <laughs> Fuck. Ow. These fights are very therapeutic. I like how they're all about like reaffirming your friendships with each other. Yeah. I'm here for you, man. Get that goop out of you. <laughs> or <laughs> get more of your opinion. 
Honestly, Miles, I get it, but don't worry. There's plenty of goop to go around, and we're more than happy to share. <laughs> You're always so selfless, you know, leaving all the goop for me. But trust me, it's it's fine. <laughs> It's cool that Venom also gets a lot more kind of like fucked up in this fight yeah. now that he's been touching the rock with the symbiote just being all like scraggly. Is he literally trying to just hit Miles with the rock? Yes. <laughs> Does something bad happen if it touches Miles or is he just being needlessly like theatrical? Needlessly theatrical. Cool. He's in there, somewhere. Deep, deep down. <laughs> well, I mean, specifically right there. <laughs> I like that they gave him just a little bit of the Topher Grace face treatment and then immediately put the mask back on. Yeah, they, they know what they're doing movie. with this game. They know the references they're making. Anybody, ego. You hate the spider. I hate the spider. We should, like, hang out and fight the spider. Give me back my <laughs> Maybe to check about Goop a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little goop as a Has... treat. The spider heard the good news about goop. <laughs> goop, it's there for you. Got goop? In goop we trust. You will. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those Got Milk campaign posters, except it's just people getting symbiotis. <laughs> Folks, are you suffering from a serious dirt goop in your life? <laughs> Now, with Venom Goop, you too can experience the joy of having Goop as your lord and savior. Just you imagine, want like, the when... the strength of a spider, but without the pain of a nasty spider bite, try Goop. Imagining what Jonah would, would think of, of Goop pro or con. 100% <laughs> organic, ethically sourced, naturally something. Oh, that's slow-mo. That was beautiful. Yeah. Like, this is where you spend the money in the game's budget. This is climactic shit right here. Oh, yeah. Try not to concuss Harry too bad, guys. He is still in there. <laughs> Someone needs to take MJ to, like, a shooting range. I think she's doing great. <laughs> I'm sorry, did Miles just drop fully, like, 500 feet and then just land? Yes. He has wings. Slow down. Fall damage is a game mechanic, it's not a fact of the narrative. <laughs> ah, this is like the uh, Metal Gear 3 cutscene where you get yeeted off a bridge, and if it weren't a cutscene, you'd just be dead. Something, Ouch. something, Ludo narrative dissonance. Oil, something. gas, and. and... <laughs> <laughs> My favorite joke from 21 Jump Street. I think we own that. Yeah, I think so. Power of Spider-Man compels you. Oh yes, yes, take the fight to the church. Do it! Yeah. I've been waiting all game! Ah, <laughs> oh, he's like some kind of angel, but evil. <laughs> no, go back to the come on man, Bell percent. Come on, man. He's like a gargoyle is what he is. Ah, I like that. Ooh, that's a fun version right of this mechanic. Yeah. I like that his wings almost look like Spider-Man's masks. With like the red bit. with the black webbing. A little bit, yeah. Oh yeah. A little spooder manny. Spooper boober. Where did Spider-Man's mask go? Put it back. The mask is goof. Pete can get rid of it at will. <laughs> Put the, yeah, but like, you know get that thing in that that one Batman movie where they're they're like, what what That's are you dressed cool. as? And he's like Bruce Wayne, and it's like, haha, because Bruce Wayne is the mask, and the true space is the Batman, and like. That's kind of how I feel every time they take off Spider-Man's mask in a climactic emotional moment. It's like, put that white boy back. <laughs> I want to see what Spider-Man has to feel about this. <laughs> I want to see his eyes get big and small. <laughs> yeah, his his like spidey eyes are much more expressive than his his Tobey Maguire eyes. Come on, MJ, tase him. Or that. 
That's a powerful taser. Yeah, really. Some Karian shit. It's good. <laughs> Some of the symbiotes are like, oh shit, the lady from the Craven cast? Yo! <laughs> yeah, wow! Oh, we never stood a chance, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Truly the most dangerous game. Oh, they're giving Harry the peeling off the suit scene. Like a energy beam? Uh, anti venom. Like CPR. Yeah. Kind of looks like they just stuck a rock in a particle accelerator. Accelerator. Not 100% sure how a particle <laughs> accelerator actually works. Well, mm. they put it inside a building, so <laughs> <laughs> they, they're usually much larger. <laughs> They knew what they were doing with this game. It's very sweet. <laughs> Someone commented the allegations. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, is it even coding? I think that's just text at that point. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the subtext is rapidly becoming text. <laughs> Reason why Pen uh, MJ and Peter are always fighting Peter actually gay. <laughs> the paratext has, uh... Has breached containment and is now in the main timeline. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, like, that, that joke format that hits online where it's like, do you think they exploit each other's bodies? And it's like, what? With the whole Venom symbiote, it's I don't know how to explain it. You know what, it. never mind, keep going. <laughs> Zion, back me up on this. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying and I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> anyway, the symbiote kind of makes that a moot question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh god, Yuri, not allowed to have fun on the set of this game. Oh, I'm sure Yuri was having a blast. It's Peter Parker that's not having a good time. Yeah. Actors like it when the characters are in distress. It's enrichment for them. <laughs> Give the character a little distress as a treat. Oh, this is funny. I always like it when somebody who has lightning powers uses them for magical defibrillation. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I got <laughs> But you know what? He wouldn't need magical defibrillation if he'd simply stuck with the goop. <laughs> I truly think that there's no downside to the goop approach. Also, like, magical defibrillation <laughs> does not, like, solve the fact that he's terminally ill. <laughs> no, but it will start his heart yeah. up again so they can deal with that problem later. <laughs> I think we've, we've heard G-Serum name dropped by this point in the game. Oh, that's that's gobby juice, isn't it? That's yeah. goblin mode. Mm-hmm. Give him the white symbiote, you dumbass. <laughs> you could have just given him mouth to mouth and he probably would have come back to life then and there. <laughs> Actually, CPR is a lot avoidable. less effective than TV shows make it seem. <laughs> well, it's also very different than TV shows make it seem. You mean smacking them on the chest and yelling at them to live isn't enough? <laughs> live, goddamn you, just like start smacking them across the face. Yeah, <laughs> wake up, damn Oh, you. what's this all green helicopter doing? <laughs> uh. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Oh yeah, Bride will carry him. It's what he deserves. He's had a long day. Norman just puts him in a tank with another symbiote. Yeah. What have you done to him? Symbiote Saved his two. life? Question mark. 
got the goop off him so we stopped taking over the city? <laughs> Norman's like, the goop was perfect. <laughs> Pressed our love to him a little bit and made him live, you know, stuff. A little bit of gay, a little bit of straight, Just a lot of gooping. Yeah. How dare you ungoop him? <laughs> <laughs> woke up and now he's in a coma boo oh yeah norman's got a plan norman's got a <laughs> sequel in mind with a jacket like that <laughs> uh-huh with the jacket over the jacket yeah was that cane supposed to be a gift for becoming ungooped maybe i don't know did he break his old cane i think he might have i think he threw it out the window or no, it bounced off. You guys gotta stop whacking that fucking window with a cane. Yeah, that, they put the window back the only for window, Norman to man. just screw it up again. Oscorp Jeez. employees have had enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David. Oh, Lord, he greenin'. Exactly. <laughs> Boy, about to go goblin mode. Where's Daniel Green when you need him? Working on his next video. <laughs> okay, now we get the G serum name drop. This was the uh, Hasn't the alternate. Hasn't he been through enough? Yeah, this was the alternate cure that um, Harry and Pete had had mentioned. We're like, my dad's working on something mm -hmm. else, but really, I need that suit back, Harry. <clears throat> Peter. Oh yeah, sorry, Peter. COVID metaphor what? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it gets more on the nose in a second. What about you? In this ongoing series, I will be talking with people throughout the city, exploring our new behaviors, new routines, new thoughts and feelings. Of course, MJ's starting a podcast. Yep. <laughs> hey, with all of her experience guesting on the Craven cast. <laughs> Yeah. This is Mary Jane Watson. Yeah, the new normal. A little sharp uh, on the the nose there, insomniac. As, <laughs> as a little, as a little far. The Craven cast. For our first her guest, microphone. Craven is she the recording Hunter? with her set inside her? Don't use your internal mic. Professional. Oh God. She had a mic plugged into her laptop. Where? It was like a little, it was like a ah, USB there we go. mic. Never mind, I see yeah. it. I see it now. <laughs> I think you're a few seconds I behind, take it back. She's been fine. Podcasters <laughs> react to Spider-Man 2. <laughs> if you're going to make podcasting such a core part of your game, at least get it right. I'm sorry, do they have four people over and four pancakes? <laughs> like, oh, that's <laughs> shameful. <laughs> They're going to starve. <laughs> Yeah, they were talking about how Pete needed to clear out some stuff to send over to the Feast Center. And he was just like, ah, it's complicated. Mm. And now he's finally doing it, which is exciting. And everyone's just ignoring the fact that the hole in the wall from where Scream threw Spider-Man out of a house is just there. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it's as cool I've said before. This... Sorry, go ahead. Well, it's cool that the circle of people who know Miles' identity now also includes all of Peter and MJ's neighbors because they're the only people they're having over for Thanksgiving yeah. or whatever yep. this is. I was going to say, as I said before, I'm sure the neighbors are fine with it because it keeps the property value low. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Rent is low. And honestly, neighborhood protection's pretty good. Like, they know that if anything bad happens, they could just, like, you know, ding-dong ditch the, uh... Yeah. The, um, the Parker uh, Watson household... <laughs> Priority app notification. <laughs> if I had, if my fucking smartphone had an app just for me, Spider-Man, I wouldn't let it display on the fucking home screen. <laughs> I'd have it out on my desk in lecture and like everyone who sits next to me would be like, dude, do you need me to tell the teacher you got to hit the bathroom or something? It's like, what are you talking about? Who, what? I've been meaning to talk to you about something. Uh, I mean, I have been talking to you all, all the time. It's, it's, it's great. 
it's a little bit annoying when they write a character who's a ner- bit nervous about something and then write them as if they've never said a word in their lives. It's funny, <laughs> but it's like, okay, Peter's not that. <laughs> what the hell is he t- dancing around? <laughs> he wants a break. He wants a break. Oh. That's cute. But yeah, Peter's not that socially inept. <laughs> Just almost that socially inept. Maybe not now, but look on the phone. I'm here for you. Always. Peter needs what we in the business call a fucking break. <laughs> Peter does a little video like I'm taking a break from being Spider-Man. I'll My- still be pursuing my other projects. Brandon says, um, Miles, you are unmasked in broad daylight in a residential neighborhood. Everyone on this street knows what's up. <laughs> everybody knows what's up. But you know what they say, you mess with Spidey, you mess with New York. This makes me want to go back and play the first game again. Okay, so I bet money that the, fir- the, the first part of the third game is going to be some shenaniganery happens during the setup to Pete and MJ getting married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> and then, you, so you're probably going to be playing as Miles, like, trying to get the cake or something. <laughs> and then it's all going to be good, and then something's going to get crash oh, the wedding. we probably got funniest Green Goblin. number. We got Yay! funny number? Well, uh, funnier number. It's 6669. <laughs> nice. Oh, hell Oh, with yeah. a $98 donation from Anonymous. Perfect. Thank you, Beautiful. everybody. That was tactical. They, Thank they you for they the funny number. That was calculated. Number. We did it, gang. We got the funny number. Thank you for listening to Graven <laughs> <laughs> Applebee's is right. If we get 300, it would be funnier number. Or funniest mm-hmm. number, perhaps. You have the power, chat. But this is a pretty funny number. <laughs> so, final thoughts after playing through the whole game. What do we think? I, I maintained upon my first playthrough that this is one of, if not my favorite, Spider-Man story. I don't know if I still feel quite so strongly about this. I do really like this story a lot. And I think mm-hmm. I I personally am like willing to kind of give it a little bit of space for the fact that it's a game. Like I see what they're going for and I count it for not only what is what is in the game but what is kind of implied. Hi, baby. What is, you know, indicated and set up and not necessarily given full like narrative space to to breathe. So I give it a little bit of a pass in some regards, granting that the mm-hmm. pacing is a little bit uh, a little bit iffy in in some ways, but I do really really like this Spider-Man story a lot still, and I'm excited yeah. to see what they do next time. I like that they it gave MJ like... a taser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. I think that they did a lot to correct the uh, the things that were a little bit weaker about the first game. Um, mm-hmm. My guess is that playing through it blind is probably the best way to do it, which, I mean. <clears throat> We didn't do that, but like, <laughs> at least not this time. But it, just because, like, I remember the point where you stopped sending me, like, summaries and spoilers, because you reached the point where you're like, oh, this is good. Yeah. I don't want to spoil this reveal. Um, and, like, you know, for, for my various, like, I think that they could have tweaked this or done this differently. That doesn't mean that this was bad. I think that they did a lot of extremely cool stuff. I'm excited to watch back through this so I can get the effect of the performances, because yeah. just kind of seeing the plot is, you know, its own thing. Um, <laughs> actually hear what the characters are saying a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah a little bit um, yeah I think that the this game did a very good job of remixing a lot of interesting things mm-hmm. um, from you know the way that this plot line always goes out you know the canon events versus like the the new ways to tweak it around I mean just making Harry Osborne Venom is already a huge change from the standard and yeah. I, I think they did it in such good way and it changed Venom as a character in a way that I really liked. Yeah. yeah a very I different... Generally with Red on this one, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it seems like, you know, it's, it's well made. The story is pretty solid for all of the little, like, oh, maybe they could have done more chases or all, oh, maybe we would have tweaked this thing. Like, ultimately, the constraints of game design coupled with the story they were trying to tell, I think it, they pulled off a nice balance of it. Um, it's, 
it's not a kind of game that I usually play, but it's fun to see it played through. And similarly, I would, I'm would i excited to hear what it actually sounds like. Uh, J.K. Simmons <laughs> or no, I'm sure I would like to hear the voice acting and performances, as I understand it, that's a pretty big part of it. Hi, Cleo. What are your thoughts? Do you have thoughts? Only no, you bees. just have bees. Yep. No <laughs> thoughts, only bees. She is right by the mic, though. Unfortunately, she's Aww. not purring loud enough for it to pick up. Darn. Also, this is a very cool and artistic credit sequence. I really like what they're yeah. doing with this. I like it a lot. So many bees. Very spider-versey. Yeah, it is. Cleo's been napping this whole time. Yeah. Aww. <clears throat> Hey, baby. It is kind of funny how the entire Craven storyline kind of just ends and Venom becomes the primary mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, it's a very I elegant way like of I doing it, having it. Venom be the one who kills him. Mm. Yeah. I kind of feel like I expected the Craven stuff to have more going on for Miles in a way, just because it feels a little unbalanced about how much of the main plot is very Peter focused versus how much is friendly neighborhood Miles stuff. But yeah. I, that's also like a balance that works from a gameplay perspective because it gives you a chance to do things that aren't like the plot and not feel as bad about it so i don't know that I, I i don't know that there's a fix for that i think it's just something that i, I found a little strange yeah i think that's fair I, <laughs> it's definitely a case where like peter gets the bad ending if not for miles but miles does not have a ton to do in this story because a whole section of this is just mm. miles getting sidelined by pete bonus i think uh, yeah scene. bonus cutscene oh, here hold after on credit scene, after credit scene. yep I don't think we should put after credit scenes in video games. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, that's Doc Ock, isn't it? Yep. yep. I think Gobbo, perhaps? Spider I could tell just from his hand. Oh, I you see more of him now. Don't you? The spider. Uh... They ruined my son. I did the perfectly respectful fatherly thing, putting an alien symbiote yeah. on my son, and they went <laughs> and spoiled everything. Also, people Your were just pointing out that he's left-handed. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're gonna figure out why. <laughs> Why couldn't the spider people just accept the goop? Mm, the goop would have been good. What are you writing? Oh yeah, I forgot that Otto hates Norman guts. Yeah. Forgot that was the entire point. The final chapter. So, interesting question of what he's talking about here. The leading theory is that this is a tease for Superior Spider-Man because Otto's oh, glasses no. frame that kind of like spider-man eye shape on him but that wouldn't make sense by insomniac's own logic because in the first game they didn't give any black suit options for costumes because they're like we're not just going to give that we're going to mm -hmm. save that for when it's relevant for the story so that it really feels earned there is fully a superior spider-man costume you can get in this game so i don't know why they would have put that of all the costume options they have the had. craven cast additional cast craven on yeah. <laughs> yeah um that almost felt like a weird lighting engine thing more than anything else yeah i think that they were d like under lighting somebody is a really good way to make them look sinister um mm -hmm. i really hope they don't do the superior spider-man as do i, I read it so well because it means that pete doesn't get to be Spider-Man for most of the game. Yeah. It means he gets body snatched and ends up being even more ancillary in his own series. True, but he did say he wants to kind of stop being Spider-Man, so if they do it as a tie-in to, like, this is, he gets dragged back in via not wanting to do it, but yet here he is anyway. Yeah, I yeah. I hope they don't do the superior storyline, but other than that, I don't know what they're going for by having that very, like, distinct uplighting on him. Because th when when you light a game, when you light a scene, you can make choices. So they chose to do that for some reason. And I don't know what they would have been going for if not Superior Spider-Man. So, I don't know. I think they might have just been making him look intimidating and he has glasses. That is yeah. how it goes sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
This isn't know. like when they uplight uh, Selena Kyle and make her glasses look like the Catwoman mask in that one um, yeah. Batman movie whose name escapes me. To be fair, we don't know that. Yeah. We'll find out. The thing is, we'll the, here's the thing. Unfortunately, you might be right, though, because Otto's entire thing is that his body is failing him. So if he is like, well, fuck it, I'll do it myself, and like steals Pete's body, like it would be in character for him. I just don't want him to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Plot-wise, it would annoy me so I'm much. I'm sure given what they've done with this game of taking Venom and doing something way different with the core premise, I'm sure they've got something that is more unique and interesting cooked up for the next game. Because, I mean, even from what we saw in Spider-Man 1 before we got to Spider-Man 2, we could tell, like, oh, they're doing something really interesting and different. They're making it hairy. Okay, cool. Yeah. But we have much less to go on this time around, but we shouldn't believe for a second that they have anything less interesting planned for their interpretation of it. So I, I feel like they've got an idea. I think even if they do something that has the shape of Superior Spider-Man, it will be very different from what we've seen before. Because what he says with the final chapter, as far as anyone I've, I've seen has found, doesn't refer to anything in particular from the comics. So it's not like they're mm -hmm. calling out any particular storyline or some such. So I don't know. I don't know. I am intrigued. I, so. don't, I guess I just don't know how that would all connect to Miles also. It feels yeah. like they're kind of doing these half measures on letting Miles just actually be the protagonist of these games instead of... Because mm. it, it's all very Peter-focused stuff. I go check on the I saw chat there. suggesting that maybe it would be some kind of like warped version of the clone saga. If mm. Ock, mm. like clones Pete and then uses that body. I would mind that less than just taking <laughs> Pete's body wholesale bad spider-man out on the streets could be interesting well because then you just get fucking ben riley running around yeah. basically <laughs> but with otto octavius's brain yeah just thinking about my tragic past mm. oh ben riley what a train wreck what a train wreck <laughs> of a man i got you trapped in my will of most of your dream. anyway yeah and now that miles is here anything they do would be much more interesting and complex by the inclusion of second spider-man so mm. yeah, I guess, yeah i guess i just worry like how they're going to actually include second spider-man because it feels like in this one it was very segmented and then sometimes they would team up but like yeah if there's a potential third spider-man or if there's like an evil spider-man running around or like maybe they should bench peter and just not have him be the playable character for the game because he got yeah. mind pooped or whatever like well but know. also like oh, we I... spent enough of this game with oh no we can't trust peter his he's been turned evil um I think that having a second game in a row where it's like, oh no, we can't trust Peter. Something is wrong with him. It's just like, at this point, why is he even in this game still? Yeah. You know, they don't they don't want to get too redundant with it. And like doubling up the black suit and like the superior Spider-Man arc is like, good, good fucking luck. You're never going to get original homegrown Peter at this rate. <laughs> yeah, we do have one more post credit scene uh, as well. Oh, that's fun. Where are yeah. there post credit scenes in a video game? <laughs> it is Marvel. Superhero movies. It no! is Marvel. I am almost I done so with the bread. I don't even really like post credit scenes in movies as it stands, much less. Why would you put why'd you put it in a video game? You know? <laughs> why'd you put it in a video game? Uh, BG. Uh, Brian David Gilbert has irreparably damaged our vocabularies. For the better. But yeah, my Way money back. is just that the third game is going to be 100% Green Goblin focused. Well, I um, mean, even the Venom game is a lot of Craven. Even the Doc Ock game was a lot of Mr. Negative in the Sinister Six. I, I'm uh, sure there will be some kind of interplay between Green Goblin being either a main antagonist or the second, you know, surprise reveal antagonist, and then whatever the fuck Otto is doing. Yeah. Sorry, I just talked really over you, right? That's me. my bad. No, 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 it's all good. Um, I think, well, because in the first game, all the stuff about Doc Ock was the twist. It was the dramatic irony thing that we were all waiting for, and the reveal that he'd been behind all the other shit, basically, was huge. Um, and the plots ended up being connected that way. And in this one, Craven is basically causing all of the problems to get worse in pursuit of his own goals. Like, the, the whole black suit thing, uh, and then him antagonizing Venom, that's just because of Craven's own subplot, basically. So that's a pretty elegant way to interleave them. There are ways that they could play around with Otto and Goblin, but like, I think 
they're not going to be disconnected villains. I think whatever Otto is scheming is going to tie directly into the Green Goblin thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not that they're going to be working on the same side because Otto hates his guts, but like they're going to be, maybe they're going to be in direct conflict with each other or something, or like, it, it's hard to tell, but they've set up Green Goblin too thoroughly to not make oh, that yeah. the problem in the third game. And I think stacking Superior Spider-Man on top of that would just be too many things because like superior spider-man it takes peter and puts him in a completely unrelated body and it takes somebody else and puts him in peter's body and that basically means that if you try and stack that with any kind of villain drama you're you're playing the fucking like where's the ball in these three cups game at that yeah. point it's like Goblin's that's a really good way to, to describe it <laughs> yeah well, three Goblin's plot fucking... monty <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> goblin tries to fucking monologue at peter and he's got the wrong guy like that's just too much stuff. If, if you want to... A lot of the way that Green Goblin gets played up is that Green Goblin is dangerous because he he's, he's kind of... Like in Spectacular Spider-Man, he's basically just the Joker on a fucking glider, but a little too smart to, you know, make, a, make all of his plans that obvious. Um, and sometimes the threat is that he knows Spider-Man's secret identity or like knows his loved ones or something like that. And it looks like that's what they're trying to set up because he immediately goes to Otto and is like, you know who they are, tell me that information. Yeah. Like that's clearly what he's looking into. Um, so if that becomes the threat, then fucking shuffling out Peter's brain from under him completely you know, damages the threat of that. If yeah. Peter is stuck in the confines of his life and his secret identity becomes compromised by a villain, that's something that they, they've threatened a couple times, but they haven't really done yet. Because in the first game, the twist that Otto knows that he's Spider-Man is this hugely impactful moment. In part because up until this point, everything he's done could just be him being, you know, evil towards Spider-Man. And the fact that he's known all along that the person he's kicking the shit out of is his beloved protege is this huge, like, oh my god, that's way more twisted than I realized. And in this game, Harry going evil, like, Harry already knows all the stuff about Spider-Man and MJ, like, that that's not really the same thing as, like, this dangerous bad guy finds out the truth and becomes much more dangerous, which looks like what they're planting with Norman, because it's what he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think and if you stack that's on a top very that, strong suspicion. I, I like that mm -hmm. angle a lot more. Yeah, and the thing is, if you stack on top of that, Otto tries to body snatch Peter, then, you know, that that's just... That's just too many things. That weakens the frightening quality of the secret identity being compromised plotline because the secret identity is not what you thought it was. Um, so my guess is Otto is scheming something to get him out of jail, uh, but he's kind of playing to the fact that he's his body is betraying him. Uh, he doesn't have his equipment. He doesn't have a secret lab. Like, It wouldn't surprise me if Otto breaking out is an inciting incident in the third game, but I think Goblin and Otto are going to be two different problems that are secretly the same problem. Here's and, a potential swerve yeah. for you. Doing mm -hmm. a version, because what, what Otto wants in the Superior Spider-Man storyline is in, in one, you know, one uh, axis of it is power and uh, a new body, essentially, because his is failing him. Mm -hmm. That is partially satisfied by the idea of this G serum. So if maybe there's a little bit of working together and a little bit of Otto yeah. backstabbing Norman and taking the G serum for himself and kind of going off in his own direction as like a, I'm not superior Spider-Man because I stole Peter's body. I'm superior Spider-Man because I like stole the G serum and maybe like teched up my way into some kind of like not quite Doc Ock, not quite Spider-Man thing. That could be something that ties them together, and that's a very cold read. I have basically nothing to to back that up besides eh, vibes. They've kind of established, you know, a couple of those items, yeah. but um, that is the kind of story I feel like they might go for to tie in the dynamic of villains who both don't like Spider-Man but really don't like each other, and have them interact and have reasons to work together but also to hate each other is much more interesting mm -hmm. than just two unrelated villains. Kind of like, yeah. you know, uh, Craven and Venom, where, you know, one causes the other in, in a way, where Craven starts messing stuff up that leads to Venom, but having two villains that are both being villains actively at the same time and don't like each other and don't like Spider-Man, and then they have their own kind of, like, like 
wacky um, teammates dynamic, I think that could potentially be pretty interesting. I mean, traditionally, that's a large chunk of the Sinister Six plotline, which is basically what they did in the first game, of, like, Otto being the one to, you know, pull these disparate villains together, where normally they would never be caught dead teaming up. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if they brought that back for him coming back, because that is kind of his signature move. Like, Otto, in all of his forms, is a schemer, uh, and I think the fact that he doesn't have his robot arms or his lab won't necessarily stop him from being a very, very dangerous opponent. Uh... But yeah, I don't... I would be surprised and disappointed if they went straight to Superior Spider-Man in what is probably going to be the final installment of the game. Most likely. Yeah. I don't mm. know. I finished the bread. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Are these credits still going? Yeah. yeah. Actually, hold on. I might be able to... Yes, I can. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's see what we got here. More nice family dinners. Yay. Mm. That flag in the background they had to fix in a patch because they accidentally switched the colors and made the Cuban flag instead of the Puerto Rican flag. They look mm. very similar, they just have the colors swapped on which is the red and which is the blue. <laughs> I like that Rio's body language shows that she's not as practiced at sign language, but she's trying. Yeah, there's actually, when, when Cyan and I were first playing this uh, on our own, um, Cyan, you kind of caught on to how well they convey the sign language, where um, not only do like characters like Haley, who you know grew up with this stuff, characters like Miles, who are very comfortable with it from learning it, sign much more confidently and clearly than characters like Rio or Genki do to the point where in an episode of the Dana cast um, Haley is a guest and Genki is interpreting for her and the Ooh. ways in which he misinterprets what Genki is saying and like says the wrong thing and it's kind of like a joke line are actually signs that are very similar in ASL that you could mix up if you didn't know it fluently. Not very similar to someone who's fluent, but very similar to someone like me who is learning. Yeah. That's so very cool. It's, it's really, really cool. They put a lot of thought into it. This scene is cute, but I'm waiting for the significance. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the what? The significance of it. Oh. The reason I waited through those credits. <laughs> Miles, close your bedroom door. You have guests coming over. I know everyone in the city knows who you are, but like my guy, just pretend. Oh man. <laughs> oh, let me guess. The next guess is going to be somebody bad and scary. This is Alfred. Um, hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, and uh, this is my daughter. Huh. But it's gonna be Mr. Negative. This is not Mr. Negative. Please. Oh, you know what? No, I actually know. I know what this cutscene is. <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> hey, she came up yeah. last time. Yeah. I completely forgot. It's Silk. This is why it's Silk is supposedly the new uh, person they're gonna choose. Ta-da! Ta-da! Yay! Oh, yeah, there she is. Congratulations, you finished the main story, but both Peter and Miles are still available to continue the adventure. You can now start a fresh adventure with ultimate difficulty. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'll wait for New Game Plus. <laughs> There's more Mysterians out there. Da, da, da. So, that is the game. That's Spooberman. Yay. Woo. I like that Miles Jesus is like, you're my favorite spider bot. <laughs> okay, what level are we? Yeah, 42. Yeah, no way. Nowhere near the... Uh, um, it's a responsibility suit. Neat. Um, nowhere near Peter's uh, comic um, uh, animated black suit. Upgraded mm. suit. I like this one from uh, from Far From Home. And now in the post game, you can have the black right. suit, the symbiote suit, and the anti venom suit, which is cool. So Cute. hooray! Nice. And all, all with equal amounts so of unbelievably boot. caked up. <laughs> Mostly the symbiote suit, to be honest. Yeah, symbiote suit yeah. by far the most. 
Yeah, the anti-venom suit kind of flattens him out a little bit. A little bit. That's okay. Might just be the coloration. Yeah, yeah, the shading is a little bit harder. Yeah. So, that is our game. Um, thank you, everybody, yeah. for... Uh, wow, four oh five, right on the dot. Perfect, perfect. Just over five hours. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody, for for tuning in these past three days. Um, we'll be back with regular videos on Friday. I need to finish it tomorrow, uh, <laughs> but it's okay. Yes, um, oh, I need to make a Patreon post. That's right. Um, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, the grind um, never stops. Otherwise, uh, Cyan, any final thoughts before we uh, hop on out? No, just want to thank everyone for all their donations to UNICEF. Uh, especially over the past uh, couple streams, we've raised over six thousand five hundred dollars, which is amazing, truly amazing. So, just thank you everyone for donating. Indigo, yeah. anything? That uh, same sentiment. Thank you guys so much for donating. It was cool to get to see the game in its entirety, uh, story wise, play through, and um, yeah, thanks, thanks for hanging out with us. It was a good time. Awesome, Red. We'll meet again, Spider-Man. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Don't forget to get goop. Oh, yeah. Remember, always trust the goop. The Hashtag goop has your best interest at heart. Get gooped. <laughs> <laughs> get scorped. Get gooped. And listen to the Craven Cast. <laughs> listen to Craven Cast yeah, on all podcast platforms. All right. 